It's time for Friday Night Live. This week has just popped off. It was a short week because of the 4th of July here in the United States, but it has not stopped the amount of stuff that is happening. So with that, tonight we are covering a roundup, including Prince Harry getting a very favorable slander ruling in the UK, a federal judge getting trolled by Borat and suing over it, Dunder Mifflin creating trademark issues, a racketeering lawsuit with Girardi and Erica Jane, and of course, do we have like a Depp Heard fake juror situation? What is happening? And that is what we are doing tonight. So let me know where you're coming in from. I am celebrating with water and, and whiskey on ice because I love this glass so much. So we're celebrating with water and with whiskey. So it is good to see you all. We needed a lighter show. We're going to chit chat and catch up about what's going on with this week and some of the other things that have been happening, but first we need to roll the intro. Like that's the first thing we need to do. So let me know where you're coming in from and we will just get into it. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. I see y'all coming in from all over the world. It's so good to see you. The UK crew, you're going to be interested in our Prince Harry. I'm sure everybody's interested in the Prince Harry story. Um, But also, as I was getting ready, not only did this new Depp Heard motion drop um, with deadline, because the website for Depp Heard has stopped updating. Like, there have been no new motions. The July 1st motion isn't up there. The news media shared it. The This motion from today's not up there. Like, what is even happening? Facebook crew, I see you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all coming in. And if you are finding me on the Facebooks, don't forget to like, like the Facebook page. Apparently that matters to Facebook. And I always say subscribe over here, but I always forget to say like, or follow the Facebook page over there. Cause I do co-stream on both. I saw you guys asking what whiskey I was drinking. I am sipping salty watermelon whiskey tonight from, um, old smoky. I like a flavored whiskey. Look, I like a flavored whiskey. I do. I know there are purists who are like, I would not drink a flavored whiskey. And I'm like, but have you had watermelon whiskey? Because it's like a mixed drink that I didn't have to mix. I try so hard to keep it simple. Like I need things to be easy. Um, The text crew is like, just got the text. That's a first update. The text crew's back, baby. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're going to figure out the way that we're using it um, under our our new mm, our new understanding with the text crew. But it is my goal to keep you guys in the loop. For those of you that are here and may not know, I'm just going to say it because I need to give a plug to my second channel. Well, technically third channel, but second channel. Um, I have a Quick Bits channel and it is where I upload the stuff that I also put up on other social media uh, TikTok, Instagram Reels. I know some of you do not have TikTok or Instagram Reels, but we just crossed over 89,000 of you over on the QuickBits channel, which I'm going to show you once my screen sharing is ready to go. <laughs> once my screen sharing is ready to go. Um We have just crossed over 89,000 over there, which I really appreciate y'all. And so, yes, are we on the road to 100K? Yes. Am I going to update this banner at some point? Yes. Did I make this at like 3 a.m. in Canva when I decided I was starting this channel? Also, yes. Look, it's called ADHD. I'm like, I have an idea. I must execute it immediately because if I do not uh, fulfill this idea, if I do not execute this idea right now, it will be gone. 
We have to do it. The thing has to happen right this second. So that is the Quick Bits channel. The mods have links um, in it. There will be links in the description. I do do shorter breakdowns of stuff that's live and clean them up for those who do not have time to watch all of the live streams. It's also why I timestamp these, but it's also my reels go over there. It truly does mess with this channel to have like YouTube shorts up on this channel. So I just put them all on their own channel. But would I love a second play button up there? Yes. Do two silver play buttons equal a gold one? I'm pretty sure that's how you work. You can just like trade them in and be like, not give me a gold one. No, you can't. That's not how it works at all. Um, other notes, the podcast came out this week. So many of you left such incredible, um, feedback, not just feedback, but comments and your thoughts and, um, your, your kind of parsing through how this week's podcast episode helped you understand the latest Supreme court ruling. And well, I don't know if it's the latest, I'm sure there's been another one. Um, the Dobbs ruling overturning Roe v. Wade. I'm not going to talk about it more here on live, but, um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for being such an incredible community to be like, thank you for breaking this down. This one's hard. It's a hard case to talk about, um, because there is so much emotion that comes with it, but I really love how many of you said this helped me understand while still honoring the feels. And I think it's really important to honor and to acknowledge the way that we feel about things and go, I am feeling this way. And then I can approach it um, and try to acknowledge the feelings. But if you don't acknowledge the feelings, they don't go away. They just fuck with you. <laughs> we have to acknowledge the feels. The feels matter. They're information. And I really think that that's important. And that's why I wanted to break it down. So for all of you that left your comments and your thoughts, um, I appreciate you so much. I love this community. It is a deviation from what we normally talk about. And I really appreciate you saying, you know what? Sometimes we need a deviation. Sometimes it's important tonight. We're all about legal shenanigans. Like that's what we're doing tonight. Tonight is a whiskey stream with legal shenanigans. It's been a heavy week. Um, I saw that the, the, um, the former Japanese prime minister was assassinated at a campaign event. Good. My stream is like, ha <laughs> what do you say? Um, there are things happening in the world that is so, uh, so difficult. So it's so heavy tonight. We are not doing super heavy. All of my topics are lighter. Um, but I also, I know we have, um, a Jap oh, oh, a Japanese audience. This that's my internet's going to get sketchy AF. I hear the thunder. Hear the thunder. And I know it's thunder because it's too early for fireworks. Those will come later. But I hear the thunder rumbling. So if my internet gets sketchy, apologies. But I'm just, there are so many crazy things happening in the world. I see them happening. I try to parse through them. I don't even know what's going on in the UK. My um my podcast editor is currently in England, is British, and was we were messaging and it was like, I don't know what's happening in politics in the world, like what? And I'm like, me, me neither. We're going to run away to the pop culture and talk about slander and Rico and, and, and Juror 15 and all of the other things, not this motion, we're going to get into the last one again, uh, just a little bit, but y'all, there is so much going on. Um, but the Borat slander suit is where we're going to start. But before we get into the Borat slander suit, tonight's stream has a, um, tonight's stream has a sponsor. It is somebody who I adore and whose products I love. Um, they found the channel early on and she has been a tremendous support. So I am really, really happy to uh, share tonight's sponsor, Gerard Cosmetics. Look, uh, you guys know, I'm going to tell you about a few things I love. You guys know how I feel. This is my favorite one. I'm going to show you not only 
you know, not, when I say I use something that I love, this is what it ends up looking like because I'm literally in here with my lip gloss going like this, trying to dig it out. I have a second one. Yes, it has a light. Yes, it has a mirror. Yes, it's because it is a woman owned company. <laughs> This speaks to me in a way like no other cosmetic has, but everything at Gerard Cosmetics is on sale at gerardcosmetics.com. Um, and we have the links down below, G-E-R-A-R-D cosmetics.com. These are pink frosting. Pink frosting is my favorite of the lip glosses. These are light and shiny. They have that light up. Man, oh man, do I love it. But it's 51% off everything, $20 shipping in the US. Oh, no, I read that wrong. Me. This is why I pre record Adderall. Free shipping with a purchase over $20 and free international shipping with purchases over $100. Um, the international shipping has gotten pricey. So if you guys are international, that is a great option for you. But things are on sale that are never on sale, including the Hair AF. I have been using it. Uh, Jen sent me some to try. I have been watching Dustin Daly's journey with the Hair AF and how uh, positive his experience with this has been. I have new little hair growths. Look, we can always support our fuzz. We, we want... We want our locks to be luscious when they are down and not pulled up. And I've noticed um, a huge difference in Dustin's hairline. My husband has started using it as well. So not just improved hair growth, but manageability, shine, and it can help with flaky scalp. The eye canvas base that I use is on sale. Everything is 51% off. So I'm not offended if you just open up another window and shop now. The gloss I love is pink frosting. So enjoy that. And thank you, Jen Gerard, for not just being a friend, but also for making incredible shit that we love. And, you know, if you guys want to shop at a small woman-owned business, you are supporting small business when you are supporting Gerard Cosmetics. And with that, and with that, um, I got Gerard liner because that's what you said you were wearing that night. They didn't have share, but I love the one I got. I do wear share and Bel Air a lot when it comes to the lip uh, liners. And then I wear the gloss quite a bit. So we love Jen. We love what she's created. Thank you for the mods for putting the links in. And <laughs> this is why I love the Lauders. It's a preponderance of a discount. It is a preponderance of a discount. It is, it is, it is. And I love it. The hair growth stuff is the only thing on her site like it. It's called Hair AF. I keep picking it up the wrong way, but it's called Hair AF. So that will not be hard. Um, she did let me know today that the Hair AF has been super popular. Oh, Facebook, I'll link it in. I realized that the, the mods on YouTube linking it in is only linking it to YouTube. Um, so I will link it in here too for the Facebooks. Sorry, y'all. I'm getting better. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to like um, conscript a Facebook mod who's going to be like Facebook specific. We'll have to do that in the future. So I'll add it so you guys have it. Um, thank you, Facebook, for reminding me. So with that, we are going to move on. But a huge thank you uh, to Gerard Cosmetics for sponsoring tonight's stream. Thank you. Let's talk about Borat slandering people. Um, does uh, chat just pop a one? Do you remember Borat? Who remembers Borat? Oh, wait, darn it! I forgot to roll the weekly roundup intro. We're professionals here. We're prefer I got so excited talking about lip gloss that I forgot what I was doing. We're running a stream. We're running a stream. Now we can talk about Borat. <laughs> This comes to us from Law 360. I don't know how many of you knew that this was going on, but Roy Moore, who is a former Alabama judge, sat down and did an interview in, um, oh, what movie was it? Um, I totally forget it. Hold on. Give me a second. Who was America was the movie and was mocked in his interview with character Borat by Sasha Baron Cohen, who plays Borat. The second circuit on Thursday, July 7th, refused to revive um, 
the $95 million, $95 million defamation suit over that appearance in Who is America? They held, here's what they held. This is a former Alabama judge who also like ran for office. He signed a valid litigation waiver before he sat down and did the interview. The judge did, your your honor, did you not read the papers in front of you? I read everything, sometimes to the discomfort of my family as I'm reading through like waivers. You go to a sky zone. I'm the one reading all the waivers, generally online beforehand, but all the waivers. Um, But he signed a valid litigation waiver before he was mocked and called um, a pedo. So, oh, the former chief justice of the Supreme Court of Alabama appealed the dismissal of the claims that Cohen Borat, we're going to go with Borat, tricked him into sitting down for a 2018 interview in which Borat disguised an and as an anti-terrorism expert brought out a metal detector like a prop that he said was made by the Israeli army to detect pedos and the device beeped when passed over more. This is a gag that they used in the office. Like this is, this is not like an old, this is, this is not a new gag where you're like, look, I've got this metal detector. Of course it's going to beep. You're you're sitting down in a fake interview. So, so the U S district judge tossed out the suit. Um, he appealed, the appeal was yeeted on the appeal. The former chief justice of the Supreme court of Alabama argued that the release was inapplicable because he crossed out <laughs> you all <laughs> because he crossed out another section of the document that would have waived his right to sue for invasion of privacy over any alleged sexual orientation or offensive behavior or questioning but the second circuit said that his handwritten modification did nothing to change the rest of the waiver This is real life. This is real life. This is real life. This is real life. Like the district court said, we see no ambiguity in Moore's release of all claims asserting infliction of emotional distress, uh, defamation, and fraud. The only causes of actions asserted here, the appellate panel said, look, if you are sitting down to sign a waiver and the waiver has a waiver that you can't sue for invasion of privacy over any alleged sexual orientation or offensive behavior or questioning. Don't you know what you're getting into? That's in the waiver. You can't sue me over, over these things. If that's in the waiver, if that's in the waiver, you're in for it. And Borat was in character. Also, you can walk out of an interview. I mean, how are, who are your people? Who are your people that aren't telling you what Sasha Baron Cohen does for a living and the type of interviews these are going to be? How do you not know? How do you not know? How do you not know? Your honor, seriously, seriously. But the Second Circuit said Moore's handwritten modification did nothing to change the rest of the waiver. Even if Judge Moore intended not to waive any claims arising out of accusations of uh, pedoness, to say it friendly to the YouTubes, or uh, misconduct, a party's subjective intent and understanding of the terms is irrelevant, the ruling said. The Second Circuit's old. Second Circuit. Geez, Emily. The Second Circuit also agreed with Judge Cohen. Cronin's, okay, Cohen and Cronin is too hard for me. With Judge Cronin's decision that similar emotional distress and fraud claims brought by Moore's wife, K, 
Kayla Moore were precluded by the First Amendment. So she sued because her husband got mocked in an interview. Maybe we need to look up these lawsuits. Do we need to read the complaints? Do we need to further mock? We might need to further mock. Let me know if we need to. The panel said uh, Cohen's pedo remark was obviously a joke. What? Borat is obviously a joke? What? 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 That the joke was, the remark was obviously a joke and reasonable viewers knew the comedian was referencing allegations that Moore sought out relationships with teenagers while in his 30s, accusations that had emerged during the former judge's unsuccessful Senate campaign. Wait, what? There were actual? Look, there were actual allegations. There were actual allegations. This is new information. It was an obvious joke and reasonable viewers knew he was referencing allegations. Hmm. That's interesting. So, so by suing over this, we're just continuing to have those allegations brought to light. How did I not know this? I didn't know this. This is the first day I'm looking at this story. <laughs> I did not know any of that. Nope. Didn't know any of this. Ha did have not watched. Um, what are we talking about? Have not watched who is America. Um, have no idea who was running for Senate. What was I doing in 2017? Having children have no idea who was running for Senate in 2017. Um, do not pay much attention to the Supreme court of Alabama. I was working a lot and having a child. So I, wh where was my brain then? Uh, that that's where my brain was. The, uh, let's see. Ah, Fred, not trying to knock over my water. The U S district judge tossed the suit, which targeted Cohen as well as who is America producers showtime networks, Inc. And CBS in a July, 2021 summary judgment. The F Manhattan federal judge said Moore's claim for defamation, IIED and fraud were barred by an unambiguous liability release he signed ahead of the interview. Look at what you're signing, folks. Moore argued on appeal that the release was inapplicable because he crossed out the sections. Oh, I had gone up and then lost my place again, of course. So, um, Borat may have implied that he believed the judge's accusers, but he did not imply the existence of any independent factual basis for that belief besides the obvious farcical pedo detecting device, which no reasonable person could believe to be an actual functioning piece of technology. So the judge has also trolled them saying, um, no one believes that's real. This is clear comedy. It is not defamation. So fair. Hello, Runkle. It's good to see you in the chat. Hello, chat. So in a comment for Law 360, attorney Larry Clayman, uh, for his honor and his honor's wife, said the Second Circuit's decision was hastily and poorly written by a very partisan panel of three Democratic appointees. This isn't political, my guy. Holy shit. This look, this is not political. This is not political. A very partisan panel with a hastily and poor written, you signed a waiver. Don't sign a waiver then. Don't sign a waiver then. Just don't sign a waiver then. <sighs> um, the attorney goes on to say this decision is a travesty and we will take it up to the full court for on bonk review, which means a panel review. If they grant on bonk review, but two courts have now said, you signed the waiver, my guy. Your honor, maybe, just maybe consult a lawyer before you sign shit. Perhaps. You know what happens before you become the, the, the presiding judge of the Supreme Court of your state? One would presume you work as a lawyer. 
for like a really long time. So he maybe should have consulted his own lawyer if he wasn't comfortable reading those contracts, but he thought just crossing out the provisions were enough. No, they weren't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not enough, but I feel like we maybe need to go over the complaint of him and his wife just so when the on banc court denies it, we can all just be like, oh, at least we're on the same page because Lord, because Lord, this one sounds like it's funny. It just sounds like it's funny. And um, I'm amused. <laughs> Truly, I'm amused. This is a slander suit over a oh, doc, uh, uh, Showtime series with Borat. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. But you know, from slander to slander, look, we're just going to talk about as much defamation tonight as we can. So also from Law 360, we're going from slander to slander. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Prince Harry won a ruling in his tabloid lawsuit in the UK. Look, you can win a slander suit in the UK. It's rare, but it happens. Prince Harry wins ruling tabloid story was defamatory. This is regarding his ongoing. Are any of you following this ongoing story about him paying for police? I still don't quite understand. I have not followed it deeply enough, but there is this ongoing battle with him paying for protection in the UK, not when he is there or who is doing it because he's a private citizen. So today, today, Parts of an article published by a UK tabloid were defamatory because they gave the impression that Prince Harry deliberately misled the public about his legal battle with the government over the downgrading of his security, a London court ruled. The Duke of Sussex has won the first stage of his latest legal action against Associated Newspapers, LTD. He alleges that the publisher ran defamatory articles in the mail on Sunday that suggested he had misled the public about having always been willing to pay for his police protection. Judge Matthew Nicolin, not to be confused with Judge Nickel, who ruled in the herd, well, no, it's not her case. She just keeps saying that in the UK Sun case with Johnny Depp, who then retired, not that judge. Judge Nicolin, not Judge Nickel, ruled at the high court that the article was clearly alleging that Prince Harry had been spinning facts, making the public believe he had always been willing to pay for police protection. But the true position was that he only made the offer after a dispute with the home off with the home officer off with the home office over protection had started, the judge said. It may be possible to spin facts in a way that does not mislead, but the allegation being made in the article was very much that the object was to mislead the public, the judge wrote. The article was about the Duke of Sussex's lawsuit against uh, the refusal, lawsuit about, the refusal by the Home Office to allow him to personally pay for police protection for himself and his family when visiting the U.K., Harry is now based in California, lost his taxpayer-funded security in 2020 when he and his wife, Meghan Markle, stepped down from royal duties. The Duke filed for judicial review of the government's decision after his car was crashed by photographers, or chased, sorry, not crashed, not crashed, chased, after his car was chased by photographers when he left a charity event in July 2021. Safety seems like an issue, like a big issue, and I can understand why he's sensitive to it. I would be too. Decisions over Prince Harry's personal security in the UK were made by the Executive Committee for the Protection of Royal and Public Figures, also known as RAVIC. Okay. The body is responsible for establishing who should be protected by police and to what extent. The judge said Friday this was very much the first phase of a libel claim as the ruling concerned only the meaning of the statements. The tabloid publisher will now be able to file a defense over the truthfulness. So he wins a ruling, not the suit, but they get to go forward. If there was no no defamatory meaning, then this wouldn't have gone, um, this wouldn't have gone forward. So this is a big win. It allows it to go forward and we'll see, maybe it'll settle. So I think, um, I think there is room to, I don't understand how the protection works. Hopefully y'all in the UK can enlighten me. I just don't understand how the protection works, but I can understand why he's sensitive to it. Um, especially I, I don't understand the UK's rules when it comes to how 
um, photographers can do things and how they can't do things. There's rules in California, but the rules are different state by state with regard to paparazzi. And I think those rules are, are needed because we can see, and we saw it. I mean, with princess Diana, you can see what happens. Um, when people are chased by media, no wonder he's concerned about his safety and his wife and children. So of course, of course he's worried. Let's move on to Dunder Mifflin. Let's move on to Dunder Mifflin. Mm -hmm. We've got to Rick Hogue talked about this, uh, really thoroughly. I believe today I'm going to touch on it and then we are going to move on to racketeering and more defamation. Emily, do you just talk about defamation? No. Occasionally we talk about intellectual property. Sometimes, like sometimes we talk about intellectual property. So this is coming from Deadline, the offices, Dunder Mifflin at the center of NBC Universal trademark infringement lawsuit. Will I pull up this lawsuit if y'all are interested? Yes. Um, how many of you love the office? I freaking love love, love the office. It hits me deep. That's what she said. I love the office. I loved sharing the office with my kiddo. I love my 14 year old getting to go through the office. I love all of it. So if you want me to go through this trademark suit, I will pull up the suit and we will go through it on another day. But for today, we are just going over the basics of what's going on with this trademark infringement lawsuit. Somebody said, never seen the office. Lori, wait, how many of you have never, oh, we need a poll. We need a poll. There's too many of you that have said you've never seen the office, never seen the office. <gasps> we, we need a poll. Miguelina, I think the poll should be, um, do you love the office? Never seen it. Meh love it the most because they're oh, never, 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 never. Oh, there's so many of you. There's so many of you that have never seen the office. Chat. I am, I am legitimately shooketh. I am shooketh at the amount of people that have all oh, never, 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 never. Shook, ith, shook, shook, shook. The, somebody said the office, the movie. No, that's office space. Um, that's the O face. I'm making the office space O face. I didn't mean to make the office space O face, but I was. I was just like, so many of you have never seen the office. Thank you, uh, lovely Neo, saying hardcore parkour. So many of you have said you've never seen The Office. So if you're on the YouTubes, the poll is up. You should see it pinned at the top. Don't forget to change your chat from um, live chat to all chat. So many of you have never seen The Office. Is this a generational thing? I don't know. My 13-year-old loves it. Um, but it's also a good way to have a conversation about things that are kind of dated. There are some episodes that are uncomfortable and dated and deal with topics that are a good way to talk about. Uh, it's, it's, I love, I just, I love the office. I love the office ladies podcast. I love, I love, I love. Oh my God, the thunder. I love, I love, I love. All right. Let us get into this trademark suit. Now that I am shooketh, shooketh that so many of you haven't seen it. Um, Jennifer said, why is the title of this video fake juror? Cause that's the main topic tonight. We're doing our weekly roundup. That's why that's the title. Uh, this one could have been an episode of the paper chase. We're not even going to get into that. Oh, that's a lot of lightning. NBC universal is suing a company. It calls a trademark squatter. This happens where people literally like trademark troll for allegedly for, for an, <laughs> I'm distracted by the lightning for the alleged fraudulent trademark registration of Dunder Mifflin, the name of the fictional paper company featured in NBC's The Office. So somebody was like, huh, nobody ever went through and trademarked Dunder Mifflin. If I can trademark Dunder Mifflin, you can, depending on what, oh, let's go look. Let's see what categories it's trademarked in. Hold on. 
Emily, are you doing research on the fly? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am right now. Um, but I don't want you to see mis misspell things in my Google bar. Oh, that was, I saw the bolt on that one. There's something that you call it, the cloud to ground lightning. It has a name. These are going to be loud. All right. Let's go look at the trademark. I also want to make sure that um, when I pull this up, it doesn't have somebody's like information on it. I want to make sure it has a company, company information on it when I go and search for it. So give me one second because I didn't look before because I didn't think I needed to wait. No, I just want to search. Uh, they changed the website since the last time I was on here. Mm. Where is my, no, where is this? I hate, this is why I don't do this stuff live most of the time because, oh, there it is. Ah. Yay. Let's make sure we spell Dunder Mifflin, right? I want to see what categories they trademarked it in. Why? Because that's the stuff you can block people, people from doing. So if they trademarked it for like mugs or t-shirts or things like that, um, then you can actually try to block NBC from selling merch, from airing it. Oh, it's trademarked in a bunch of categories, but there's a, it looks like, but there's a dead one. Who owns the dead one? Let's see. Dead means um, that it has ended. Oh, hmm. Dunder Mifflin for headphones, microphones, mouse pads, video recorders, abandoned in December, 2021. Maybe they realized that um, NBC was going to start fighting over this stuff. Dunder Mifflin owned by a media group in hoodies, athletic apparel, shirts, jackets, pants, footwear, hats, caps. So this is somebody filed for this in 2017. It was registered in 2017. It is a live and protectable trademark, which means if NBC tries to sell Dunder Mifflin merch in the clothing realm, they can be blocked. They said first use in commerce in 2007, but wasn't the first use in commerce ABC or NBC? Where does the office air? Wasn't it their use in commerce? NBC Universal's use in commerce, oh, right? Because it's on Peacock. Only so many seasons are on the free cock. The rest of them are on the paid Peacock. So you only get the free one for like a little bit. That's so interesting. So this got registered in 2017, filed in 2016. Oh, NBC. Oh, NBC. So Dunder Mifflin <laughs> was registered by um, J. Kennett Media Group, LLC, out of Delaware. Um, let's see. There's a few other ones that don't have registration numbers. Let's see if it's the same group. No, that's somebody else. Somebody else. Oh, well, NBC. Look, Universal Television, LLC. Register your trademarks in the office before 2020. <laughs> I'm also shocked that they didn't have this covered. It looks like they only applied entertainment services, multimedia program. They only applied for this in November, 2020. Hold on. I'm going to go look at the other ones and see universal. <laughs> Did you not want to spend the money trademarking stuff that you were going to use as merch because you thought what, that the office wouldn't be popular. Oh, they there. Oh, you guys, the girls are fighting. This same media group, J. Kennett Media Group, is trying to double down and get the trademark on mugs and coffee cups. They're separate groups. So with trademarks, this is a real basic. This is not legal advice in any way. In trademarks, there are different categories. And with the different categories, if you have a trademark on something for a shirt and you put it on a mug, someone else can, this, not a mug, a tumbler, someone else can put it on a tumbler if you only have the one for the shirt, right? You have to register it in all of the different categories. So whoever J. Kennett Media Group is filed October 28th, 2021 to try to get mugs. Oh, I thought these would all be NBC. These aren't. Ha, what are the other ones? Okay, so we have NBC filing in multimedia. We have the media group owning it for shirts. The media group filed to get it in coffee mugs. 
because everybody wants an office mug. And they filed a third one in 2021. The chutzpah. I mean. I mean. I, I mean. What is it? They filed for envelopes, copy paper, notebook covers, notebook paper, office binder, office glues, adhesive, notepads, loose leaf binders, office staplers, paper notebooks, printing mailing labels, printed notepads, rubber bands, spiral bound notebooks, staple removers, three ring binders. They filed for Dunder Mifflin and office supplies. NBC, you've got to get it together. They're trying to get all the categories. Oh, this trademark lawsuit. This trademark lawsuit, I am here for it. This is going to be very interesting. So this company owns one Dunder Mifflin trademark. They are trying to get the Dunder Mifflin trademark for mugs and for envelopes, paper, whatever. But if they had the trademark on envelopes, paper, staplers, and all that stuff, could they theoretically go after NBC Universal and say, you can't put our trademark on paper and put it on TV without paying us royalties? That's why they're suing over this stuff. That's why they're suer, suing over this stuff. So this is this is why. I'll pull up the lawsuit if you guys want to know. Um, all right. The suit filed Friday... Today's Friday. Today. The suit filed Friday in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California alleges that Jay Kennett Media Group and its owner, Jay Kennett, built a business based off registering trademarks belonging to others in order to either sell the marks back to their rightful owners or to profit from consumer confusion by offering branded merchandise associated with the popular TV show, movie, video game, or which it has no legitimate connection. Oh, do we think there's others? Hold on. Let's see if I can search by owner. I want to know now. Well, it's probably in the complaint. Let's see. Um, oh, that was a very big bolt of lightning. It's getting closer, y'all. All right. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to have to do this later. I'm going to go look and see if I can find um, what else they own. Oh, Here's some that says they own it. Um, let's see. Hillman College, it looks like they own. I don't know where Hillman College is. They've got the Dunder Mifflin ones. Home Brewed. Was Home Brewed a movie? No, that was Home Brew. Home Brewed. Um, let's see. Average Joe's. Wait, Average Joe's is also a bar. Isn't Average Joe's the bar from The Office? Chat, chat, tell me, isn't Average Joe's also from The Office? Um, NBC Universal, you've got to look at some of the other ones. You've got to look at some of the other ones. Hillman College is from The Cosby Show. Ah, and Dodgeball. Okay, let's go through this. Hillman was The Cosby Show. Y'all, Average Joe's is the gym and Dodgeball. Thank you. Poor Richards was the bar. Dodgeball, dodgeball. Okay, we're going to go through these and the chat's going to tell me what they're from. This was not what I was intending to do as we were going through this, but here we are. Um, Wayland Utani, I don't know what that is, but that's shirts again. I'm sure that is from something. I don't know what that is from, but Wayland Utani, they filed for. Let's see what else they have filed for. Um, oh, well, this one I support. They filed for I pooped today. I mean, that's a good one. So, oh, both Cosby and A Different World. Well, were Cosby and A Different World um, both owned by the same media network? I imagine that they were. Okay, aliens, aliens. So Waylon Yutani is aliens. This is, this is wild. Ali oh, you guys, thank you. Hillman was in different world, not just Cosby. And I'm wondering if it was owned by the same, um, by the same media network so they could just use it because they had already run it. Okay. Different world was a Cosby spinoff. Thank you. You guys are informed. There's things I didn't know. Appreciate it. So 
obviously owned by the same. Uh, let's see. True Scotsman has also been filed for. I remember the Average Joe NBC show because, um, because, oh gosh, because uh, Ralph Garman was on it, who was also on the Kevin and Bean show, which you know I love. So, all right. True Scotsman, let me know what it's from. <laughs> Average Joe's is a restaurant in Canada. Trademarks are different in different countries. So a trademark in Canada is not going to apply here. All right, let's see what else is in here. Um, P and Pools. Oh, they abandoned that one. All right, they don't own P and Pools. Let's see. Scott Body Shop. I don't know what that's from. No claim is made to use the exclusive right to Body Shop. I don't know what Scott Body Shop is from, but Scott Body Shop, probably from something. So uh, you guys can let me know what that's from. Let's see. Dear Beer Bear. Wait, Dear Bear Beer. This has got to be from a TV show. Wait, you guys are saying One Tree Hill. Thank you. That one's from One Tree Hill. You guys are great. So this is this is what they do. They go and do the um they go and they go through TVs and say, "Oh, they never did it. True Scotsman is from The Simpsons." You guys, this is fascinating. I don't know what Deer Beer Bear, wait, Deer Bear Beer is. But once we get to Deer Bear Beer, I'm sure someone will know. Uh, let's see what else. Um, shadow company. So there's one, um, Skynet. <laughs> I mean, they're going for all of it. They're going for all of it. Skynet. All right. Go for Skynet. <laughs> wow. I can, I, okay. Skynet. Let's see what else is down here. I should just do this this way. Um, the grandfather, I tried it at home. Dipper's pine. Dipper's pine. All right. Dipper's, Dipper's pine. I'm sure it's from TV. Um, white girl wasted. Wait, it's for athletic gear. This needs to be, this needs to be a rosé challenge. I'll make a rosé. I will make a rosé. Gravity Falls. Oh, which one's from Gravity Falls? Because it's not the beer one. Um, Dear Bear Beer is It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Fair. Uh, Dipper Pine, Gravity Falls. Thank you. I don't know what White Girl Wasted is from, but I feel like it needs to be a rosé. Somebody quick, quick, make an alcohol. <laughs> Shadow Companies from Call of Duty. Oh, y'all. All right, let's see what else. Um, Dylan Football, Tree Hill Ravens, Nostromo. Um, the English translation of Nostromo in the mark is Boatswain. Okay, I don't know. I don't know that one. Um, Super Saiyan, Hartford Whalers. That's not going to work. Oh, no ma'am. No ma'am is still a live trademark. They have trademarked no ma'am for t-shirts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No ma'am. Uh, One Tree Hill is, oh, no Stromro is aliens. Thank you. And then the One Tree Hill, the other One Tree Hill reference. So they definitely picked, um, they definitely picked things that were popular rad racing and grandfather again. So I don't know who Dylan football is. I'm imagining it's another, um, another one of these, another one of these shows. So with that Dylan football's Friday night lights. Thank you chat. This has been fascinating. So it's being alleged that this company just goes and grabs trademarks from other people's intellectual property. And so far we've identified uh, Super Saiyan's Dragon Ball Z. We've identified Friday Night Lights, Dragon Ball Z. Um, um, One Tree Hill, The Cosby Show, and its spinoff. So 
Somebody already made a white girl wasted pale ale. There we, it feels like it also needs to be a rosé. No ma'am is married with children. Well, they took no ma'am. They took no ma'am. All right. Let's get back into this actual trademark lawsuit with the squatter, the alleged squatter company and NBC Universal. Um, and they talked about popular TV show, movie, or video game with which it has no legitimate connection. Well, there we go with Dragon Ball Z. According to the lawsuit, the defendants registered the name Dunder Mifflin um, with the USPTO about six years ago in order to market hoodies, shirts, jackets, and other apparel. NBC Universal says it tried to register the faux company's name in 2020, but the application was rejected. Well, probably because it was already trademarked. So the lawsuit aimed to end J. Kenneth Media's use of the Dunder Mifflin name and destroy any remaining branded merchandise. The plaintiffs, NBC Universal, uh, also seek unspecified damages. The office is based on the Ricky Gervais fronted UK series and starred Steve Carell, John Krasinski, Jenna Fisher, Rain Wilson. And others. If you guys don't listen to the Office Ladies podcast, I tell you what, it is Angela Kinsey and Jenna Fisher are fucking delightful. That podcast gives me life. Mm. No, I can see Dwight Schrute running around yelling, identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Jay, get it, media. Anyway, that's going to be interesting to watch. I love that we just got to go through all of the other squattery trademarks that they've registered, but it doesn't seem that they've been uh, they've been sued yet. So there we go. Uh, should we talk about racketeering real quick before we get to our next lawsuit? I think we should. I think we should. We're as we move on to the topic, we're going to go ahead and end the poll here on YouTube, and I'll let you guys know the results. But we need to talk. Oh darn it! Where's my lawsuit? Come back, lawsuit. We need to talk about racketeering before we dive back into defamation. So I covered this a while back and we're going to do a quick road so far. <sighs> Disgraced lawyer, um, Tom Girardi and his wife, real housewife of Beverly Hills, well, estranged wife, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member Erica Girardi are in the middle of a world of legal shit uh, starting well, well before 2020, but kind of coming to a, a domino like tumble in 2020. In, we were at the tip of the iceberg there. And now in 2022, we have gone well into the Titanic. Come at me, bro situation with this lawsuit because good heavens, it is a mess. So there are multiple bankruptcies. There are extraneous lawsuits. Erica Girardi has been sued in some of them, not all of them. She is also connected in the bankruptcy. She is not the bankruptcy debtor. Tom Girardi, her estranged husband is. This has come up last season on uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It will come up again this season on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. There is a litigation in Illinois where Edelson PC, a law firm in Illinois, uh, brought to the court's attention that their mutual clients, sometimes law firms will team up together, Edelson PC being, being an Illinois law firm, uh, Girardi Keese being an LA, California-based law firm, they teamed up on the Lion Air disaster. Edelson PC brought it to the court's attention that the clients had never gotten paid, and there seems to be an outstanding, some odd $2 million in the Illinois suit. That judge flipped the fuck out when he found out that this was going on. Not only did he look at all of the other attorneys in the case for potential uh, sanctions going, how did no one bring this to me sooner? He also froze Tom Girardi's assets and was like, uh, yo, WTF, how do you not have the $2 million to pay your clients who are literal widows and orphans from the Lion Air disaster. That's why widows and orphans kind of came up last year as all of this was breaking. The, uh, the LA Times did a really good expose. There have been people who have clearly known about this before, but... As this has been going like this down, kind of just the dominoes have continued to fall. 
Edelson PC has filed another lawsuit that they gave the court in Illinois a heads up about and is now officially filed. So we're not doing a deep dive into this because we went through it literally line by line last time. It has some very big allegations. Again, lawsuits are allegations and shade. But this lawsuit has been now alluded to during this season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because Erica is being sued as the kind of, they call her the front woman for Girardi PC in this racketeering organization. They are suing David Lira, who is Tom Girardi's son-in-law, Keith Griffin, another lawyer that worked at Girardi Keys during this time and worked on the Lion Air case, Erica Girardi, AKA Erica Jane, Erica's business, uh, Christopher Kamen, George Hatcher, the wrongful death consultants, I think, which is a new ad, Joseph, um, Donardo, California attorney lending too. So these are um, all the parties to this. They are alleging racketeering, conspiracy to commit racketeering. Again, a civil lawsuit. These are the civil causes of action with racketeering, conspiracy to commit racketeering, receipt of stolen property, aiding and abetting concealment of stolen property, money had and received conversion. Conversion means um, that shit's not yours, but you've tried to make it yours. It's like when your kids fight, and one of your kids is like, he took it, it's mine. And the other kid's like, I've had it for two months. It's mine now, bitch. Conversion. That's basically the lame sort of conversion. It's mine now, bitch. You can't take it back. It, you know, if you go away to college and pack up one of your brother's sweatshirts and then you take it across the country to Massachusetts, even though you live in California and your brother's like, do you know where my sweatshirt went? You're like, I have no idea. You've just converted it at until at least, you know, December, unless your mother comes to visit and takes it out of your dorm room to give it back to your brother. But you know, that may be too specific of a, uh, of a retelling of conversion. So Conversion, converting shit that's not yours to being yours, unlawful business practices, consumers, legal remedies act and deceit. Here's what I'm hoping to see from this lawsuit as we go way through it. The other lawyers and what they knew, Erica Girardi and what she knew, and then how the attorney lenders that were keeping this going um, are are, you know, at fault here. So I'm very interested to see how this goes. You guys are like, that was a hyper specific <laughs> conversion reference, right? So this lawsuit had a lot of allegations. It talked a bit about misappropriating the client money, what Erica did um, to kind of be the front woman and try to keep this all afloat. The theory in this racketeering being essentially to keep money coming into the law firm, Erica made it seem like everything was okay. The argument she's going to make to that is I didn't know. So I didn't know. And that's what we will see. But they do talk about Tom, Erica and Donardo going to companies for litigation funding, Erica signing over things for litigation funding, et cetera, et cetera. They call it the family enterprise. It's wild. So I have the breakdown of the, the first version that we saw of this lawsuit. There might be some changes in this one. Um, I will go back through it. And if there's any changes, point them out. I've been needing to do an update uh, with all of this. Uh, Sava asked, how is this racket? How is the racketeering civil and not criminal? There are different ways to charge this. An individual or a law firm, J. Edelson PC, cannot sue for criminal RICO. That has to be done by an, an enforcement arm of the government because the punishments there are going to prison like R. Kelly. So the, um, the civil RICO statutes allow to sue and allege these theories and recover monetary damages instead of jail time damages. Does that preclude a RICO case down the road? No, it doesn't. Has this case been forwarded to the feds? That's what the judge in Illinois said. The judge is like, I'm calling the AUSAs somewhere. I need to know if this is you, I promise I will not tell any, I look, it's just us. Look, forget the other, you know, tens of thousands of people that are here. It's just us. It's just us. If you work at the AUSA's housewife division, 
Can we please be friends? Because I know there are prosecutors out there who are living my best life and all they do is go through like the housewives cases. There has, there has to be a point person. There has to be like a unit supervisor. I want to know whose job this is. I would have reconsidered leaving the district attorney's office. I would have lateraled to the feds. I would have. You guys have everything on video. Your cases are way easier to prove. You don't like just go, (laughs) you know, this came into us and we have to make it work. You get to like research your cases for like years and shit with the FBI. So whoever is in charge of the housewives division at the U S attorney's office, I like, I I'll, I'll help. I, there's a vast amount of knowledge in the noggin. It's just, we'll, we'll keep it on the low, low, you know, tap me in. I, I'm ha- license is still active. Happy to do it. Not moving though. Someone has this job. Someone has this job. Someone is like the unit supervisor for the housewives division over at the U S attorney's office. And it's not me, (laughs) but a girl could dream. No, that's true. You can't get me. You can't get, you can't get rid of me from YouTube. I love creating content way too much. There's no going back now. There is no going back now. I love this. Somebody is in charge of this though. And it started with Teresa Judice. And it is just going to keep going as these housewives keep ending up in federal court. All right, let's talk about the poll results, poll results, and then we have to talk about jurors. Why do we have to talk about jurors? Because um, I want to finish my whiskey. <laughs> and I need to get through the pages of filing before I finish my whiskey. All right, do you love the show, The Office? The options were meh, never seen it, love it the most. 9,000 votes, chat. said never seen it. Candace, hold on. Hold on to yourself. I can't. Kendra, if you or any of your family members are watching, I can't. 43% have never seen The Office. 35% love it the most. And 21% said meh. I'm not sure how those numbers work, but I'm sure that they do. Those are the poll results. Those are the poll results. Oh, Maybe there's a reality TV division so they can lump Todd Chrisley in there too. And like that would include Mike the situation. I think there were tax issues there. A reality TV division makes sense. It makes sense. All right. So you guys are free. You guys are like, what is happening? Look, go to Peacock and take a look at at the first couple seasons of The Office. It's great. Who, Paige, who's Kendra? My friend Kendra Hennessy over at Mother Like a Boss, who sometimes watches my live. Sometimes her family members watch the live. Um, but we have a mutual love of the office. So I know that's literally just a shout out to my friend. <laughs> and my same with my friend Candace. We do that sometimes. We just shout out our friends. We know they're watching. Y'all watch the office. All right. Let's close these windows down. <sighs> Y'all, y'all, I appreciate Deadline for putting this up. I just have to say, I appreciate you, Deadline, for putting up the filing because the court is not updating and it's really frustrating. I just closed my own freaking document that has everything listed. Hold on. We're WAP. WAP. We're professionals here. Um, hey, it's just me said I'm on Kendra's email sub list. Do you listen to her podcast too? I love Kendra's podcast. I love mother like a boss. I know. I know. So, so many of, you know, mother like a boss. She's fantastic. She's fantastic. Um, somebody asked what my shirt said. And since I am now just trying to pull up my, uh, my research document, cause I dropped it. This is my facts, not facts greater than fuckery shirt, which I love which I love Kendra Shelby. It's also you. It is also you. It is also you friend. All right. Let us, let, we got to talk about fake jurors and shit. Wait, what control shift T opens the last tab you closed summer rain. You have just changed my life. That's amazing. I'm going to try. Okay. Wait, what does it say? I got to try it. I got to try it. Control shift T. Hold on. Oh, that's amazing. Y'all, we learned so much in this chat. We learned so much. Law nerds, you are the greatest humans ever, ever, ever. All right. We got, I'm going to swoop. 
We're going to do it. Just buckle up. And I advise against making my exasperation a drinking game because unless it's that kind of night for you, because I'm already exasperated. I was exasperated on Tuesday when we covered this original motion. If you haven't seen Coffee and Cursey Words yet, don't worry. I've got you. I'm going to cover just that itty bitty little teeny little teeny bit of um, the motion that talks about the fake juror. And then I'm going to talk about this new filing that talks about the fake juror because Amber Heard's team is asking for a mistrial, meaning we'll all do this again if it's granted over the juror 15 situation. I'm going to read you all the information and then I'm going to tell you my thoughts. Law nerds on Tuesday had a lot of thoughts about this and it seems like y'all are right. Um, so let me just read you that part of the motion from Tuesday because it was at the very, very end and that was like a four hour live stream and I get it if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but there's also some really salient points in this motion because, oh, um, Collins, I actually have the Virginia code pulled up here in my browser to cover. So I'm going to talk about the Virginia code tonight too. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the Virginia code. I researched it before the show. I have thoughts. I did research. I have thoughts. All right, let's crack into this bitch. This court should conduct an investigation of juror number 15. Well, they didn't wait. This is eight days later and they're like, we're investigating this shit ourselves." Swoop, it's so good to see you in the chat. <laughs> Every time you say you're going to swoop, I feel like I've been summoned. I have summoned you. I've been meaning to DM you. I watched swoop. Okay, we're taking, we're taking a sidebar for a real quick. I watched your last video. I felt so much of what you were saying. I love you. I've been meaning to DM you and be like, girl, but me, girl, but also me, girl, but also me. I feel you. I was exhausted covering this trial too. So it's so good to see you. I've been meaning to DM you. Uh, and then the ADHD is like, why is it Friday? <laughs> Which is worse when I'm tired, but it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you pop up in the chat and Lawnard send swoop all of the love in the chat. Thank you. Okay. Let's crack into this. The court should conduct an investigation while they didn't wait long of juror number 15 and whether jury service was proper and due process was protected. We'll talk about due process in a minute. The court should investigate whether juror 15 properly served on the jury. Mm. On the juror panel list sent to counsel before voir dire, the court noted that the individual who would later be designated juror 15 had a birth year of 1945. I'm sure the quote the court, the court didn't specifically note this. This was on, you get like a list. Um, I don't know what the list looked like in Virginia. I've only done that in California, but you get a list um, of the juror names and some information depending on the court that you're in. Most of that information you get from voir dire, which they conducted in this case. <sighs> Juror number 15, however, was clearly born later than 1945. Publicly available information demonstrates that he appears to have been born in 1970. I think we now know what kind of publicly available information that is, and that's why we're going to get into it next. The discrepancy raises the question whether juror 15 actually received a summons for jury duty and was properly vetted by the court to serve on the jury. Virginia Code 8.01-353 provides that... <clears throat> <clears throat> At the time of assembly, for the purpose of juror selection, the identity of each member of the jury veneer shall be verified as provided in this section. I don't know why this is my law voice tonight, but this is my law voice tonight. Prior to being selected, like the law wants some gray poupon. I don't know. That's just what's happening. Prior to being selected from the jury veneer, a potential juror shall verify his identity by presenting to the person taking jury attendance any of the following forms of identification. His Commonwealth of Virginia voter registration card. His, why do we assume it's he? There. 
Can we change it? Why are we assuming it's he? There. Women, Virginia, women serve on juries now. So do people who are non-binary. It could be they. Anyway, we will continue. I'm going to read it as is. His Commonwealth of Virginia voter registration card, his social security card, his valid Virginia driver's license, or any other identification card issued by a government agency of the Commonwealth, one of its political subdivisions, or the United States. Or any valid employee identification card containing a photograph of the juror and issued by an employer of the juror in the ordinary course of the employer's business. If the juror is unable to present one of these forms of identification, he shall be si he <clears throat> shall sign a statement affirming under penalty of perjury that he is the named juror. Okay. Thus, the clerk's office had a statutory obligation. We've just read the statute. Thus, the court's clerk office had a statutory obligation to verify the identity of juror 15, but... Because Juror 15 was not born in 1945, you're assuming, it appears his identity could not have been verified through any of the means of identification the code provides. This is assumption. This is assumption. This is assumption. Also, it raises questions about whether and how Juror 15 could have signed a statement affirming under penalty of perjury that he was the named juror if he was 25 years younger than the person the court recognized as juror 15. Well, the court didn't recognize anyone. When the court summons people, the summons gets mailed to your house. When you show up with your summons, you show them your summons, and then they're supposed to check your identification, and then you sit in the veneer, and then you get, this is how this works. Is this helpful? This is how this works. You get a summons to your house. You do the things. Sometimes you have to fill out shit online. Sometimes you just have to show up. Sometimes you call and are like, yo, I can't be there that day. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable. You still have to come to jury duty. So you show up, you give them your summons. I don't remember ever being asked for ID, but you give them your summons. Um, in Virginia, by statute, it says they have to verify your ID um, or your identity in some way. You might have had to fill things out online. And then you sit in the jury room and wait. And then in high profile cases, they can call a panel specifically for one case. In large court um, systems like Los Angeles, often you will just get called to a courthouse. You'll go sit in a big room. When a courtroom needs jurors, they'll call the clerk's office and be like, yo, Utah, give me two. No, they'll ask for like 75 jurors. And then you'll be sent to a courtroom where you will wait. And then you'll get ushered into the little pew-like things that are hard on your butt. And if you spend a lot of time in church as a kid, might also bring up repressed memories, but you will sit on the pew-like seats and you will wait. And then the judge will tell you what's happening, what the case is about, and ask some basic questions. Like, does anybody have a flight tomorrow that they can't serve on this? This court's gonna be, you know, this case is gonna be however many days. Is there any issues? Then they will start pulling you up in groups of jurors. Now, post-COVID, they do this slower one by one, but pre-COVID, they pull you up in a group, you all sit in the box things, and then voir dire happens. They ask you questions. Sometimes the judge starts, sometimes the lawyers start. Normally, the judge will say, hey, what's your, you know, general location of where you live, your job title, married, not married, um, do you have any friends or family that work in law enforcement? Like these basic questions. And then the lawyers get to ask you questions. And then the lawyers get to choose if they stay with you or if they eat you or if the judge eats you for cause. That's, that's what happens. So Team Heard got the list. Team Heard looked this juror in the face and asked them questions. There may have been masks involved, but if it's so apparent that this juror is 25 years younger, why didn't this come up when they had the list and the juror sitting in front of them? Excuse me, Your Honor. No, it's Elaine. Your Honor, this juror seems young. You're Mike Elaine. Oh, sorry. Your mic, Miss Breda Hoff, your honor. This juror seems young. Like, 
But I digress. Although the Virginia Supreme Court has previously construed Virginia Code 8.01-353, requiring the jury panel to be made available at least 48 hours before trial, to be directory, we're still, the typos are still fucking killing me, to be directory rather than mandatory, I think it means discretionary. It has to observe that, quote, adherence to the provisions of the code, stick to the code, is required to the extent necessary to ensure due process. It therefore follows that adherence to 8.01-353.1 is necessary to ensure due process, even if it is viewed as a directive. I'm sorry, directory. I'm sorry, as a directory, not mandatory statute. Now, it might mean, she might actually mean directory, but I think it means discretionary. But I can't imagine that that would be a typo. Footnote nine. <clears throat> Ms. Hurd recognizes that the Virginia Code 8.01.353 states, quote, this is what the code says. Stick to the code. The code says any error in the information shown on the jury panel shall not be grounds for mistrial or assignable as error on appeal. Mind you, they're asking for a mistrial. And the parties in the case shall be, res shall be responsible for verifying the accuracy of such information. But the apparent error in the jury information form relating to Juror 15 is not the basis for Ms. Hurd's concern. I've done thinking on this. I will tell you what I think. It is the potential that Juror 15 was not, in fact, the same individual that the court assigned as Juror 15 and or was not verified by the clerk's office as required by the code. However, it says the code and any error in the information shown on the jury panel shall not be grounds. So we're going to read the code. They're saying that it's not an error on the form. They're saying the wrong fucking person showed up. So the form's not wrong. Like it's some other dude. And because it's some other dude, that's not an error on the form. That's a whole ass other person. Therefore, this should be grounds for appeal because it's um, lacking in due process. We will get to how I feel about the due process argument as we get into more information, but I think we should get to more information first. So we are going to summon swoop some more and get to the new motion that was just filed today, obtained by deadline. I appreciate that somebody's out here getting these suits because they are no longer updating on the court's website, which is deeply frustrating. Why? I have so many questions about why. This is properly redacted, so we're going to see some redactions in it, but let's crack on and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll continue with the legal commentary. Yay. July 8th, 12.05. Supplemental memoranda in support of section six of defendant and counterclaim plaintiff Amber Heard's post-trial motions based on additional discoverable facts. So we found out more shit We'd like to tell you more shit now. Here is the more shit. Defendant and counterclaim plaintiff, we're just going to go with AH, because fuck. AH hereby supplements section six, no, seven, damn it, seven of her post-trial motion based on newly discovered facts and information that juror number 15 was not the individual summoned for jury duty on April 11th, 2022. Cheryl, thank you so much for that super sticker. That's very sweet. I appreciate it. Um, and therefore was not part of the jury panel and could not have properly served on the jury at this trial. Therefore, a mistrial should be declared and a new trial ordered. FFS if a new trial happens. Y'all, y'all, Hogue, we were talking about you earlier. Good to see you. Let's figure out what they figured out. Virginia law provides only those, quote, jurors whose names appear in the list provided under 8.01-348 and 8.01-351 shall be used for trial cases. Whose names appear on the list? Names. 
um, shall be used for the trial of cases, civil and criminal, to be tried during the term, Virginia Code 8.01-355. Fairfax County explains that these potential jurors are selected from the list of registered voters in Fairfax County. Great, they pull it from the voter poll. Every year, citizens' names are randomly selected by the Virginia Supreme Court and from the list of registered voters for the Fairfax area. Great. Also see the answer book for jury service. Potential jurors are selected randomly by the jury commissioner using lists designated by the courts, such as the voter registration list and the driver's license list. Great. In this case, the jury panel list included an individual named Name. With a listed date of birth of redacted 1945 residing in location, Virginia. I think that's probably a zip code. This means the individual would have been 77 years old at the time of trial based on the birth date. Mm -hmm. The attached voter registration information lists two individuals with the last name that. So two individuals with the same last name, two On the voter polls, two individuals with this last name residing in this area in Virginia, date of birth, 1945, 77, the same person listed on the jury panel list, and this person, date of birth, 1970, 52 years old, attachment four. Both of these individuals, name and name, apparently live at the same address. Oh. Okay. Okay. So they live at the same address and they have the same last name. Is it reasonable that they are a junior and a senior and perhaps have the same full name? Yes, because it seems like it would be harder to find. um, It seems like it would be easier to figure out if they don't have the same first name. But this doesn't give us the information about whether their first name is the same or not. But it does say there are only two individuals with the last name. So the motion says only two individuals with the last name of blank instead of saying two individuals with the name of and then giving a full name. So maybe it is the case that they have different first names and the same last name, but it could also be the case that they have the same name and one's a junior and one's a senior. Could very well have the same name. It happens The fact that there's only two individuals with the same last name in this voter area is very helpful for Team Heard doing this investigation. So both of these individuals live at the same address. Great. The individual who appeared for jury duty with this name was obviously the younger one. If it is so obvious when you were looking at your juror list with the 15 fucking attorneys that were on each side and you were looking at the person in the jury box, even with a mask, could you have been like, huh? Doesn't seem like you were born in 1945. Seems like you were born in 1970s. Could that question have come up then? Because you had the information then. There's nothing in here that shows that Amber Heard's team did not have the information available at the time they questioned and accepted this juror onto the panel. But I digress. Both of these individuals live at the same address. The individual who appeared for jury duty with this same name was obviously the younger one. It might not be obvious. Can't you just say we think is the younger one based on being in this courtroom for six weeks? Thus, the 52-year-old, I am i don't know what that word is, but I'm hoping it's a name, sitting on the jury for six weeks was never summoned for jury duty on April 11th and did not, quote, appear in the list as required under the Virginia Code 8.01-355. <clears throat> as the court no doubt agrees, look, man, don't assume Don't assume the court. Don't assume the court. Don't assume the court agrees. Just don't. As the court no doubt agrees, it is a deeply troubling 
for an individual not summoned for jury duty, nonetheless to appear for jury duty and serve on a jury, except that a summons with at least part of their name showed up at their address. It's not like they just wandered in. But I digress. Especially in a case such as this. This was a high profile case where the fact and date of the jury trial were highly publicized prior to and after the issuance of the jury summons. Y'all, Elena's half a sentence away, half a sentence away from saying some rando walked in and became a juror. It's the randos. Rando juror 15. Damn it. I've hit my mic. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to strike all of you. They, they very well might be junior and seniors with the same full name. It just doesn't say, and we don't have enough information. But we know this is a male juror. So they're rando looking for 15 minutes of fame being on this jury. Yep. Let's see if it's in here. I haven't gotten through the rest of this yet because I was um, talking to my kiddo before this and redoing my router. <laughs> Which, if you watch my Instagram stories, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um they should have figured this out before trial. I doubt this will fly. Well, Jennifer, I I disagree, and we need more whiskey for this. We might need more whiskey for this. Um, I disagree that we should have figured out before trial, but they should have figured it out during voir dire. Like before trial, you just have a list of names and you don't have like a person in front of you. It's kind of like, I don't know, swiping left or right. Like it all looks good on the list, but then when you're sitting there in front of them, you're like, something's not right. I think I'm being catfished. So that should have come up during what year so let's see um i have thoughts about this but i'm going to try to get through all of this we're only on page two of five and they've already assumed that the court no doubt agrees that this is deeply troubling uh, let's see this was a high profile case where the fact and date of the jury trial were highly publicized prior to and after the issuance of jury summonses Virginia has in place a, a statutory code provisions designed to ensure the person called for jury duty is the person arriving for jury duty. See code 8.01-353.1 requiring verification by the court of an individual's identity before jury service. Fairfax County's juror questionnaire webpage furthers this goal by requiring all county residents to log in using their seven digit juror number, zip code, and birth date. Why is birth date in quotations? I can understand bolding it, but why is it in quotations? Why is it in quotations? Do you really need your birth date or is it like an assumed birth date? Why is birth date in quotations? If you, if you need to put emphasis on it, bold and italics will do. Why? I can't. Attachment five emphasis added. No shit. Those safeguards are in place and relied upon by the parties to verify the identity of the correct juror to ensure due process and fail tr fair trial for all litigants. When these safeguards are circumvented or not followed, as appears to be the case here, the right to a jury trial and due process are undermined and compromised. Ms. Heard had a right to rely on the basic protection of her attorneys asking good questions during voir dire. I'm sorry, that's not what it says. Ms. Heard had the right to rely on the basic protection as prescribed by the code that the jurors in this trial would be the individuals who were actually summoned for jury duty. Pound the table. In this case, it appears that juror 15 was not, in fact, the same individual as listed on the jury panel. Ms. Hurd's due process was therefore compromised. Under these circumstances, a mistrial should be declared and a new trial ordered footnote one. Mr. Depp would be incorrect in contending Ms. Hurd somehow waived this argument by not raising it during voir dire. Really? Why? 
why not only were the voir dire questions ruled on in advance and the parties limited to those questions during voir dire, but the responsibility to ensure that the potential jurors participating in voir dire are the ones listed on the panel list rests with the individuals and the court. That's not what the footnote in the other fucking motion says, but we'll get back there. I think I left it open. Due process entitles litigants such as Ms. Heard to rely on the basic assurance that potential jurors are who they say they are and are the actual individuals the court summoned. I think she's trying to preempt Depp's argument, but I would also contend that this argument is waived by not raising it, and it doesn't fucking matter that the voir dire questions to ask the jurors were ruled on in advance because you can approach sidebar we've seen every time elaine said may we approach judge a was like yeah your honor can we approach it says here on my little listy list the listy poo mind you none of this was televised it says here on my listy poo that Potential juror number 15 was born in 1945. I do not want to be insulting to this court or to potential juror number 15, but damn, does potential juror 15 look good for being born in 1945? Kind of like Adam Waldman's skin when he first popped on the Zoom call. I was like, hey, this man's skin is kind of flawless on the Zoom call. Do we have questions? And y'all were like, his wife's a dermatologist. There's products. And I was like, oh, but your honor, I don't want to be offensive to the juror, to the court, but potential juror 15 looks awfully young to be 77 years old. Could the court inquire that this person is that person? Or at least what skincare routine they use. Could they be wearing Amica cream, your honor? Are they wearing makeup? Does Isaac Baruch know if they're wearing makeup? You don't know. Can someone ask? That's it. That's it. That's it. Just ask. Just ask. If you think somebody's age looks off and you're looking at the list and you're looking at the person going, I don't know, ask the court and the court can ask. That's it. <sighs> Conclusion, for all the reasons set forth above and the initial memorandum, Ms. Heard respectfully requests this court declare a mistrial due to improper juror service in violation of her due process rights and order a new trial and such other relief as may be appropriate. Uh, the attachments are not attached, which is appropriate because they're going to involve more information. Yes, what if any foundation and concealer are they wearing? What if any eye cream do you use? What if any amica cream are you wearing but this was apparent enough that it came up after the verdict i want to know if this was held it seems improper to do so it seems like it might waive the argument but you lawyers were in a position to discover this at the time of wadir and I believe the court will find the due process this will go up on appeal too. I'm sure. I believe the court will find, this is going to drag out for fucking ever, but I believe the court will find that your due process rights are not violated because you participated in the process of voir dire by asking questions. And as your other footnote says, the code says... Ms. Heard recognizes that the code states any error in the information shown on the jury panel shall not be grounds for a mistrial or assignable as an error on appeal, and the parties in the case shall be responsible for verifying the accuracy of such information. The parties in the case shall be responsible for verifying the accuracy of the information. So under the code, it is the lawyer's duty to verify the accuracy of the information on the sheet. And if you're verifying the accuracy of the information on the sheet, then you have to look at the information on the sheet and look at the juror and be like, are you the same? 
But she's saying, no, the clerk's office fucked up. The clerk's office didn't catch that this person was not the same person. And therefore, we are entitled to a mistrial. This is a violation of due process. There is a process here. She's saying, Elaine is saying that the process was not followed because clearly this person was not vetted. Now, if it comes forward that this person lied to get onto jury service, if they pull up what this person clicked in on their juror form and they said, yes, that is the right date of birth, it still might not matter. And we saw that in the case with Glenn Maxwell, where it didn't matter. In the Maxwell case, the juror lied under oath or misstated. The court said misstated, lied under oath that they had not been a victim of the types of shit that were alleged in that case. The court found it was an error. It was not a willful lie. And that if they had been voir on that part more when they didn't fill out the answer properly on the juror intake form that they would not have been dismissed for cause. And therefore it does not rise to the level of the mistrial. If this, which seems like a mistake can rise to the level of a mistrial, what the fuck happened in the Maxwell case? Cause on that one, I was like, Ooh, That juror did not disclose that they had been a victim of the same shit that she was on criminal trial for, where the rights of the defendant are, you know, high. That was not a mistrial. There's no way this is a mistrial. I would be shocked. I think it'll still be appealed forever. But you had due process when you had the list and the person and you had the chance to ask those questions. Let's look at what the code says. Stick to the code. The code says parsnip. Parlay. Potato. Um, if you, y'all are like, Emily, your face is getting pink. Yes, it happens when I drink alcohol. All right, let's look at this code. and 35.1. Thankfully, Virginia makes all of their shit real easy to find. Hats off to you, Virginia, for making your codes so easy to access. This was not the one I was looking for. Eh, Where did the one go? Where did 353 go? There it is. Notice to jurors making copy of jury panel available to counsel. Objection to notice. Patricia said, how did they even uncover the birth date issue? This is why I wonder if they held it. This is why I wonder if they held it. Because were they just sitting there going back through the jury roll going, huh? I remember juror 15 looking younger. Let's investigate. (sighs) A, the sheriff shall notify the jurors on the list or such number of them as the judge may direct to appear in court on such day as the court may direct. Such notice shall be given um, a juror as provided by this other code section, verbal, verbal direction given by the judge or at his direction. Again, the judge doesn't have to be a he. At his direction to a juror who has been given notice as Herein before provided that he appear at a later specified date shall be sufficient notice. Any notice given is provided herein shall have the effect of an order of court. No particular time in advance is required. Um, appearance dates shall be necessary for ber- verbal notice hereunder, but the court may in its discretion excuse from service any juror who claims to lack sufficient notice upon request. Um, let's see. Upon request, the clerk or sheriff or other officer responsible for notifying jurors Uh, to appear in court for trial of a case shall make available to all counsel of record in that case, a copy of the jury panel to be used for the trial of the case, at least three full business days before the trial, such copy of the jury panel shall show the name, age, address, occupation, and employer of each person on the panel. Any error in the information shown on such copy of the jury panel shall not be grounds for a mistrial or assignable as error on appeal. And the parties in the case shall be responsible for verifying the accuracy of such information. You know, during what year? No judgment shall be arrested or reversed for the failure of the record to show that there was service upon a juror 
of notice to appear in court unless made a ground of exception in the trial before the jury is sworn. Before the jury is sworn. Unless made a ground of exception in the trial before the jury is sworn. This is why they're arguing they can't say it was waived. No judgment shall be arrested or reversed. No mistrial granted. For the failure of the record to show that there was service upon a juror of notice to appear in court unless made a ground of exception. Now, I would have to look at the case law and see how the case law has interpreted this if it's ever come up. So the court is going to have to look into this. The court is going to have to pull up what the juror filled out in their online form. This is all going to have to come up. But Elaine had this information and could have verified it. And it says she has to verify it. The other code section here says jurors to provide identification at the time of assembly for the purpose of jury selection at the time of assembly. I should go back to my law voice. Hold on. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. At the time of assembly, for the purpose of juror selection, the identity of each member of the jury veneer shall be verified as provided in this section. I've already read this one. We're doing it again anyway. Prior to being selected from the jury veneer, a potential juror shall verify his identity by presenting to the person taking jury attendance any of the following forms of identification. We went through that. If the juror is unable to present... Uh, they can sign under penalty of perjury that he is the named juror. Great. Um, and then we get into other sections of the code. Jurors on the list to be used for trial of cases during term discharge or dispensing with attendance of jurors drawing additional jurors. Jurors whose name appear on the list provided for under the other sections shall be used for the trial of cases criminal and civil, civil to be tried during the term. The judge shall direct and select as many jurors as necessary. The court shall have the power to discharge person summons as jurors herein or dispense with their attendance. Um, let's see. When by reason of challenge or otherwise a sufficient number of jurors summoned cannot be obtained for the trial in a case, the judge may select from the names on the jury list provided by the other section the names of as many persons as he deems necessary and cause them to be summoned. So if you don't have enough jurors left, you can add to the list. But it sounds like the list is populated each court term. But if the names are the same, the name's on the list. So... I don't think this is going to be grounds. I don't think this has been, um, I don't think this is a violation of due, due process because they're allowed to voir dire and they had, that's the process. The jurors get summoned, they come in. This juror obviously had a summons. Even if the juror lied or misstated or clicked the wrong box or something was pre-populated, how did we get there? But this seems like a how did we get there? I see you guys saying hi to Law & Lumber. Hello, Law & Lumber. I feel like we've summoned summoned the lawyers into the chat. It's good to see you. I think Runkle and Rob are still here. Um, Runkle and Rick as well. Sorry, you're, yeah. It, cheers. But Amber Heard and her team are going to keep trying to say that this was a due process violation. I'm sure her supporters will say that this was a due process violation. What I see with due process, though, is that she had the opportunity to voir dire them and, and the ability to, um, the ability to say, hey, these are, these are, you know, these are the jurors. This doesn't look right. So anyway, um, Rob or Runkle or Rick, if any of you guys want to come in, I can send you a link. If any of you want to come on and say hi, I can do that. Let me go send that. I know you're all like, wait, what? The mods are like, Emily, aren't we almost at two hours? We're doing questions, but I'll go send a link. I'll send a link to the peeps. I'll, I will hold on and we will get to questions, but I would love to hear what you guys think about the, um, about this. Let's see. Um, let me find my link real quick. Ah, where is it? Eh, let's see. 
I've got to, I've got to multitask and multitask after drinking whiskey, which always is difficult. So there's, it's always confusing to me when Rob's Twitter handle is not his name (laughs) because I always try to put it in there, but I will send that to you guys uh, right now. If you want to pop on, um, I know hoax started early today. I want to hear what y'all think about the due process stuff. Um, though I am very, very tempted to grab more whiskey. (laughs) I am crime time. I haven't had a chance to talk about this yet, but there are news reports that Elaine was removed from a case because she had become a potential witness in the case because she had advised they've reported advised her client to destroy evidence. I've seen those reports. Some of them are, um, some of those reports are behind paywalls. So I haven't read all of them, but I don't think this will, I don't think this will fly. I just don't. So we're going to get to questions. We'll continue to chat about this. If anyone decides to pop in, I might, um, I might pour myself a little more with, we'll just see. We'll just see. Emily, should you pour more whiskey? No, I shouldn't because I have to pack. I have so much to do tomorrow. I have to pack tomorrow because I have to hop on a plane on Sunday early. I have to record the podcast for next week. There's so much. There's so much. Okay. But let's, while we're doing that, let's get to questions. I have questions. You have questions. We have questions. Let's do questions. The 20,000 of you here. I should say things like, if you're on the Facebooks, Hello, friends on the Facebooks. Go ahead and follow my page on the Facebooks. If you're on the YouTubes, go ahead and, you know, subscribe to the channel, like the things. We are pushing towards, where are we? 658? We're pushing towards 660. Oh, at some point we're going to get to 666. Won't that be amusing? So at some point, (laughs) at some point, uh, we're almost, we're about to bang if a few of you subscribe. We are very close uh, to clicking over to six, uh, 59 here. Let's see. Look at that. I don't know why it's not in night mode, but look at that. Look at that. We're close. We're close. So I know some of you watching aren't subscribed. My analytics tell me so, but some of you, you're welcome to do that. See, look at that. You're going to make it bing. You're going to make it bing. Very shortly at 6.59, and eventually we'll get the lights to flash. So thank you for going ahead and subscribing. Will I be covering Britney's motions next week? Yes. Yes, I will be. They were supposed to be tonight, and then fuckery popped off. Um, It's like you're getting the band back together. Ah, Rick. Emily, Hello, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. Oh, I've got to put my, hold on. Let me put my headphones in so we don't have feedback. Otherwise, oh. we're going to have feedback. You've been streaming all day, friend. I've been on, I've been online. I've been doing online things a lot today. Yes. Yep. Um, let me switch over the sound. So it sounds better. There we go. Sorry if there was any, uh, sorry if there was any, uh, echo chat. Hey, Rob. Hey guys. guys. It's like you're getting the band back together (laughs) and we get to hear Hogue use a cursey word. We encourage. I don't don't know about that. that. Is that that an obligation obligation here? here? I am am echoing. echoing. That's me. I don't hear you echoing on my end. Hopefully the chat doesn't either, but my, um, my, are there still, is there still echo? Let me see see if I talk. Yeah, Yeah, I'm I'm echoing. echoing. You're echoing. I don't hear it on my end. Hold on. How about now? Let me see. Nope. No, echo's gone. Echo's gone. Any echo here? No echo for me? Good. Echo from Hogue. Okay, it might have been me. (laughs) Echo's gone. Yay! I might have fucked it up. Oh my god. No, not you, Echo. Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. Now it's playing music. Damn it. Copyright strike. It started playing Uptown Funk. <laughs> Entirely appropriate. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. It was a whiskey stream, and now you're here. It's so good to see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think Rob's got one too here. So, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I have tea. I'll but, bring the you know, wine. You bring the whiskey. That's what I bring to the party. I'm at the, oh, and, it, <laughs> and Runkle the Bailey brought the, the drunk white chick, which we covered earlier when we were talking. <laughs> uh, I was saying it should be a rose. We were talking about the trademark squatter from Dunder Mifflin. And 
they have a bunch of them. Hoag, did you look at their other trademarks? No, see, I, I, I got, I got a tip that they were a full on squatter, uh, but I, I did not, I did not go and look at the what they had. They Taylor did. Dutani? I was went down. There? Yes, I went down the rabbit hole earlier on stream, and they have, they have one from the Cosby Show. They have stuff from One Tree Hill. They sure. tried to do the the Whalers, the hockey team. I was like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. To like the old, to the Hartford that. Whalers. All yes. right. <laughs> but maybe it was like oh the hartford whalers are gone now we can sell merch they abandoned that one but there were they did white girl wasted they did um something about poop it was fun so yeah somebody was mentioning skynet as well oh they did skynet the they did the promo yep i would go i would go by i would go down and look at the different trademarks they own all of them were tv or video game related so there was stuff from aliens there was stuff from one tree hill the chat was amazingly helpful. I'm sure it will be timestamped <laughs> later. So have you guys yeah, all no, looked at this? I Waylon Yutani this morning. So if they have that one, there you go. They have that one. Uh, yeah, I looked at it. It pretty sure Disney actually has that one. <laughs> well, I, they have they have them in T-shirts and then they're trying to get two more for the office. They're trying to get it for office supplies and they're trying to get one for mugs. So they've filed for other ones in 2021 with regard to Dunder Mifflin. I was shook. Yeah, no, we just went over the the standards. We went over the trademark laws, applications, use in commerce, how it attaches to a TV show, that kind of thing. But no, I didn't. I didn't think to look and see whether they had the corporation from Alien in their trademark portfolio. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, and Skynet <laughs> from Terminator. <laughs> I mean, it takes some real brass to be like, you know what? This is totally what I'm going to trademark right now. Yeah. Uh, what's NBC Universal going to do about it? Right. And it seems like they've been getting away with this for quite a while. They must have been selling merch and stuff that nobody was nobody was bothering with because th they have those trade. They have all those trademarks. Well, I had somebody in my chat this morning that was that had worked at NBC and had, had worked through the NBC store and said, we've been selling shirts with Dunder Mifflin stuff since yeah. the show. And I said, well, that makes perfect sense. It, it's yours. You, right. you used it. And it doesn't really surprise me that much that the studios wouldn't necessarily think that that was something that you'd have to go the extra step to, to register in the same way that you register your, your actual show names and, and other kinds of intellectual property. Um, but yeah, it, they're going to have to, it's really interesting that the USPTO and the examiner's office doesn't even, uh, Waylon Yutani, that uh, that sounds familiar. Dunder Mifflin, yeah. where have I heard that before? Some of the show ones I didn't know. Oh, I've got an assist. Come here, buddy. Thank you. My my kid has uh, has come in clutch this evening. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he has brought me. What'd you say? Salty watermelon whiskey. What do you mean? It's an odd choice. That actually sounds delightful. It's delightful. It's delight. It's delightful. Runkle, you're gonna have to come to uh, Nashville, but I, this is a I so do <laughs> a local whiskey. Oh yeah, and well, Nashville's fun. You can we we enjoy going to the range in Nashville too. So we can do we can do that together too. So talking Ian's language. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> whiskey and and things. Anyway, um, I don't think I let you all introduce yourself. I just assume the whole chat knows, but I know we have over twenty thousand people in here, so we should probably let you all introduce. Just well, I let think you it's my first yourself. visit here. I, I don't know it is. for Ian and Rob on that, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm Hogue from Virtual Legality, and generally we're talking about business and law things. I'm not a litigator, much like the rest of the lawyers you might otherwise see on YouTube. I'm a business <laughs> transaction person, uh, an even more small breed of YouTube lawyer. You do cool shit though. Don't undersell yourself by saying I'm not a litigator. Look, I can't, I don't want to do terms of use for video games. I don't want to do that stuff, man. I know okay, that's all, your that's stuff. Awesome stuff. Let's I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm not, so you, you're thinking it's underselling because you feel very lofty about your litigation status. No, I, I think what you do is really cool. I, I, I wasn't saying I was uncool. I was saying I was different. Okay, uh, that's know, fair. No. <laughs> I thought you were underselling the oh, cool no. stuff that you no, do. No, transactional for the win. Ab absolutely, every time. No, I, I'm just uh, I, I'm just kidding. But no, I do. I talk about business and law of, as Emily mentioned, video games, technology, software, pop culture, but not the same kind of pop culture. So pop culture is big, big umbrella, big tent. Um, and so I talk a lot about um, really, really specific nerdy things, uh, but very often going through terms of use and things like that. So we just did a video on 
Uh, you may have seen the Final Fantasy XIV billboard that may or may not be advertising for an erotic club uh, online with modded assets that are owned by someone else. And is that legal? Oh. I don't know. You'll have to watch the video. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, but they, uh, that, that's the kind of stuff that we talk about. And we, of course, had to rush and do an Elon Musk video tonight. Uh, oh, unexpectedly. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Earlier today, do you want to give a brief like what Elon Musk did or didn't do today? Because I forgot Elon to even Musk terminated that. his agreement to purchase Twitter or tried to. Uh, we do have a portion of the video that talks about what the Delaware Court of Chancery can and can't do when somebody oh. looks like this uh, in a buying context. But he tried to terminate the agreement. This was pretty evident that this might be the way he goes for about two months now. Uh, I had yeah. a video that said, "Is Elon just playing around?" When he started to say, "I'm not sure about these fake bot accounts." The um, bots, that, the that bots. Pretty, yeah, exactly. It's all bots. It's all fake. It's all spam. And he actually yep. spends, uh, this was really interesting. They, they send a letter to the SEC, which is arguably not what they had to do for this. Uh, but they send a letter to the SEC and the last paragraph of that letter is all shade. It is all publicly filed <laughs> insults towards Twitter that the, the, the word wildly appears to describe how off their spam count is. Um, like they, wow. they intimate all sorts of things and then they finish with, and by the way, if that is in fact true, the SEC is going to have some stuff to look at as well. Oh. And if the SEC gets involved, that would be a real material adverse effect, effect on the company. Wouldn't it? Elon wow. Musk out. Like, like it has this kind of mic drop quality to it. It's a very odd thing. I haven't followed Elon Musk a ton in my space, but I have done a lot of mergers and acquisitions and, and capital raises and things like that. He is oddball in terms of what he puts forth and how much he uses the process as a public relations machine. Right. Uh, and what's funny about that is he uses Skadden Arps, which is one of the biggest law firms in the world. Yep. And I, you can, you can kind of feel a little of the tension with, with the lawyers trying to lawyer it and then like say things like it's wildly off base. It's like, Oh, Wow. Oh, Scadden's trying to find their way into the shade and they're uncomfortable with it because they're not the bungee lawyers who did it brilliantly. <laughs> like we love some shady lawyers up on this channel, not shady in the in the like throwing shade. <laughs> yeah, we like the throwing shade. We don't like the acting shady. We love a good like, um, well, YouTube fix your shit within yes. a legal filing. We love For that. 20 pages where like, you and I YouTube kind of overcrossed. Yes. By the way, YouTube's not a party to this, Your Honor, but we have some but, things to say. I have to let my audience know in this PR statement, I mean legal filing, what the ball that has been dropped. I loved Bungie's filing. I like that they found the person who who was was causing all of the kind of copyright chaos within their community and sussed it out, but they had to file the lawsuit to get there. So yeah, that I really sequence like that. was wild because yep. I got contacted by a bunch of the people that were directly affected and a bunch of the people that got that, I don't know what you'd call it, manifesto. I know Bungie calls it that. I don't know if that's. I love calling should. it a manifesto. Okay. Well, it is. It's 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 crazy. You can almost see it potentially created with like magazine letters uh, in the right circumstance. And uh, wait, yeah, do you have thing. the manifesto? I, I have a copy of it. Have from... you read it on your channel yet? Do you do like one yeah. page a night? Oh no, no, it's not that long. <laughs> it's a shorter manifesto <laughs> than others might otherwise be reading in their spaces. Uh, but um, yeah, that that whole. That whole case was interesting and it will be interesting. And Bungie dragging YouTube is is the most fascinating part. It because it's clear that it's essentially a proxy fight. Um, that this guy's not gonna have the however many millions of dollars they want to get from him. They're <laughs> they're they're threatening him so other people don't do it. But what they're really mad about is that YouTube doesn't have what they want, which is effectively a whitelist for hey, which these are the people that fair. are allowed to do like we're the company. This is the person making copyright strikes on our behalf, but I don't know if that because sorry guys as we've talked about the bungee suit I, the, I have stuff on my channel hoke has stuff on his channel but as as it they kind of um made the the email addresses look the same it might have passed through the system anyway because of the way it was done the only thing i was disappointed about with the lawsuit was that it made it very clear how others could exploit the exploitation <laughs> it, it gave it them like, the step by step on how to exploit bad, you're this. supposed to skip you're supposed to skip like steps three six and seven on how to make the drugs right <laughs> and, and Bungie just goes like line by line is like oh that would totally work it would totally you, you and it did catch that the next time either and it did because the big trick is like they, they get the they get the false complaint and then they're like oh you're trying to rescind it but you weren't the people that asked for the complaint it's like, no no crap yeah you end up in this like <laughs> you know it's snake eating its own tail kind of well, situation. I, I think as creators, we're used to YouTube being weird and mercurial and, and Byzantine and all the words that Bungie uses to describe them. 100% accurate. 
you, you get a black box and you get an email that says, you're in violation. No, we're not telling you what. We might not even tell you what video. Good luck to you. We're very sorry to hear you're a bad person, but maybe you'll get it ne right next time. Thanks. You YouTube. forgot. We know this might be disappointing to you. Right? It, <laughs> it's this condescending <laughs> robot letter. And yeah, yeah. It's like, we, we know this understand. might be upsetting. <laughs> you didn't mean for us to accuse you of cyber bullying and harassment in your news video, but uh, that's on you, not us. So, you know, get better. We're not angry. We're just disappointed. We're disappointed in you. Anyway, Rob, we have to let you introduce yourself over there at Law & Lumber. Are you wearing a Law & Lumber hat? Do you have hats no, now? I don't have hats. That's a golf hat. Oh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> do sports ball. You need a hat. I need a hat. So I need to I need to invest in a hat now. Yep. Okay. I can do that. Yep. You need to get some merch. I need yep. to get merch. Oh, yep. gosh. Everyone's I also need can't, to get merch. can't be the hat guy. I only have certain things that go for me. I know. Here. I have so, to. Just so I love my hats. <laughs> Yeah. so much anyway i do too i need to get a hoag hat that's what i need i'll get you so. a hoag hat if i can remember where the heck i bought these prototypes from six years ago <laughs> Hoag, i sent you the link to start merching your hats oh did you yes. okay on I'll twitter i'll send it again could you could, the, you could you throw on mrs hoag law she's running things now <laughs> I, I i'll sort it out yes i can <laughs> mrs hoag law good for you on running things just like Dr. B's kind of running things. And I got to be honest. I, I said, helpful. I can't do all this stuff as we advance to a second show and things like that. And my wife jumped right in and is like better at all this stuff than I am. Like everything. She might be better at videos uh, at this point. <laughs> but like it is fantastic. It's so great to have uh, her around all the time. Um, and she's she's doing so much. But yeah, I'll, I will link that. It's I, there's just so much. I, I was going to actually come on and say um, I haven't gotten a chance to watch your shows as much as I would like. And I came on this evening. Uh, and your stuff is great, Emily. I really oh, like, you. I really like the, uh, like almost skit asides you do as you, as you <laughs> give yourself the full camera and, uh, and play up whatever aspect. We do the, sidebars. The we have to uh, yeah, do, I, I have it. my own sidebars. I have my own asides and I needed a lighter stream. There's been so much heavy stuff. Yes. Um, I was actually my, we've dealt with a lot with my kids, um, with Technoblades passing. I, and we had just come back from my father-in-law's funeral. So it just, it just hit in like all of the feels. And then there's been so much stuff going on in the news and it feels like everything's collapsing, collapsing in. And I'm like, I just need it to be summer. I just need it to be chill. I just need the world to not fall apart. And like, I want to watch people like fuck shit up with fireworks or something. And there's been no shortage of those videos either. Of <laughs> Some like, of those clips are wild. Of people horrible. like just not getting injured, but just, you know, that's getting, the dream. We're not looking to watch. We don't want to get anyone get injured. We don't <laughs> no. want anyone to get hurt. But it's kind of funny when all your fireworks go off at once and your uh, ring camera catches it. So oh, I just needed the, a lighter stream. I can actually tell you some an interesting uh, story behind one of the famous videos about that. Uh, and it's actually because it's a safety difference between how they do things on big shows here in Canada versus the States. So really? when you watch those big sh the commercial shows, the ones that are synced to music, that's done with a little control box because you don't want somebody sitting there, you know, having to push the buttons for each thing as it right. goes, right? So you have all that pre-programmed. Now, that thing is actually listening to your audio. There's an audio input and it listens to it and it can tell sort of where it is in the song so that it knows what goes up at which points, which is great. But there's two ways you can configure this thing. And because one of the things that you've always got is the person running it has a little dead man switch where if you let go of that, the show stops because, you know, if if the guy running right. the show gets hit by something or, you know, has a heart attack or whatever, you want show stop because you're playing with really serious explosives. You know, some of those shells have a blast radius of like 800 feet, which if that's going into the crowd, you want the guy who just goes, oh to stop the show when he's right. just having that panic moment. Now, the question that comes up in terms of the safety difference is what happens once you get back into the show? Because let's say for 30 seconds, there's some safety issue, like a kid is running out onto the field, you let go of that, you stop everything. But then, you know, that kid's been corralled again, everything's fine, and you want to start the show again. Well, you got two options. The Canadian sort of standard for what people do here is once you start it again, it picks up wherever it should be and everything that was missed in that time just doesn't fire. 
Now that's a pain in the butt because then later you have to go and clean that stuff up. You have to, you know, dispose right. safely, all of that's, you know, maybe reuse it, whatever else. So what they usually do in the States is the opposite, which is when you get to go again, it fires all that remaining time. Well, you know why, Runkle? America. Well, you want the big show and you don't want to have to clean that boom. Stuff up later, right? So the big boom is fine. Now here's the That fun. seems like a disaster though. It can be a disaster waiting to happen because what happened on this one show is that they were testing things out and they were just wanting to make sure that everything is synced. They didn't want to fire anything, but somebody screwed up and had the key in for, you know, the show was actually a go. So they, they should have had it in testing mode. They actually had it in fire mode. That was one problem. The second problem is that they decided to test it with the last like 10 seconds of the audio. Not the first 10 seconds, the last 10 seconds. Oh, no. <laughs> so at that point, the machine says, oh, my God, I have missed the entire show. Fire everything now. And so oh, no. in that last 10 seconds, it fired the entire, like, 15-minute show, which the crowd loved. But it is not what you want to do That's with a fireworks ter show. Terrifying. Wait, do you and have a sign of your introduction? <laughs> <laughs> accurate but yeah it, it was a miracle nobody died on that where's alcohol you've got to put alcohol in there somewhere it factors in <laughs> rob now you have to introduce yourself uh i'm rob i'm the i'm part three to the adhd brady bunch um uh yeah i have a new channel uh discussing whatever I can think of right now doing trials of the century, which is really fun to go that back and fun. look at these old cases. So Rob is famous for the breaking the bed video. Cause Rob is a woodworker slash attorney who works in Fairfax, Virginia. And you got kind of dragged into this cause it was in your home turf. And then you're like, Hey, that's going to be my first video. And then it, how many millions of views does it have now? Like one and a half, I think. Yep. Sure. First video on YouTube. <laughs> sure. I mean, I was on YouTube for six years before I had my first video hit a million and it was on my second channel and my second channel wasn't monetized yet because YouTube loves to do that. But yours well, was I mean, on your, your first video on your brand new channel, not monetized yet. You know, it's mm -hmm. good times. We well, love you. Ian and I will just demure on our first million view <laughs> videos. I don't know that I have one that's hit a million. If I do, you'll it, know. If you do, Ian, that's, that's, then I'll demure by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you have to go ahead and introduce yourself too. Uh, so my name is Ian Runkle. I have a channel, Runkle of the Bailey. I am the uh, sort of token Canadian uh, lawyer here. I do criminal defense and firearms law. And uh, so on my channel, I talk about uh, a lot of Canadian law, also gun issues. But I also kind of got interested in the debt trial. And so I went out to, uh, to Fairfax and met Rob there, who was wonderful. He put me up in his home, not knowing who I was at all. You know, we met on the internet. What could go wrong? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all sorts of potential for that to go completely haywire. But, uh, yeah, no, we, uh, so I went there to see juror reactions and it's, uh, it's been a wild ride, but, uh, I, sort of fell into doing YouTube stuff largely by accident. I started making videos to, because I had somebody telling me you have to make videos and I wanted to prove them wrong. So uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride, but I really enjoy doing it. And I think I'm the only person uh, doing Canadian content. Uh, certainly, I think I'm the only major Canadian legal YouTuber left because I think uh, <laughs> Viva has now fled the country. Has Viva fled the country officially? I Florida, think he's, he's in now Florida, Florida now. Well, there you go. So the, to, reign, reign supreme of the Canadian YouTube. <laughs> you guys have those all dressed chips that are just worth a border crossing <laughs> for. They're so freaking good. They're so what, good. You know what they are? It's Delicious. all the other flavor mixes mixed together. It's so good. It is really good. It's, <laughs> it's really good. good. We need to get our, our chip game up. But um rob and runkle you guys both had the opportunity to go to virginia what well rob it's where you practice look at the jurors watch this i want to know all of you have you looked at this at all hogue with the juror 15 issue yep so what do you guys think like what what it, what 
what straws, if any, is Elaine grasping at? <laughs> I, I sent you. I sent you a present. It's oh. a it's a slide that's right that's right there. Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, look, we got slides going wrong. We've got slides. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I can make this any bigger, but I think that's no. I think that works. Go to page two. Go to page two. Slide two. What is uh, this? This is Virginia controlling case law. Fantastic. While this is unreported, the case it cites to is a Supreme Court case from 1980. In 1988. Wonderful. And basically, down there at the bottom, you can say that <clears throat> this is the jury list, and this is the issue he raises with the jury list. And right. if you go to page three, right there, it says uh, contained in the irregularity. It appears right. that the irregularity was intentional, uh, probable cause and justice to occur, to uh, to have it to the accused. Um, basically, what we've been saying, eight point oh one dash three fifty two. And this controlling case law, you didn't raise it. You have to demonstrate it actually hurts you. You're, you're SOL. Right now, you're just blowing smoke. I wonder if they held and, on to this because they had the list while they were doing voir dire. Why bring it up now they after you lose? They basically admitted that they held on to it from my read of the documents. Oh, tell me. So? Uh, because they come out and they say, uh, well... The depth side says that we were supposed to have raised this during uh, during the voir dire. We couldn't do that because the questions were pre-selected. What they didn't say is we couldn't do that because we didn't notice. And that's a hell of a distinction. So my my read on that is we noticed. We just thought that we couldn't. And that is such a BS you know thing. Oh well, we already had all of our questions pre-approved. You don't think you could raise like um. Just that's what I said. I mean, Your I, Honor, we I need your 15 skincare routine. They appear be, to be much younger than 77. Year woman, Your Honor. No, it's got to be worse. It's got to be worse because you know for, for a fact, you know that there was a jury consultant or somebody that had pulled that jury list and then found everything that they could know about that person. Oh, absolutely. Social do you media, think do you address. think Eve Barlow went on social media and looked for all of these people cuz I'm going to go with think. yes. Yeah, That's they probably my had the photo. suspicion. Yeah. To, well, and to say that they didn't know this during the trial at which point they could have made a timely objection is just they're also potentially I think opening themselves up to these kinds of questions in a really serious way. Judge A and, is going to be pissed. Oh, if I was them, I like if I was Bredehoft right now, I'd be saying we need a disbursement and it is a fireproof suit. You know, we need some uh, like a full asbestos suit because I'm not walking in there in anything less than, you know, right. the thousand degree smelter gear. You don't want that smoke <laughs> because that fire. I mean, she's just going <laughs> to if I was Escarati, I'd be just ready to kill people when they oh, walked no. in. I. Ask karate. So the standard practice on this one, and I, I drafted like, and I put on Twitter a joke draft motion, like having considering the arguments <laughs> of or a draft order, having considering the arguments of counsel on the pleadings, the motion and supplemental motion are hereby denied. I, if I'm asked karate, I might actually have a hearing just to chew yes. her out. Oh, even I, though would, this oh I would. I would absolutely say would absolutely. everyone is required to attend in person for this. Uh, you shall not send an agent. You shall not send a junior. You shall appear in person because you signed your name to this shit. Everyone who put their signature on this, you are going to be there. We'll pick a day that you're available. We'll send Rob. Rob. And you know, if they maybe, if they put this date public, they're not going to televise it. Someone has to be in I, court. I, I will 100, 1000 percent yep. be there if this is a public hearing. Yep. Maybe you should also like put your pets into like a, you know, a, a shelter for a few days. And, <laughs> you know, because I'm not guaranteeing that you walk out the same door that you walked in from. I would be You'll super be changed. Pissed. Elizabeth Blackson said, is this why she wanted to hide the identities? Is this why they sealed the jurors? Did they already know? I don't know. I think they didn't want the media asking the jurors what they thought about Amber Heard. That was my thought. Yeah. I haven't. That thought hasn't changed. And I mean. I don't think that that's why they do it, but it's it seems like they had to have known, or they had to uh, have known during voir dire. Because how do you all of a sudden go? Oh, that juror <laughs> seems so young. Well, on this one, they would have been spending you know thousands and thousands of dollars at least on jury research, right? You're not walking yes. in going, "Oh yeah, well we'll just take the first people who happen to come in off the street." <laughs> we accept. 
<laughs> like that is not how they're going to do this. There's going to yeah. be so like how much of their budget was spent on jury consultants and experts? I'm guessing quite a bit. And the other th if, I don't remember the section, but Virginia code, they actually cite it in their initial motion. They say, oh, yes, you know, Virginia code puts a positive obligation on us yes. to verify the accuracy of this. And we didn't do that, but you yep. should totally just let that skate. Ooh, that's a bold filing. Yeah. I, I wonder if she knows I mean, they know, they have to know that this is has low likelihood of success. They'll probably try to appeal it, but low likelihood of success. Oh, we binged. Yay. Low likelihood I, of success. But I wonder if this is just fodder for the pro Amber Heard stands, the seven of them on Twitter uh, that are just like, <laughs> see, her due process was violated by rando jurors that wanted their 15 minutes of fame. But did anyone else get did anyone else get really nervous when they were reading that motion that they're releasing little bits and a little bit more of, of identifying information like there was the date of birth and I, I, I'm getting more and more nervous the more I'm reading this stuff I'm going you're getting really careful with those redactions well it's gonna be in the channel, in the attachments too and at least the the attachments weren't made public um by four channel have features by the end of the week um I mean I could probably hire an investigator to have those jurors names fairly quickly um uh, i'm not doing it because i what would i do with that information but uh you know i think there's enough there that you could identify this down to two specific individuals without too much research but we do know either of you remember in the same house with the same name we have right. the years that they were born right we, we know what county they live in right uh, so i mean all you need um, is to buy a publicly accessible database of people they in the could just area. Get the, they could just get the voter um, polls. Yeah, and then you could just run a search. Yeah. And well, and that's that looks to be what the backing evidence is. I mean, don't they reference the voter registration? They do. They tell you how they got evidence? into so, it. Yeah, they I tell mean, you how they got. You talk it. about instructions on how to do things in a lawsuit. That is right there for you. That's how they did it. Yep. So yeah, if I was the judge and. Like I'd be saying you put this much detail into a public filing. Uh, I wondered if the redactions were in the filing or if the redactions were deadlines redactions. Cause we haven't seen, cause the court's not uploading these. I don't know why yeah. the court has stopped uploading things. People, uh, people ask that it's, I think it's honestly just because the court has moved on from this. Like they just, yeah. it, it's one of those things where this system was never in place before this case. It, this case is the reason the system is there. And once that jury verdict was in, the clerk's office is like, we've got how many thousands of things coming in? We're not doing this. Uh, Real Laura B on Twitter said that basically what she got was that they're no longer uploading anything on the depth trial. It's still available, but it's available via the Fairfax County clerk's office. Sure. So, which means uh, somebody has to, which is why the outlets are able to send somebody or Rob, which is why the outlets have somebody <laughs> going to the clerk's office and pulling stuff. I just wonder how they got it so fast, but I imagine there's someone in the clerk's office that's willing to make a call to somebody that they know. Cause that's how, that's how LA TMZ had people that they knew within clerk's offices and stuff. Um, way back in the day but then harvey levin knew a lot of the oh, judges too so could be amber heard's team directly i mean could, it, could be. Doesn't even need a it, it absolutely could be and that's what <laughs> i mean that's what uh you did father spears did is stuff would get without the filing stamp get out to the media ahead of it even being filed and we actually saw britney's new lawyer rosengart saying people had this before i even received a courtesy copy mm. <laughs> what is happening i was like oh my oh my so no, I, I think you've made some great points on this, including that there's the, there's process. They got process, um, and 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 having to show the harm, as Rob points out, is an important part of that as well. I mean, what yeah. what are you talking about? And the other aspect is, as you rightly pointed out, and I hadn't thought about it before, is we're describing a situation in which this person lives at this place and gets something with his name on it. Uh, it, it could be a junior, it could be a senior, it could be a mi different middle name, but right. like broadly. They get a summons with their name on it to where they live. We're talking about a footfall. We're not talking about a, a, a Soviet psyop to get somebody into the jury pool. Well, they're trying to say that. They're trying to say literally some rando knew the dates of jury service and just showed up without a, a summons. That's what they're alluding to. But it seems like someone showed up with a summons with at least their last name on it. 
We don't know what they filled out on the online form, but we don't know. And in the Maxwell case, I think the information left out was more egregious than this being potentially a junior senior too. information. I issue. do too. I thought that one might have been a mistake. I thought so too. I thought so too. And um uh Oh gosh, why am I why because whiskey is why I'm having name uh, Joe Nearman um over at Good Logic. Like my brain was conflating the YouTube channel name and the name, which sure. is why I love people just naming their YouTube channels themselves. But because it's easier for my brain. But Joe was like, "No, the standard's too high. There's no way." I'm like, "I think just I was a criminal prosecutor. Like if I had seen that interview as a prosecutor, my stomach would have clenched and I would have been like, I'm going to barf. This juror did not say that this is going to be a mistrial. So like my gut reaction was like, Oh God, this one's bad. And the court walked through and was like, it just doesn't meet the standard. And I'm like, if that doesn't meet the standard for a mistrial based on something the jurors did, there is no way that a juror that was voir and agreed to by the attorneys when they had this information in hand is going to rise to that level. This is not going to be a mistrial. This is more, I don't know, fluffery. Well, and this fluffery. is also the difference between a criminal trial and a civil trial, because they're yeah. going to apply a more strict standard to a criminal trial. Much more. They're going to be much more inclined to grant a mistrial there. Here, it's just over money. And as much as it might be tons and tons of money, like more money than I expect to see in my lifetime. <laughs> don't sell yourself short, Runkle. You're a Targaryen. Stand <laughs> up. Fight for your throne, man. But I mean, you know, still, it's just money at the end of the day. Nobody's spending a day in jail over this. So, yeah. No. yeah. Yep. I, I mean, unless, not in this, not in this country anyway. It seems like Australia might want uh, to take a crack at it again. So <laughs> I've done my wine. I feel like it's time to for an upgrade to uh, to a fantastic. Whiskey. I had um I had asked my kiddo because my my eldest if he would grab the whiskey out of the kitchen and bring it in and he says no i'm good thanks and i was like kid is this what you're texting me <laughs> i will say though having a 14 year old has been uh, quite a lot of fun it is it is it is quite a lot of fun occasionally i'll say something and he's like that's what she said i'm like <laughs> <laughs> they get to be a hoot as they get up but up in age I, it's I like really there's adorable things yeah. there's adorableness and then as they get older there's like You've got this like very funny little person. It's like figuring out the world that sometimes gets taken over by aliens and is very moody. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's truth to that too. But yeah, it's it is remarkable how often they can throw a genuine witticism at you and make you laugh. And you're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, my I mean, we we tease about my oldest and talk about the well actually because he had a teacher that was conflating some of the Roman gods and some of the Greek gods, and he was Whoa. like, well actually. That's that's not. my daughter would have been right in there. Well, actually, <laughs> have you guys been to Nashville to see the Parthenon here where they uh, filmed no, you, Percy we Jackson? Talked about we this talked about offline, this. And it is definitely something that I should be taking my eldest to because she is absolutely over the moon about a lot of pantheons, but particularly the Greek. Yeah. So anyway, as I've invited everyone to come to Nashville, the <laughs> law nerds, the law nerds would meet us. We'll all go to Taco Bell and drink. It'll be fantastic. But that aside, um, I think we've all come to the conclusion that this is not fetch is not going to happen with this one. It's just fuckery and it potentially has some really concerning um, elements to it, putting out a lot of information about the jurors that they asked to have sealed. Yeah. I think it's primarily to set up that they can shout due process at the appeals level. Right. I mean, like they want to yell due process. They want to yell first amendment. They want to just say big constitutional things. The um, Constitution. They do though, right? They want to put the American flag on, and they want to, you know, say various amendment numbers. I think that's all the more reason for the judge to just hammer them hard, and just be like, "Not only is this some BS, but let's do some damage to your PR campaign because this is purely a PR finding, and you're throwing the whole judicial system under the bus for your PR." Okay, yeah. um, how's this for PR? Uh, here's five hundred thousand in costs. Sort it. Yeah, like, the judge has been really kind when not granting sanctions. I was going back through the ruling where they tried to block um, they tried to block the entire case based on the UK ruling because they've been talking about it so much post verdict that I was like, I have to go back because I know Judge A went through a very extensive reasoning on this. So I went back and did a video on Judge A's reasoning going through oh. everything. And at the end, it was like, and as to the request for sanctions, this motion was ill advised and blah, 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 and went through it, but said, but it does not rise to the level of sanctions. So it was, there was definitely some snarkiness 
in the ruling from Judge A talking about um, why the UK ruling doesn't apply in Virginia and why Amber Heard's not a party. Yeah, she does. She's clearly got it in her because it yeah. came out like ever so slightly. I, I my, one of my favorite moments is what you're, you're just a you're just a snarky guy, counsel, or what? What, what, yep. did, what did she say? You're just a look? snarky guy. She said it to Ben. <laughs> there was a day though after. Um, there were a few times, but one was after Alejandro Romero's deposition where he was like vaping and driving away where she closes her laptop lid and is just like, <laughs> she did a very good job of keeping the snark under wraps whenever the yes. jury was in the room. Mm -hmm. But when the jury leaves, she's a little bit more willing to be. That's right. That ben Chu comment is related to the TMZ off jury issue. Cause yep. he said there are no. Uh, Edward Murrow or whatever he said. And he said, I really do respect TMZ. She's like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but he got up and was like, I have so much respect for my colleague. I did not mean to be snarky. And she's like, you're just a snarky guy. Yeah. I, I loved <laughs> seeing kind of the human. I thought Judge A was great. I, um, I think she's probably a great site judge. I'm sure her colleagues really like her and the people that appear in front of her have a tremendous amount of respect for her. I was very disappointed to see them trying to throw her under the bus. I thought she was great. There were times where I would have lit into those attorneys. This is why I don't want to be a judge because there were times I was like, I would have started throwing things off the bench at people mm -hmm. like a water polo coach, just like hurling things at counsel in the well because I was so angry. And she actually gave assist to Elaine when Elaine could not fathom a question. She's like, just ask this, like just counsel, find your footing and get back into it. What you can't see is she like all, I think judges like the first day you become a judge, I think they give you a class. Like every judge, you have to have a look where the second you look over the bench and it's like, you look over your glasses or you pull your glasses down no. and the, everyone in the, everyone attorney that practices is just no, stop talking. You mm -hmm. are yeah. on thin ice. Judge Askarati has that and it's piercing and she threw it around a couple of times in the trial and just Elaine just blew straight through it. But Ben Chu would kind <laughs> of joke about it, but she, she has the ability to throw it out there and basically give you that look and say, or do you really want to go this route? <laughs> she, she did that a few times during the sidebars. You could actually see she'd be sitting. She's got a bit of a tell, which is the side that she seems to be talking to in the sidebars is going to lose. Yeah. Um, yes. Over and over again, you'd see her talking to Elaine, and then Elaine loses. And occasionally, she's like, I'm going to address you, Camille. And then Elaine wins one. Less often, that one. But sometimes she was just giving Elaine this look like, are you sure you want to keep going? You know, do you think you maybe want to wrap this conversation up right now? And Rob's right. She was just oblivious to that. Just immune to it. <laughs> Which I, is not I a good with thing. Like everybody saying good things about Judge A, I think that that <laughs> she really evidenced that kind of tempered approach that you want to see um, out of a judge. So she be an absolute treat to appear in front of. Yeah, I you thought know. she was great. So. She was consistent. I didn't always like her hearsay rulings, but nope. she was consistent to a fault. So. Yeah, you know, I'll take consistent over weird any day. You don't want to judge that just does weird stuff because you can't even make a good argument in front of them because you're like, I didn't know you were going to do that. That's so weird. So at least with a judge that's consistent, you can be prepared. It doesn't seem that, you know, Elaine always was prepared or maybe doesn't understand hearsay or doesn't go to trial that often, which is why all the criminal attorneys are like, literally, this is the shit we do day in and day every, out every day. Out day um and it just seems clear that elaine does not do trials nearly that much but i said what if any she actually did that at one point she no, was like yes she, she did, did. but okay. i said what if any that's when the what if any is not a cure-all happened that yeah. moment was magical i mean there were some magical moments in trial but that was a a magic magic moment so i have been asked a lot i don't know runkle or rob have any of you followed the girardi stuff because I have been asked when I'm going to let Sweet Summer Child Hogue know about what Tom Girardi was up to. But I don't know if either of you know either about lawyer fallen from grace, Tom Girardi. I know somewhat about it. Now, I, I'm a bankruptcy attorney. I pulled some of the details, but not all of them. And I know that there was um, – he's not a dip, is he? He's not a debtor in possession? He is in possession, but he's, he's also a in a conservatorship. Okay, so there's like triple oversight, but then somehow Erica Girardi had access to funds that were part of the estate and spent those funds. We'll talk about that in a minute. Hogue oh. has no idea what we're talking about. Runkle, do you know what I'm talking about? 
vaguely, vaguely. I just heard Chat. that the guy wandered away with like $2 million in client funds, which oh, sweet is... summer child. Uh, I mean, that's the one thing that they warn you about when you're sort of a junior lawyer and you're starting out is basically lots of mistakes as a lawyer are forgivable, including ones that you might think are way off, you know, way beyond the pale. But the one that is really always the red line is walking away with your client's money. So I love that you said $2 because that's one of the cases. Oh, man. That's so for all of you, chat, thank you for bearing with me. We just covered a new RICO filing tonight that has been filed against two of the attorneys in the firm, Erica Girardi, the wife. Here's the stage. Tom Girardi. Bring them up on RICO? It's a civil RICO. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not yet a crim not yet a criminal Rico. It's a the civil John Rico. Grisham novel. What, what, yes. what are we talking about? Yeah. Yes, it is. it is. They call it the uh, Girardi family organization because one of the lawyers from the law firm is also the son-in-law. But we'll get there. Has Tom somebody paid Popat over this one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Tom Girardi, famed attorney, had a small bit in the Aaron Brockovich case and then went on to have multiple billion dollar settlements. He is a large class action, um, catastrophic injury attorney. Girardi Keese was a very well-known and well-regarded firm in California before okay. his wife, Erica Girardi, Erica Jane, became a longstanding member of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh so, God, that means that all that trust money is like for seriously injured people, doesn't it? Seriously, well, seriously injured people or the families of seriously injured people. There is a client who is owed $11 million for a gas line explosion for catastrophic injury that has um, that they are still fighting over. They are actually secured debtors because they the Rui Gomez family had to go through the horror of the Edison gas line explosion that actually killed an individual that was in their house oh. when this happened in the middle of the night. The Jeez. injured individual was awarded $12 million. Tom Girardi said, I'll help, I'll help dole it out to you over time, invest it. I know how to manage money. I got you. The lawyer said this. The lawyer said this. So, and they've retold this multiple times. The money stopped getting paid. It's the um, red flag when your lawyer offers to help you invest. Um, yeah, I got you. I got you. We'll just, we'll make sure you don't spend it all at once. You know, you know how those lottery winners do and they just spend all the money and they end up on TV. We got you. We'll make sure we'll take care of you. We got you. So the money stopped coming in. They eventually find a lawyer that will take on Tom Girardi because he has a very large reputation, a vicious reputation, is politically well connected to everyone, including the governor of California and brags about the amount of lawyers that he's put on the bench. According to the LA Times, he also had members of the California bar in his pocket based on the parties that he would throw and the other um, the other kind of extracurricular activities he would engage in with the state bar investigators because he's been sued over a hundred times with regard to money going missing and such. But we'll get there. We're not there yet. So um, the money starts stops coming in. They find an attorney willing to take on Tom Girardi. They sue. It settles. They get a judgment for $11 million against their attorney. It doesn't get paid. So then they're attaching property and they are one of the few secured debtor clients in these two bankruptcies. Okay. At the beginning of 2020, the wheels come the fuck off because there is a case going on in Illinois with the Lion Air crash, one of the big Boeing crashes out of Indonesia, where they represent a number of clients with co-counsel Edelson PC, a firm in Illinois. Edelson PC realizes that the clients haven't been paid and brings it to the court's attention. And the court is like, I'm sorry, WTF, they haven't been paid. This is $2 million. Why haven't the clients been paid? And then they hold Tom Girardi in contempt. They freeze the assets and set a contempt hearing for all of the other lawyers involved that lasted days saying, what did you know? When did you know it? Edelson PC, Jay Edelson, their lead attorney, takes the stand in this contempt hearing and talks about the phone calls he had with other members of the firm saying, Tom Girardi was in the hospital, we're getting it taken care of, it's just an error here, it's going to get paid, and started actively putting them off when they were asking why the clients hadn't gotten paid in Illinois. And that is when everything hits the fan. Um, debtors That's how get you together. buy someone else's problem. Yep, debtors <laughs> get together and force the bankruptcy. 
And as the bankruptcy goes, it starts tumbling. It's now over a hundred million dollars on the law firm bankruptcy. Lots of it are client debtors, but it's also the house is attached in the personal bankruptcy, but the house has liens on it to all these legal lenders and some of the clients that had been secured lenders. And then the earrings come up. There is a pair of $750,000 earrings that were purchased that are now worth upwards of a million dollars. The check was written out of the client trust account directly to the jeweler. So that just, <laughs> that just came up and the earrings were recovered by the bankruptcy trustee for the law firm. So the bankruptcy trustee from the law firm is trying to figure out how much the law firm paid to Erica Girardi because the law firm was paying her American Express bills for their personal life directly out of the law firm funds. I don't know if she knew how her super rich husband was paying her bills, but he was writing them directly out of the law firm operating accounts. But the, the, the accountant has said that he is going to plead the fifth if he's deposed. He's filed that with the court. And apparently the accounts were all on paper and are an absolute mess. The state bar disbarred him. All of the money was commingled in client trust accounts. Clients weren't getting paid. The client trust account monies were hard to trace and were going everywhere. And this was brought up before the state bar for at least a decade, if not more, and nothing was done. So over $100,000, money getting written directly out of client trust accounts. And um, he, he is now in a uh, conservatorship in his and 80s. Chat, um, you may not sort of realize this, but wrote a check for jewelry out of the client trust account. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars directly to the jeweler. Oh, 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 oh. And <laughs> and in that case, he assigned it to costs. Wow. He um, assigned um, it to costs. Mm, 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 mm. This is the legal equivalent of we found the guy with a dead body in his trunk that was wrapped in cocaine. Oh, it's like <laughs> While he was holding gone. the gun, while yeah. he was holding the gun, did I not fired. say a hundred? Did I say a hundred thousand? I meant a hundred million. million. I meant yes. if I didn't say it, I meant it. I'm, but yeah, I this is a hundred million. This is where we end up. Oh, ah, what did I do? I fucked <laughs> things up. Sorry, whiskey. Um, this is, I was going to pull up my screen, but this is where we end up with this new lawsuit just filed in civil court for racketeering conspiracy to commit racketeering receipt of stolen property, aiding and abetting concealment of stolen property yep. money hadn't received unlawful business practices, conversion, and deceit against the son-in-law, member of the law firm, lead attorney, Keith Griffin, member of the law firm, the ex-wife, legal lenders, they said, were in it that kept lending him money to keep the law firm afloat to try to get paid back. It's a mess. And there's emails between the Indonesian um, widows and orphans who were the clients in Lion Air asking where their money was and being lied to by the other attorneys in the firm when the other attorneys in the firm knew they weren't being paid. That, that brings me to one question because the chat thought I was frozen. I was not frozen. I have the complaint pulled up on my other screen and I was reading in shock as I was, as I was looking at this, is this true? So I have the complaint pulled up um, that Erica on housewives said that the victims whose money Tom stole might be lying about the theft. Yes. She said that. Holy. And crap. it's been proven to a number of the clients. It's been proven. He settled cases. I've pulled back the lawsuits from these massive, like environmental tort cases where the money has disappeared. And a lot of those cases got discharged. Why? Statute of limitations. It seems like there was, I personally believe there was some fraud in this where he was assuring people and or threatening them. And by the time they got a lawyer to bring this to court, they were beyond the statute of limitations when they realized their attorney had stolen from them and he was using that. I think the fraud should extend the statute of limitations. I don't think people adequately did that. I think they're kind of fucked now anyway because there's no money uh, to be had and the bankruptcy the trustee issue. is doing what they yeah. can. It's collectability at this point, I would assume. And that's, that's the that's bankruptcy awful. is a mess. Oh, sorry, Allie. Allie, thank you, Allie. What was the name of Erica's old yacht? She said it on last week's episode of Housewives. They called the yacht the illegal. Oh, wow. They also had racehorses in Florida. The vet hasn't been paid. It was in the personal side of the bankruptcy, the racehorse vet. But they all had very uh, legal names running for justice and some other bullshit. But... There were also racehorses. There were two jets. Um, 
she has a song called expensive to be me i don't know if you've heard it but it's like it's expensive to be me eh, 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 eh. and she talks about spending forty thousand plus a month on glam man that sounds like the kind of song that you play at a sentencing well, <laughs> we know that the judge in Illinois who was like, I don't know who the fuck you people think you are, but this is this is Illinois, bitches. I don't care what your California ass is doing. We know that it was forwarded to the AUSAs. I think for me on the criminal prosecution, Tom's in a conservatorship. I Unless you're finding tax stuff with regard to Erica, I don't know who you're going after until you start getting to the other lawyers. Oh, the other lawyers, if there's... There's emails. I mean, how about how about wire fraud? Yep. There's yep. money that comes out of different states that cross the state lines. Doesn't that get into wire fraud? I think we can get into wire fraud and 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 some of the conversion and fraud and the inducement when you're now lying to clients about where the money is. Just trying to figure out, um, just trying to tie that back, I think it's gonna take some time because well, the books are such a mess, but they they're starting to get into it in the bankruptcy so whatever the bankruptcy court gets if they turn it over i mean most of that's becoming public record and and this is a lesson that i tell all of my bankruptcy clients um is that there's a there's a saying that you know people don't get busted for bankruptcy fraud bankruptcy is what shows everyone else all the other frauds that are going on and it's funny that this is housewives of um beverly hills because there was another housewife whose fraud was uncovered by via a bankruptcy filing. And that housewife was um, Housewives of New Jersey. Teresa. Teresa. GDJ. And it yep. was their filing wasn't, they didn't get convicted on bankruptcy fraud, but the filing disclosed a bunch of um, undisclosed assets that they were uh, in solving mortgage at the time. Fraud. They applied for mortgage loans mm -hmm. and they lied on the mortgage lo yep. loan applications. And those guys are, they serve time for that. So bankruptcy they fraud did. is never what you get convicted of, but it's oh, no, what the, shows everyone else. Erica, yeah. I don't know what Erica knew. You know, when it's it's millions of dollars that were being paid out of the law firm to her American Express bill. I don't know if your super rich husband that's 20 plus whatever years older than you is like, I'm paying the bills and he's had billion dollar settlements in the news. If you really know how those bills are getting paid. But we already know there's multiple millions in tax debt owed by her to the Franchise Tax Board in California. So the IRS is not going to be far behind that. And I think what gets Erica is the tax shenanigans because she she has said in her book, she has said on Watch What Happens Live and others, I know where the money is and coming from. I, I signed those taxes too. So oh. I think the IRS gets her. I think at the end of the day, Whatever she knew or didn't know about what Tom was doing, I think the IRS gets her at the end of the day. Well, if you say franchise taxes, that's California, right? California. Well, if there's multiple millions to California, the feds are going to be. Uh, it was in a filing. It was kind of a one-off in a filing okay. that the Franchise Tax Board asked her or reminded her that she owed them over $2 million. The fun thing about taxes, though, is that once you owe it, then there's like the fees and the penalties, and then they all compound together. California, man. They don't screw around. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, I forgot the multi millions in loans to her business. It's been alleged in multiple of the of the filings that the law firm loaned her business um, upwards of twenty million dollars to do the music videos and everything else. Twenty seems, million dollars in business. Yes, but it seems like some of those were in kind and not actual loans that okay. Tom Girardi's law firm was funding the her company. Okay. It's a it's a lot. I mean this. When this all came down, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like in law school, it's like, if you put 50 cents out of line or like interest yeah. compounds in a client trust account and you can't account for it, you will be disbarred and dragged through the streets naked with people yelling for shame. Like well, that is what's going to happen to I you. I tell people to read the back of the of their local bar journal, right? The last couple of pages, you get fascinating stories, but for the most part, it's stole money and stooped clients. Like those are the people. And in that California, they don't give a fuck if you stopped clients. In Michigan, they do. <laughs> so, so, you know, those those are the two things that happen in the back. And you're absolutely right when you described it as saying something along the lines of you might think something's really awful, and it probably is uh, on an ethical basis. That's not necessarily the thing that'll get you disbarred or even get like significant disciplinary sanctions. It's the wildest stuff I've ever seen. I've um, I've told this story before. At one point, I, you know, I had my bookkeeper in. We were going over my books because you got to reconcile every month to show that you have exactly how much money you're supposed to have. And I had 400 extra dollars. 
And so my first thought is, well, extra money. What's the problem? And my bookkeeper's like, yeah, this is your first From year where? of private practice. That belongs to somebody and you need to know who. Mm -hmm. So, and that ruined my entire, like I had to cancel appointments. I was basically going to my assistant being like, call everybody. Um, I can't meet with anybody today. I got to get this we have dealt to fix with. This. this is, and at the end of the day, what we determined was that the bank had credited me twice for one check. Somebody had come in and paid 400 bucks and the bank had said, okay, well, and they screwed up and they credited me twice. So I called the bank and said, hey, um, you know, I was tracking down this check going, these two deposits, do they have the same check number? And they went, <laughs> oh, hey, they do. Uh, that's our mistake. You can keep it. And you're like, and, but I can't charge you for the fucking heart attack I've had. Well, not just that, but it was like, no, I can't. I need you guys to take that money out of my account and to write me a letter today explaining that this was your screw up because I have to attach this to a communication to the law society because I'm required to report to the law society this discrepancy in my account. And I want your signed letter on this to explain what happened because otherwise yeah. I'm in a world of shit. Yep. So I had to argue with my bank about please take this $400 back, which is one of these conversations you never expect to have. Like, you know, when you, you know, Monopoly has bank error in your favor, collect $200. <laughs> you're like, not if you're a lawyer. <laughs> it was like the worst thing that happened, you know, but that, that week. And so, yeah, it, it's such a big deal. And it's such a big deal. And it's, the hubris of hundreds and it was you know there was a there's another legal commentator on twitter who shall not be named some of the chat will know who it is but um made fun of me on podcast for saying this is operating it felt to me when i started reading these initial complaints that it felt like it was operating like a ponzi scheme like the new yeah. client money came in and they were paying the old clients just enough to get them not to file a lawsuit against him and it felt like that getting the new money to pay the old money and then as this all came down you know, Edelson PC started calling this a Ponzi scheme. I felt very vindicated, <laughs> but they were running this law firm. It seems like a Ponzi scheme. And the person I feel horrible for in all of this, not just the, um, all of the clients who are not going to get paid because they're just, there aren't the assets. Yes. There are still some cases outstanding. New lawyers have had to take those over. So Girardi Keys is not going to get the amount of legal fees that they were. They've gone after the $750,000 earrings. They've done an auction. Oh, they found, um, very fancy lingerie in his desk that they auctioned off. That was not for, um, Erica Girardi. So that was interesting. There was Ooh. also a doxing of a federal judge that happened in all this, who Girardi was having an affair with. Um, so that happened somewhere in the middle that he, that Erica doxed the federal judge, um, and put out all of their text messages together and insinuated that Tom Girardi paid for the federal judge plastic surgery, but that's an aside, but there was Sorry, underwear auctioned off plastic surgery. Oh God! It Rubble. looks like boobs and butt is what she was. Which kind do you think, Ian? I I just <laughs> wanted to confirm because it, you know, technically I've had jaw surgery. I you know a plastic surgery. I had my jaw reshaped because my orthodontist screwed up. That's it's another whole story. But That's you know, you got to check. Different. Like, is this, it's it's you know what a nose cosmetic. job is one Should thing. I say cosmetic surgery? That's what she Im look. That's what Erica Girardi implied. What was funny no is judgment that here, but you shouldn't be stealing client funds or doing that kind of thing for I that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. for any of for any you know, of, for seven hundred. First of all, do we have a picture of those. By the way, is that a real thing? The earrings, or is that a money laundering scheme. The earrings. Oh, I not, have a picture not, of the no, not the boobs and butts. The earrings. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten late. I've had whiskey. I just wanted to be clear. Um, no, I have a picture of the earrings. They've factored heavily on on a few seasons she also has a very rare panther ring from cartier there's a lot of very expensive jewelry there's also been some random break-ins that i just i just look i worked in the arson department a little bit and a lot of the arsons i worked on were not really Arsons? arson they were insurance fraud. So when there's these random break-ins in this massive mansion in Pasadena with all this expensive shit and none of it's insured and weird how they got in. I, I, I need more wine and I need my unicorn. So I'm going to mute myself. I need to know about all of that. I'm going to show pictures of the earrings. Yeah. Those so earrings are worth more than my $750,000 check by you in earrings. Well, they're more than that now. Hold on. Let me find my favorite picture of her in the earrings. Let me see That's if I can find her snapping or what. My house. I mean, they're worth more than that now. These were bought 
you know, 15 plus years ago. She said it was expensive to be her, Ian. She did. She made it very clear. She has a book. And read the book. I've got this rant about them using like rap lyrics against young black guys who are trying to, you know, make it in the rap scene when they get charged with something. And it's like, you know, this guy's been charged with the shoplifting, but we're going to play this rap song about him being a murderer, even though we know he's never done mm. anything more serious than a shoplifting. That is a peeve of mine. But on something like this, roll tape on people sentencing. have actually asked for legislation to limit the use of lyrics in criminal prosecutions though i do have a friend that used lyrics in criminal prosecution because he laid out the entirety of his um human trafficking organization through his music and had used music videos to show that he was branding his uh his women in this trafficking yeah. organization i also had a guy that had the um, details of the crime tattooed in like a visual format around his neck. We use that too. I actually, I was tangentially involved with somebody who, who had uh, tattooed uh, like a, a name of a victim. And don't do that. This is not legal advice, but don't do that. This is wild. Yeah. It's wild over here. Criminal law is wild. So these are the <laughs> earrings. They kind of, they kind of, hold your ear down like a droopy nipple um they aren't even that impressive they're like the very large okay square diamonds they're di it's straight diamond just diamond okay yep. you know when kim kardashian got thrown into the ocean and then was crying about her earring they're kind of on this scale of the earrings i can't imagine like my earrings cost like 60 bucks because if i lose one i need to be able to replace it like i don't know if i'd feel comfortable running around the world in two million dollar diamond earrings I just, won't even buy a nice pen because I'm worried I'm going to lose it. Like, well, you're going to lose it though. I mean, this is That's like, the, these are my nice pens. This is like a Lammy $60, you know, <laughs> Lammies pen. are really nice. I love Lammies them. are nice, but they're not like lots of lawyers are running around with like $500 pens and screw that noise. I would, oh my God. That, you know, Thick. yeah, <laughs> I really like how these write a and tight I, ship at Hogla. I well, okay, all of <laughs> these are pens. All of those are pens. I love them. They're okay. Can I tell you a DA story? There was a supervisor I worked with who liked a specific kind of pen. So she would ask the steno pool to order this very specific type of pen and bring them to her office when they arrived. So supplies no <laughs> supplies at the DA's office are like the fucking Hunger Games. May the <laughs> odds be ever in your favor that you get post-it notes or a pad of paper. Most of us just bought our own office supplies sometimes at lunch while we were crying over our lives. But one day, the pens ended up in the supply closet. And one of the other young DAs was like, Roxanne's pens are in the supply closet. And we're like, what? And so we all went and grabbed pens. She would be in court being like, where'd you get that pen? That's my pen. So then all <laughs> of us started buying the pens. So I bought the pens on Amazon and handed them out to everyone in the office. So every time someone came in court, she was like, where'd you get that pen? That's my pen. It was magical. It was oh, magical. You... Pens matter in law, people. Pens matter. And if somebody in court takes your pen, it is like <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Actually, the uh, the other one I love, and this is not like a paid endorsement. This is just I love these pens. Is the Uniball Vision Needle? They they write really well and they're cheap. Uh, I used purple flares on my files until I got in trouble for writing on my files in purple ink because it was not uh, office standard. I'm like, this is juvenile, nothing standard. Um, hold on, I need to grab my unicorn. That's funny. <laughs> I you have a unicorn that for too. A blue pen because that was too. I got yelled crazy. at for using a black pen because they were like, how can you tell that this is uh, you know, a wet signature? Exactly. And I'm like, well, um, oh, I could have grabbed me. Hold on. You can smudge it. This is my niece's stress ball. I was going to say, I, I have questions to steal a catchphrase. I, it's, so it's my niece's, it's my niece's stress ball. And at one point in time, I was listening to, I think, Elaine Redoff's interview. And I just needed something and it was like within arm's reach and I grabbed it and just started squeezing the heck out of it and like chat. And it just has sat in this office since then. And sometimes I just need to squeeze something. The, this unicorn was sent to me from Octo. The chat knows Octo Warren, a friend of mine, but a lovely Lawnard made me when I got my silver play button. So, you know, I could have also it's grabbed like a sack me. Boy. It is the that most is awesome. amazing me i love it so with a gavel 
Man, and I, my rings and earrings. I don't have a unicorn, uh, but I, I can meet my branding requirements. I have a, I have a Mario. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So. <laughs> Runkle's like, I have alcohol and a dog. Runkle has a sword. Oh, so that's right. You do have a sword. <laughs> I knew, yep, I We're knew on brand. I knew the sword was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. We love the sword. But um, you, that's what she said, Miss Paris. That's just that's what she just that's what she said. Um, uh, oh, anyway, okay, bring it in. Hope we okay. needed to talk we, to I'm you. Sorry, we have a co-counsel edition. Oh, co-counsel. Okay, hang on. Okay, so I don't know that this will fit on. The <laughs> oh my God! Yes. So I'm going to die, Rick. I'm going right. to die. <laughs> I am going to die. Thank you. Everybody, right, I'm in. Am I in the cool kids club now? Yeah, you know the daughter in Minions who's just like. It's so fluffy. Yes, yes, yes. That's the my brain is doing that right now. I'm like, it's um, so fluffy. I'm pretty sure the chat is about to do that in two point two seconds. <laughs> oh my god, the chat is going. It's so fluffy. Yes, <laughs> Stephanie, it's so fluffy. How big is that unicorn? Uh, well, it's at least as big as my daughter. I think it's kind of like a cozy pillow. Uh, so yes, we have a number of large stuffies here. We have yeah, Hope wins. Pokemons. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have Pokemon. You can't see my upper shelf, but there are Poke multiple Pokemon on the upper shelf because we're nerds here. That's why we all get along so much. Um, mm -hmm. Now people are like, my kid wants one. Um, <laughs> I have no idea where this came from. <laughs> I'm sure I bought it at some point. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sure that you did. It's so fluffy. I'm going to die. Chad, what I the love you. of the giant unicorn co-counsel? It was a Christmas present. Okay. Christmas present. From outside the family? No, I got it. All right. Co-counsel <laughs> bought it. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. It's so fluffy. <laughs> yes, they're they're doing all the it's so fluffy I could die. Oh, that's that's her for sure. And she's mad now and wants it back. So. Oh, she wants it back. All right, well say say goodbye, everybody. The unicorn has to go back to my daughter. I love room. that Hoag's family brought him a unicorn and my family brought me whiskey. I mean it's it's appropriate. They want that me to be participatory. So amazing. I mean it's appropriate. It's a it's a good unicorn. I love it. So Thank you. My, my 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 uncle gave me an axe. I mean <laughs> He passes a, out blades. It's a very good <laughs> gift. You're a it, woodworker. The axe is needed for the next time you need to break a bed. Can we talk? Can, I mean, can we talk about the leather work here? Like yes. that's how talented our friends are. Like, yes, I'm not that talented. Ian's kicking butt. I Ian's got very talented. I got projects on the go. So, anyway. they're uh, it's just a matter of finding time. Because oh my god. Well, before you have a full time job. I mean, all yep. of y'all have jobs except for me. <laughs> You have a job. I have a very busy job doing this. <laughs> I have a very busy job doing this. But all of y'all also do other shit than YouTube and like podcasting and stuff. So to also have hobbies is hard to maintain. It's worth it. I so. I tell law students, I'm like, if you have a hobby, you need to fight to carve out some time for it. Yes. Because it is, you get so many people who get into law and all it's the sort of old joke. You get lawyers, you get four lawyers who sit around and they say, we're not going to talk about any work stuff. And yep. then they have nothing else to talk about like two minutes. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some files. I yep. mean, Rick's story is one of my favorite. When you tell it, um, when it's like you're, didn't your boss come in and have the conversation with you? It basically said you can either be a firm man or a family man. They did. They used the firm name. So I've changed that anecdote to firm man or family man. I think yeah. it's a better anecdote that way. Yep. Well, it works better. It's alliterative, right? Um, but no, absolutely. That was, to me, it felt so much, a little bit like the story you just told me about this law firm where it's like, that's like super villainy. It's like, you know, 1990s yeah. thriller conspiracy type crap. And that conversation I had where I, you, every time you get a closed door meeting at a big law firm, you're like, all right, here we go. And they say, um, Rick, you know, you're not doing 3,000 billable hours. You can either choose to be a firm man or a family man. And it's like the way I tell that story is at that moment, give or take, is when I'm driving home and I'm like, okay, well, we got to plan an exit strategy. Now, it took two and a half years from then to like get to where I wanted to be uh, and everything else. But yeah, there's, there's, those are real conversations that are out there. And yep. what I told my mentees when I was assigned there at Big Law, and I, I love them, I love the people and the energy coming out of law school was, you know, this place, not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm still good friends with the people that operate all the firms that I've worked at. This place will take what you are willing to give it and yes. it will keep asking. Yeah, which is nothing short of everything if you yeah, have yeah. no boundaries. 
Right. And it's they not, it's not just this place. It's, it's law. If you don't set boundaries, law in general and your, the practice of law can take everything from you. Well, this was starting to happen at the DA's office. There was a bit of a generation gap as younger attorneys were coming in saying, I'm done for the day. I'm leaving. And older attorneys are like, I'm sorry. (laughs) What? Yeah. What do you mean you're leaving at 5 p.m.? Who the fuck do you think you are (laughs) leaving here to take your kid to a doctor's appointment or whatever? That's and and it became very apparent to me when I started having health issues with pregnancy. I was told by a supervisor, um, I don't think you're dedicated enough. I'm like, my doctor's putting me on bed rest so I don't like die and shit. So I appreciate that you don't think I'm dedicated enough. And she pointed out another attorney who came in to work the day after giving birth and said, look, she came in here. Well, two days after, cause she had been discharged from the hospital, came into this courthouse two days after giving birth with her kid in a, uh, in a, in a baby carrier wearing jeans to pick up files. The wearing jeans was very important cause she had maintained her figure while pregnant, but this was what was pointed out. I'm like, I've had coworkers get MRSA at this courthouse. I'm not bringing a new baby anywhere near this fucking place. I'm going out. And when I was out on my second maternity leave is when I started plotting my escape. I'm like, that's not going to be my life. Like my health is already starting to struggle from being here. I've watched others struggle. I'm not going to be another, you know, divorced, unhappy attorney doing this. And I wasn't good enough at setting boundaries and not giving a fuck. I gave too many fucks and I was like, I have to leave. I can't set the boundaries here. And I will always be disappointed that my career is not going this way because my life is going this way. And I'm just. And that's a trick, right? Because all these places suck in certain respects and you have old guard and new guard. And and one of the things I tried to impart is like, try not to resent, you know, the other people, the the crazy person that does the 3,500 hours and, you know, gets all the money that you want to get, like figure out where you're happy because they're, they're, they're going to tell you that you can do that and and you you will die and maybe that's what yeah. you want to do i can't be your mentor and tell you what life you should live um <laughs> but like if you want that brass brass ring um yeah you, i mean there's a cost this, this is your life now um, yeah, there's a cost you know and so it, it's that having that conversation is, is tricky because law school doesn't prep you for it at all um and, and so yeah obviously no. the, the people on this stream we made certain choices and we're on a video on but Friday night. Rick, well, it's I mean- totally fair. When I was in law school, I was an intern at the DA's office. I so much respect the DA I interned for. Sure. And he had had, you know, he had a concealed carry, had multiple death threats on his life, had people like try to rush the courtroom to get at him. Um, people try to bring guns to court. It was a whole thing. As a law student, he was talking about having his kids be taken to school with police protection every day during the course and after a trial he was on. And as a law student, I'm like, holy shit, like this job yeah. is kind of amazing. Like <laughs> this I, job is that level. Like this is real shit. I didn't understand at what, 23, 24, 25 years old. No, younger than that, because I became a DA at like 25. So, you know, in those early 20s, I didn't understand the implications of your children have police protection until I had police protection on my own home while my kids were sleeping upstairs. And I was like, fuck this shit. Yeah. Like after the pregnancies and stuff, I'm like, I like my kids didn't sign up for this. So it's interesting because you go in going, I can do this. I can work myself to death. Like law school taught me I can work yeah. past the limits of work. I can work like, yeah. I've got that. I know I can do this and I'll get rewarded somewhere. Somebody will be like, Hey, that was all right. What you did. And you'll be like, yeah, but my brain shifted after I, you know, got a little bit of perspective and got a little bit older. For me, the moment was I was uh, sitting at home doing the late night phone calls and I got a call from a woman who was in custody because she'd had the absolute shit beaten out of her by a military Mm -hmm. husband. And they ended up charging her because she was unwilling to go back to the house where husband was to give a statement to the police. So they charged her with pushing him and she was sitting in the police station with a black eye and she's crying because she's got no money because he's got all the money. Of course. And so she's like, I can't pay for a bail hearing. They're opposing my bail. Like, what can I do? And I'm like, I got you. I'm not leaving you to, you know, to twist in the wind here. So I did the bail hearing for her for nothing. And then we set court for like the next day. 
And I basically said, I will take on this entire file for the gas money that it takes me to drive out to this local jurisdiction. And, you know, just so that I can make a plea to the prosecutor there to say, like, listen, I drove two hours each way to get here to tell you that this case is a heap of bullshit and you should drop it. And to be, I had enough sort of sway with that prosecutor that he was like, okay, if that's what you did for this file, I know you mean it. And I'm hearing what you're telling me about this file. I will drop it. So I drove back and I got pulled into one of those office meetings for like, you spent the entire day and you build nothing because all you got out of this is your own gas money. So um, do you really think you have a future here at the firm if you're going to keep doing this? And I said, well, um, you need to know that I will keep doing this. They're like, <laughs> we would like you to give your soul. Can you please give up your soul? Can you just <laughs> check that a little bit? You know, I was just like, you hired me because I'm a particular kind of person and I'm not going to stop being that kind of person and I will keep doing this. So if this is a problem for you, you should fire me now. And, and like, I'll well, start a YouTube channel and fund it my fucking self. Well, they were just like, we'll have a talk about this. And I walked out of there and I started thinking like, okay, what does it take to, for me to leave here? Yeah. Because I was just, I, I sort of saw the writing on the wall that you can't be the kind of you can't do what you want to do if you're under somebody's thumb who wants to get maximum billing and that's their only sort of concern. So I was like, yeah, when, when the value that you provide in life is what you do in like 10 or six minute increments, it kind of fucks with your brain a little bit. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 15. I don't know what I, I don't, Hey, wait, my engagement letter 15 quarter minute increments. <laughs> but I mean, I'm looking yeah, at these quarter hours. I was oh. looking at these people Corporate. going, <laughs> Rob, I, I do so. So let me be fair. I do point one, but I also take cases. I, I participate in our modest means program, so I take cases that are well below it. And people ask me a question once, like, "What happens when a client doesn't pay you?" And I kind of have to admit, you get to choose whether you're going to be the lawyer that sues the client or you're not going to be that guy. And I've never been that guy. Nope. Yeah. Um, so I'll start a YouTube channel and sort it mm. out. Well, I mean, Barely. I. <laughs> Well, it's funny. I never did anything like Ian did, which is an awesome story. But I do remember vividly. I was on yeah. the phone a number of times where I'm like, somebody's asking me about a corporation or an LLC or something. I'm like, you don't need me for this. Here's the link to the site. Yep, here's go the, fill here's it the things yourself. on this. It'll take you 10 minutes. It's not yep. worth paying me. And like having a senior partner walk by and then having a short talk afterwards being like, so uh, was that what, what, what did you do there? What'd you do there, Rick? It's like, God. I sent him a checklist to do with them themselves. I, was like, I wasn't going to provide value. And you know what? That's going to swing back around senior partner. They're going to remember me if they get big and it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard. Well, you also got in trouble for smiling too much. I did. Oh, you remember that story? <laughs> I do mm -hmm. remember that I did. Story. Yeah. I got in trouble. Um, I got pulled into another closed door meeting that was, uh, Rick, we think that you are essentially too jovial around the office. You smile too much. Uh, and you need to understand that this is serious work we're doing. Understand, we're not doing work like you were doing, Emily. Uh, you know, we're doing corporate mergers and acquisitions, moving money around, important things, but not, you know, nobody's going the to the one thing that was never lacking at the DA's office was jokes and people laughing. Most of it very dark, inappropriate but... jokes, very dark jokes at any DA's office. And candy. So, here's here's another fun story. I had a file that I I took this whole file on for I think it was a thousand bucks, and I ran a trial for that, which is basically free in the legal context. Like this is a real low price for a full day of trial. Uh, but this this woman was only able to pay me 50 bucks a month. And she was paying it like clockwork. Every like first of the month, as soon as she got her check in, she'd send me 50 bucks. But a thousand bucks at 50 bucks a month, even with me not charging, uh, you know, any interest on that, it's going to be forever. So I had one of the more senior lawyers at the firm, uh, you know, one of the partners going, why aren't you collecting on this? So the one day we were but driving I am. along. I was going to say, I am. Hey. Well, <laughs> the one day we were driving along and we happened to be passing by close enough to where this person lived. And I, I'd been there before, so I knew where it was. And so I just said, hey, you know, you know how you've been on my back about that person we haven't been collecting from? Uh, let's go do that right now. Let's go have a talk with them. 
And so we pull up in this, like, you know, it's tin shacks that are falling apart. And we pull up out front of this house that is just, and I'm just like, let's go in and you can say that, you know, she's got to pay that extra 900 bucks right now. And he wouldn't get out of the car. And I was just like, you see? Yes. You see? You can't do it when you have to do it. So don't tell me to do it. Don't tell me to do the crap you can't do. And we just kept driving. And to his credit, he never said shit to me about billing again. That's like, fair. it was just like, nope. But I, I mean, this was the point where I was just like, I, I know I'm on my way out. If I get fired a couple of months early, eh, eh we'll live. I hope you didn't finish telling us about getting yelled at for smiling. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. That's basically, that was basically no, I the conclusion too. of the story is I had that meeting. Um, I, that was well before for man or family man. So, I mean, I, you know, maybe I'm, I'm a naive doofus for not really being like, Hey, you know, where do I work? Uh, but I hate smiling. <laughs> smiling is my favorite. What is happening? Well, <laughs> but mostly when we were, we were in a branch office, it was funny. Cause one of the things that I always wanted to, I, I wanted to work on big deals. I wanted to work on major transactions. Cause it's that's exciting. Where, that's where the complexity comes in. Yeah. Right. Like that's where you're doing weird stuff. You're doing fun things. It's where you're learning. Uh, and I wanted to work at a big firm, but I knew even from the start, cause of some experiences I'd had in the summer of work and, and whatnot, that I didn't want to work at the home office. I wanted to work at a well provisioned branch. Um, where you so, actually get pens and office supplies, I would imagine. Right. Where, Maybe a and, secretary. And the overlords are dropping in, but they're not, you know, there day to day. And so my, my one of my favorite people on earth, my mentor, hired me out of law school uh, and brought me over a year after with the firm that I was originally working with to start the branch office of this large law firm oh, in cool. Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is a fantastic town. It's where yeah. the University of Michigan is located. Um, and I've that's been to like, University of Michigan once. They have an excellent pool. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite stories, right? It's like we literally started that yeah, office. That's very and it cool. Was, it was, you know, phone on the floor, wired to the wall. None of the anything is set <laughs> up. Um, we have nobody. And then we're slowly bringing in assistants and lawyers. And even though I was a second year associate uh, all the way up till, you know, a partner, um, you know, he treated me like, you know, we're, we're going to do this together. And I was in all the interviews for everybody that got added to the office. And that was remarkable. And he's one of, he's, he's the best person ever. And he taught me everything I know. Um, and so when I give those stories, it's like, he's a part of them too, but we were kind of like this sleeper cell doing our own thing in Ann Arbor. And then when the big wigs came by, you know, it was like, yes, okay, definitely. We're yes. Mm -hmm, I'll get, yes, I will wear my suit today. Uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, so no, it's, um, I tell all these bad stories, but there's a ton of good memories as well, obviously for, you know, 13, same. I mean, years. same. And it's most of my good memories, though, are my colleagues. Yes. Um, when you get to yeah. an office, it's very I, I mean, the, the DA's office gets so top heavy. You know, you feel like you're in office space and you're reporting to seven bosses. But <laughs> at any given day, it I had a attorney that was in charge of the courtroom that I was in. So my calendar deputy and then generally an assistant head deputy and a head deputy two bureau directors and then the top brass. So there could be like 10 people or more up above you that you have to deal with. And if you have a great branch court and a great head deputy there and assistant heads, everything in your world can be amazing. And then a few people get transferred and everything is fucking miserable again. Uh, yeah. Or your commute, you get transferred and your commute goes from 20 minutes to two hours or more. Or oh. you get in trouble and they're like, oh, where's the furthest point from your house? And they, our office had been sued over that a few times. Um, Cause Los oh, Angeles oh, really? County- really punishing with that? Yes. Oh my goodness. Cause Los Angeles County is so large. Um, if you live South in LA County, you're almost down near Orange County in Huntington beach. You get transferred to Antelope Valley. Your commute could be four hours each way. So it's a big, it's a bit, it's a big, big County. Um, so freeway therapy is something that could happen. And this is why you write for good reason to go with your four cause provisions in your employment offer letters and term documents, folks. That's not legal <laughs> advice. That's just life advice. Yeah. In the county, it says when you sign <laughs> that you're being hired, it says I am willing to work anywhere in the county. Ah. So currently I have heard, oh gosh, we shouldn't talk about this on a live, whatever. It's only a few of us. There's like 20,000 people. It's um, nothing. It's just us. It's just some us. people have been transferred out of more prestigious provisions or more prestigious positions into positions closer to their homes. So they can't complain about being made to commute because you've been transferred closer to home and the office is realigning people closer to home, but it's a less prestigious position. I see. 
but you can't change pay grade because it's government pay grade. So you're at a government pay grade. So even right. though the position is now a dead end in your career, it's like, but you're, you're transferred closer to home. But it's very the, interesting with political I've, offices. I've one seen the, some prosecutors, uh, at least here, really be happy about that because they get transferred to a position that is like, okay, your responsibilities are minimal. It's a punishment position, of, you know, nominally, but okay, it's pay, they can't cut it your pay. It depends on where you are pay grade wise. If you need yeah. to jump to the next, because there's bands, there's grades at the in LA. And so if you're at the top of your pay grade at your scale, you can't move up. Yeah. So once you've topped out your pay grade, until you get promoted, you can't move up. In LA County, that's notoriously different. It's like a fifth. It can be like a fifteen-year trek to get to kind of the top or the one of the higher pay grades. So if you get in a dead end position, you're never going to get promoted, and you've topped out, and there's nothing you can do, and everything's just stagnant from there, and your pay is not going to go up, and that's hard. And what I was going to say is, there's a funny thing about it. <clears throat> um, people often like ask like. You have clients stiff you. You don't get paid a whole lot. Look, we dinged twice in one episode. Um, you have clients stiff you. You don't get paid a lot. You work terrible hours. Why do you do it? Why do you still do it? And I think every person who's in litigation in, in significant things, there's the impact that you have when you win a case or when you get a benefit for your client or a victim in Emily's case. And they come up and there's all sorts of emotion and they, 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 hug, they don't know whether to hug you, but they do. And then all of that emotional transference comes through and you are just instantly in that moment, you are like, this is exactly why I do what I do. Yeah. This is why the long hours are worth it. This is why the pay sucking was worth it. This is why all of that is worth it because in those moments, you just did something and made the system work for the benefit of a client who really needed it to work. Yeah. There are, there are definitely moments. There's nothing like waiting for a criminal jury verdict. I imagine it's different as a defense attorney than as a DA, but there's, you know, when you've got the victim's family and everybody in the courtroom, there's nothing quite like waiting for a verdict. However, I doing this and, and getting, you know, getting to chat with the law nerds and chat in the chat. And there's, you know, you've helped me understand this. You've helped take the emotion out of this. I, I understand this now. I've been entertained. I've found a community I love. It's for me, it's comparable. Um, and it's been incredible. Like this gives a lot of what I thought I would miss about trial. Um, and instead of talking to 12 to 16 people, I get to talk to, you know, 20 plus thousand and y'all. So it's fantastic. I mean, it, it really is. And I, I often sound like I'm, you know, proselytizing or evangelizing when, when I talk about, you know, this, what we do, but, um, I feel so good about talking with everybody and explaining and informing and the community is so amazing. I got, you know, I was, I, this is probably no surprise. I was, as I think a lot of us probably were scared to death to do a Dobbs video and put it up on YouTube. Cause you're it's like, it's really uh, fucking stressful, man. It's really yeah. scary. Cause, cause you're, you're, you're right on the edge and you, you want to inform and you want to educate and I'm reasonable minds can differ and all this stuff. But like, you know, I, I know how passionate people are on this topic and I got, I, I, I just got like the nicest messages from, from so many people. Um, and it's that I, I've never been a litigator, so I've never done what Rob just described. I love entrepreneurs. I love helping them. I love dreamers the people that mortgage their house twice to try to make yes. something happen. It's like, let's do it. Let's, let's yeah. get it so that you don't die and live under a bridge. Let me help you. Yeah. I love that. But like this stuff is, you know, helping people understand, I, you know, I is, is really, really great. Um, and, and having this platform to do it and, and getting to talk to folks and be down here with you all, you know, I love you guys. No, it's great. Um, it's like having it, colleagues it's again. Great. It's really fun. Yeah. It, we get to have great conversations. I got to talk with Mark at length to this morning about Dunder Mifflin and trademark squatting and things like that. Um, it's, it's, it's really, uh, fulfilling. And, and honestly, I, I often say it's because of you guys. It's also because of chat and communities and I can see your community being awesome over here in the corner. Uh, and it's, it's been great. This so community I agree is with amazing. you. It's very fulfilling. Yeah. The Dobbs, I was so touched, um, when I put up that video and I put it up kind of late. 
uh, it was, it was emotionally difficult to parse just because I, it takes so much energy to parse your own emotions on something. Sure. So you can mm -hmm. parse that and then get to the analytical. And I'm not going to say, Oh, I, I'm done putting my emotions in a box. It didn't work well for me. They bubble up at weird times and I hated it. So I need to parse that first before I can break something down. And I talked a lot about in my video, our, our like online wants immediate responses. And I hope that what, especially in LawTube, we do is help normalize slowing down. I need mm -hmm. to read, I need to analyze, I need to digest so that I can help. Like I can give you an emotional knee jerk reaction. It's not gonna help anybody for anything. It's not helpful. I want to process so I can also be of service and wanting like an instant reaction of like, what happened with this? doesn't work when you're lawyers. It's like, I want to sit with this and I want to think on it and I want to read it. And I, and Dobbs, I mean, was 200 plus pages. It you're really not was. Just, yeah. You're that not just going crazy. through the decision. You're going through the concurrences and you're going through, you know, and the concurrences were wild. I mean, like, yeah. like the concurrences were really, there was weird. a lot in there. Yeah. And the, and the dissent, and the, the dissent. dissent too. Yeah. And, and, and the, the dissent was charged. It was so many people asked me like, Rob, are you going to comment on it? And I actually was about to board a flight uh, to you, Emily, all th all exciting things happen. When we're flying. I was about to board a flight and that opinion gets like released. Like when I was like in the air or, and so I'm listening to Rick break down the decision in the airport before I'm boarding the flight. And I could not have been more impressed in that moment and happy. Like, so when I landed, I listened to the rest of it and I, people have asked me like, Rob, do a comment, do a video, do a video. And I've just pointed them at that point. Cause Rick was the only one that I had seen. No, it. I yep. said, go to Rick's. It, I, I cannot do it more impartially than that. Like I can't take myself and my analysis and give it in a more, let's parse out these arguments in the most comprehensive way we can in both an analytical and then also just in a kind and dispassionate, but also understanding way. Yep. I couldn't do that. So I sent them to Rick's and then other people have come out with videos since then. And I'm like, you guys, I I've never been more impressed with the community of colleagues that I've gained. Um, I love seeing the analysis and it's so fun. And I'm so happy to point people that follow me to all of your channels to watch what I think is great analysis. I, Rob, I, Thanks, you know, man. I really appreciate that. That is, that is very nice of you to say I, to me. Um, yeah, we all have our own approaches, right? And like, that's, that's what I try to do is I, I try to say, all right, let's, let's break it down. Well, Rick, like, I, one of the things I say very early on in that video is let's just take a minute yeah. and this is very sensitive and, and let's try to just look at it as if it's not, let's let, let's not t look at the substance first and let's look at the arguments. Um, and that's what works for me. That's going to be the opposite of what works for somebody else. Absolutely. I love the way you break stuff down though, because it's like, look, reasonable, you start with reasonable minds can differ instead of like deal with it, bitches, man, <laughs> like all of your content starts with reasonable minds can differ let's break this down i love the way you break down what the media is doing and you know breaking i love hangouts and headlines it's just i love it and i know for i know for my channel i cover mostly pop culture i like talking about the law in a way where we can be entertained by the parties involved and then it's easier for reasonable minds to differ when it's not so emotionally involved um and, and it's i have a very similar philosophy exactly there. i do video games but that was the entire notion of when I started four years ago was let's try to talk about serious stuff yep. in entertaining ways on things that you're already interested in. Yeah. Right? You're already following in my respect, you know, whatever final fantasy seven billboards and, and on, on, on your side, you're already following, you know, the real housewives, whatever else you're covering, yeah. but now they've got this wacky legal thing that's going on at the same time. And we get to, I mean, we still get to talk about due process. We're in we a do. due process conversation this evening. You can get to due process one way or the other. I just, for Amber Heard is never going to leave us. So yeah. We're going to be covering Amber Heard when we die. And, I, and <laughs> I am so offended by that because she said, all I want is for this to end. I want yeah. to be left alone. I want all of this to stop. Her words on the stand <laughs> under oath twice. Yep. I just um, want this to end. Before and the thing we is, break Emily, I want to bring up a question. And it's, it's, it's a good one that was asked. No one's going to break me. It, We've got to get to questions at some point. No, it's actually good. So question. Uh, so in a courtroom, Emily would be opposing counsel to Rob or Runkel. She would not be opposing counsel to me, but she would to Runkel. And what I was going to say to segue into this is that and the level of respect and discourse that you guys see 
is the way that we treat each other as attorneys when we are yeah. in or around a court proceeding. Runkle and, and I would get shit sorted out and then go to lunch. Absolutely. Oh, ab and I mean, I had a trial where the Crown and I in court were just like, we're battling it out. You know, we were going and saying my my friend's argument because it's Canada. You always address the the other lawyer as my friend. And really? Wait, I didn't know that. Really? And sometimes you might say my learned friend, but you usually steer away from that because that's usually when you're kind of being snarky. Because that's the with all due respect is my learned friend. With all due respect. Yeah. Uh, you know, you with might all say, due respect to counsel, which is none. Isn't that what they Less do in the counsel's Congress? Right. It's my learned right. colleague when they're on those uh, like uh, in, in those congressional fights. Yeah. It's always to be like, all right, this asshole. Yeah. Sorry, but, Runkle. But, you know, if we if we cut Runkle off anymore, he's going to get sidetracked. So Runkle, <laughs> question. Finish. I was just going. You know, my friend, you know, is his argument is unknown to law, which basically means. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great turn of phrase. Is unknown to law. Law nerd speak for what the fuck are you even saying? Oh, I'm writing that down. I'm unknown. sorry. I'm writing that down. Steal that line, Rob. Counsel's argument is unknown to law. <laughs> the other one is, you know, my friend's argument is novel. Is and if you drop that in the right, you know, sort of the right tone, it can be a fairly. So we were going at it in in court. It was a really contentious issue. And then afterwards, we're like, yeah, let's go for lunch. And yep. you know, we ended up with a verdict and we were just going, this was, you know, that was contentious, but we made it through and neither of us hate each other. And I, another sort of brief thing, I walked out of a trial at one point and my client had seen me in the cafeteria. I was having sort of a, you know, a post trial snack with the crown. And he called me up afterwards and he was like, you son of a bitch. I saw you, you were hanging yeah. out with the prosecutor. How dare you? And I went, you know how we resolved your trial by you pleading out mid trial for what I said was a really good deal. You don't get that really good deal. If the prosecutor thinks I'm an asshole who I'm on his hit list, you know, that is because we can get along. So you are not doing any jail time because I'm the kind of person who can have a, you know, have a lunch with the crown prosecutor. Right. Have a good one. Like, but there are a lot of defendants that will see if they see you having a collegial conversation oh. uh, between prosecution and defense will be convinced that the defense and the government are working together to screw them. And that happened to me in court with a attorney, probably 40 years, my senior, we were trying to have a collegial conversation, but it was not a defense attorney I particularly liked. And the defendant in arraignment court started screaming at the judge, your honor, your honor, he's fucking her. And I was like, what Holy is shit. happening in court today? <laughs> and I'm looking at the court and I'm like, and the defendant is animate. He's like, I saw them talking, starts Open court, my colleagues, the judge, like at least arraignment court. So like at least 20 other defendants, it was, it was a full ass day. And I'm like, of all the defense attorneys, of all the defense attorneys, I, I, I want to punch this one in the face all of the time. Like, and the, the defendant, we had been, I had been trying to be collegial and the defendant is just screaming in open court at the judge that because we had had a conversation that clearly we are not just intimately connected, but also trying to screw him over. I mean, it, it would have been better if you looked up at the judge and said, your honor, I mean, fucking, but I mean, really? Like, <laughs> I'm very oh. much married, not and, as bad as and, the day my high school boyfriend showed up in court as one of the as one of the cops on the case I was doing a prelim on. Gonna say also, defendant. <laughs> that never happened, but I did have people I went to high school with show up as defendants. Um, one notoriously in a prostitution sting. I was like, oh, hi. So you're pro per. Mm. I'm going to go get you another prosecutor because this is going to be real awkward. So I'm yeah. just going to. A I'm very just, senior very senior prosecutor, him and I were talking about how we were going to resolve this, you know, agreement. And uh, he was basically being entirely reasonable. He was willing to concede several of the points I made. And he said, here's the thing. Uh, we're going to walk out of here. And I already have a read on your client that he is not happy that we're having a great conversation. So he's like, we're going to walk out of here and you are going to call me an asshole. Yes. And you're, yes. you're going to like, 
you're gonna he says we're gonna walk in there and you're gonna dunk on me in front of your client and yeah. i was like i have okay. done that before yeah in a divorce case i have done that before yeah stage with counsel like we are gonna walk in and you're gonna call me an asshole and i'm gonna say okay go fuck yourself and that was staged for the benefit of our clients who hated each other Right. They want to see, well, in a divorce, I mean, I imagine that they just, if they're fighting, they want everyone to be fighting. And it's like, I mean, oh, yeah. I guess if we need to pretend like we're fighting, we can just, it'll be fine. <laughs> I just Although, didn't know that was a thing. Like, I'm just blown away. It's a thing. Yep. Well, it's and- a thing. It's a thing in prosecution, too. It's like, it's like, please don't take anything I'm about to say after my client walks in personally. It's like, no, do what you got to do. It's like, this one doesn't believe I'm fighting for them. So it's like, Oh, it's fine. Whatever you need to do. Um, don't <laughs> accuse me of misconduct. Don't call me unethical. Right. I really don't give a shit other than that. Rises to bar level. Yeah. That would be great. Thanks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's just, it's wild. I, <laughs> I just appreciated the heck out of this. Like this very old guy just being like, yep, you can just make it look like you had to bully me into this. Yep. And that your client will be okay with it. And, was, and I'm not going to dime you out on it. Yeah. And I'm not going to throw you under the bus at all. Yeah. Yeah. He, he'd been a defense lawyer for like 15 years before he became a prosecutor. He's Interesting just like, switch. I, he's like, I know the, the situation. I can read your client on this one. This is what you have to do, young lawyer. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're awesome. I've got this. I've got this. But most of the time, I mean, most of the defense attorneys and I got along, but also I'm not here trying to be a dick to anybody. I don't sure. think 99.9% of the time, I don't think your client's the worst thing that's happened to humanity. Your client has probably done some stupid shit, has a reason that they've done said stupid shit. And depending on the level of what happened after that, we can deal with it. But Mm -hmm. it's not, it shouldn't be personal. It's not personal. We're all doing our jobs. And at the end of the day, somebody's going to go to prison and we should probably have a serious conversation about that. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be us. Yeah. Yeah. You know. At least you really hope. (laughs) Things have gone wrong. You're in the Girardi box. I mean, oh, and he's not going, and he's not going to jail. Well, that's either. what's remarkable about that story that you. No one's told. going to jail in that story. Well, yet. I mean, unless we're gonna there's yet, we're going to say yet. Yeah. I, it's I, not going to be wire, him in that conservatorship. The, I mean, it's not going to be him. tapping the wiretapping stuff or the wire the wire the, fraud stuff. Yep. Feds don't feds don't like that, and that when they oh, and there's we've emails about this before when they have emails when they have documents when they have financials. There is no better entity in the world than the freaking FBI and compiling yeah. financials. Like they present it like, here's a PowerPoint of every dollar that went to every place. And we've yep. been tracking this for 10 years. And that's why we took so long to bring the case because here's your conviction. I really, Thank I you. really think it's going to be the IRS on this one. I really do. I really think it's going to be the IRS. I think it's the easier route because at the end of the day, she signed all the tax returns. So it's way easier to go. Look, at some point you got to go with ease. And I think the IRS is the easy route. I'm going to pull up some super chats as we're continuing to chat um, because, you know, a, I appreciate them. Only midnight. I appreciate all of you. I mean, (laughs) well, depending on your time zone, time zone may vary. Look, you're now with the night owls, Hogue. Welcome yeah. to our side one. of the internet. I started at Hangouts and I'm finishing <laughs> uh, at Emily D. Baker. So we did the whole day here. Yeah. <laughs> we did. Look, I streamed um, once early on when I had shifted into doing live streaming because I had started the podcast. I had also done consulting with entrepreneurs. Hogue, I love entrepreneurs. I love I love a crazy dream too. Um, the dream and the the, when I left the DA's office, that's what I did first. And I... Um, I agreed to do a stream with Rakeda. Nobody told me how late he streamed. Right. So at like oh 3 a.m., I'm like, what is happening? He's like, you look like you're about to die. I'm like, I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. I've had a very oh. nice conversation about law and all the things, but I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. And your chat is asking me things that aren't appropriate. And I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's my experience. It was four in the morning. He starts reading me this stuff from this manifesto and my eyes are bleary and I'm like, what is even happening? And I, you go to I, bed and you wake up and you're like, did that happen? Yeah. What if I was recall, that stream? I, I think I was there for that one. Oh, and I think we lost Rob, but. Oh, uh, he said he'll be right back. Up, Ellie so. said, question, could the juror cross his sevens so they look like fours? This is a digital form. This is not the juror's own written in form with regard to um, Amber Heard. Sorry, question. My question on that was, is it pre-filled and could you just skipped it if you were going fast? And I think 
I, I, I want to know about that too. I think the yeah. judge will know that very well. Um, thank you, extroverted Emily. <laughs> Extra. I love it. From one Emily to another, your intelligence of voice is inspiring. Well, thank you. We love the voice. Um, you seem to enjoy law and people. I do. I do enjoy law and people. I do. Especially these people. T in Tennessee said, y'all make a huge different di difference in different ways. I love the conversations I've had with my granddaughter, kind of like my dad did with me. He was an attorney and judge. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you, T in Tennessee. I do too. I'm covered in cat glitter. So now I'm going to be just wiping my face. My cat has left a blanket of fur on me because oh, it was fresh. Father and daughters, okay, I'm regularly okay, covered in glitter. real glitter. Not litter, <laughs> gl like f I have cat fuzz. Oh, that's so. why I, I thought you said cat glitter and i was like is that like man glitter like my sawdust like when i get yes it is that? cat okay. glitter it's like it's exactly the same thing i've um, got two dogs and the number of times i've had people i've walked into court and people are like you got pets don't you and it's like yes damn like, it dogs <laughs> cats sawdust actual glitter yeah we got it all yeah <laughs> oh and uh, lots of people have been asking about potter he's doing a lot better today uh, we swapped out the giant plastic collar for this inflatable one, which he likes a lot better. But um, it's not the greatest for actually stopping him from licking. So we might have to use the plastic one at times. But uh, last night he was, he was sort of crying all night. And I had to sort of, I camped out next to him. I used my uh, courthouse uh, camping skills to, uh, you know, park next to him. It's actually funny. We have this mattress, this really nice soft mattress. He was on the mattress. I was on like a little inflatable camping thing. And, but, you know, he'd start whining and I'd sort of be like, I'm here, buddy. And uh, he's going through a rough time. He had uh, sort of double ACL surgery. So he's really not happy with life right now. But um, yeah. I'm hoping it's going to get him back to being able to run around and chase after Zora and all of that stuff. So, but he's doing a lot better today. The challenge is going to be keeping him from, uh, as he starts feeling better, it's going to be keeping him from really doing all the things he wants to do until he's fully healed. I had just the one ACL surgery, but I got really good at Grand Theft Auto while I was sitting on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was miserable. That's my anecdote. ACL surgery is not fun. I loved Grand Theft Auto. Um, I don't know what I am proposing, but will I do a proposal for you? Sure. What am I proposing? I don't know what I'm proposing. But marriage? <laughs> we did we did a number of marriage proposals during the Depp Heard case. You you, um, you helped people propose marriage. I did. To one I did through super chats. Wow. Um Julianne asked, based on your experience, would you work with a Camille Vasquez Ben Chu firm? I have <sighs> I have very specific thoughts on what I think of Brown Rudnick, but Hogue, I'll let you go first. Oh no, I mean Brown Rudnick's a, a, a very famous firm uh and a, a very uh big litigation shop. Uh, and so, yes, in general, um, I would be fine with working with Brown Rudnick. I will say this for people that don't know, you get into a large, um, you know, top 500, top 100 law firms. Um, they're all siloed, right? So you said, would you work with Camille Vasquez and Ben Chu firm? To me, the actual question there is Ben Chu and Camille Vasquez, uh, that, that you actually have pillars of uh, law firms within law firms. They're always, I, you know, I've described LawTube as a loose coalition of sovereign nation states. Law <laughs> firms are That's only, the best definition ever. Law firms are only this much tighter. Um, yeah. Like they're they wildly different depending on who that senior partner is, what his ethos and philosophy yeah. is, and everything I saw outwardly. And understand that we don't get to see all the details, but everything I saw outwardly from Ben Chu says that that looks like a person that's a good team leader that gives people different roles and respects what everybody's doing. And that's the kind of person that I like to work for. He actually reminded me of my mentor. And Rob, it was what do you clear, think? Nope. clearly nope. giving yeah. time to uh, some of the people who were, you know, everybody got some time and a moment to sort of show off. And that I really appreciate because you see it so many when you see these big firms where the big name gets all the moments like all you know i thought yeah. ben was gonna grab everything i really did uh, uh when that I, when that started most of these he grabbed I would the have, jelly beans he did He's an but i would have expected ben chu to do the amber heard cross i would have expected him to do like all of this stuff and no instead he's like now i'm gonna nope. hand this off to my colleague who's going oh. to just kick ass at this you could have so, you could have spotted that from a mile away. I like, knew he wasn't going to do the Amber Heard cross. It had to be a woman. But there's so I've I have watched senior lawyers. I know make 
tactical blunders just he so that they was, could have he was client he was client attorney that was that was the reason Johnny Depp needed an attorney he could trust yeah and that relationship is what allowed Ben Chu to manage that baseball team and manage that pitching staff as good as he did well he like the assembled right the Avengers the from all of their different offices because yes. if you look at the signature boxes they're all no, from different offices. Well, they're from is, California, DC, like New, New York. York. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're from all different branches. Yeah, everywhere. Yep. yep. And and what I liked, what I liked seeing with this firm was how well and fluidly they worked together and how much they trusted each other. There was mm -hmm. a high level of trust in that litigation team, but I would not go back to doing litigation, even no. though I thought those attorneys were great. I would consult for people about the social media impact of cases like this and what this is going to be like and explain to lawyers how like Twitter works and shit. But I get uh, excited, people. <laughs> this is going to be covered. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I guess I took the question a little differently when I when I say, well, I work with something like litigation boutique. That means I'm essentially quarterbacking yeah. and. Yeah, this firm seems not great. Litigating. No, <laughs> they seemed great. I love litigation, but you couldn't make me trade what I do here for that. Again, there's just there's no trade off for the time I spend with my family and at home, and they don't let you wear like workout pants in court when you're the attorney. So that's annoying. You get a funny look. I don't ever want to do civil law, and I don't think they ever want anybody doing criminal law. <laughs> Rob, sweetheart, go hug your unicorn from Law Nerd Down Under. <laughs> I saw the chat also asking for Wood Daddy merch, but I I didn't I don't think I brought any of those up. My America, law Erica partner, James, my law partner vetoed that. <laughs> it's kind of fair. <laughs> I'll trade for that. I'll make Wood Daddy shirts. <laughs> <laughs> You're leather daddy. Don't start. Oh, we got leather do daddy. Do not give him that name. Do not give him that name. That is so no, much worse. I'm getting out of this chat before I get a nickname. <laughs> chat. Do not Google that. <laughs> Speaking of Googling, my mother-in-law has the same name as a very prominent dominatrix. And so oh we had God. we had lost her new work number and we were looking. She's was a realtor. <laughs> so we were trying to find her as a realtor and we Googled her and I'm like, did you know that you had the same name? And she's like, no. And I'm like, do you think your real estate clients ever Google you? Because this is maybe <laughs> something you should look at. She had a very good sense of humor about it, but um, they wanted me to remind you, Amanda, thank you, that Erica Girardi's husband, Tom Girardi, used yes, to be a bar did. reviewer and also used to grade the bar exam amongst other positions of power he held. Of course he did. Oh, yep. The story is incredible. He, uh, it's, it's the, when I say it's the craziest legal scandal of our time, it is the craziest legal scandal of our time. It deserves an entire like documentary series. Like it, it just deserves an int. It doesn't. It's not a movie. It is a series of of like I'd watch I don't it. Know, Toronto style. Better Call Saul. Yeah, yeah like sure. Theranos, <laughs> like Theranos. And did you guys see Sonny Balwani got convicted too? I did not. Of everything. Yeah. Yep. All the things. I can't Look, say I disagree. I can't either. <laughs> Wire fraud covers all manner of sins. It sure does. Um, Jennifer Edwards said, I had a lawyer I know get disbarred for going out drinking with DUI clients and making them drive. That's insane. Ooh. That does as presented, the kind of thing that's that would get insane. you in front of the yeah. examination board. Yeah. That's crazy. That's just. I, I had a client who got color on making them. The making is is <laughs> I don't. wild. I got um, a client who got very upset because I asked to see his car keys and then told him I'd mail them to him uh, <laughs> because he just got a driving prohibition and he was about to get into his car. And the sheriff like was sitting there watching him, waiting for him to get into his car. And I was like, hey, which car is yours? He's like, oh, that one. And I'm like, oh, what? what's the key look like for that? He's like, oh, oh here. And I'm just like, and I'm going to mail this to you and you can thank me later. And uh, at the time, he was like, you're an ass. And later, he was like, I was about to get charged, wasn't I? I was like, yes, mm -hmm. you were. We had one of the courthouses I worked at that had, as a misdemeanor DA, had a, a high volume DUIs. Um, a lot of them came from a particular Jack in the Box drive through where people would drive through drunk to get food and then fall asleep at the drive through And the Jack in the Box <laughs> would call the police and they'd roll out and you'd be sitting, not you, but a person would be sitting there passed out in the car drunk with the engine running which is enough for dui in california um and here the, in canada 
Yeah, the sheriffs would follow them out after court, after arraignment court, and just follow them out and pop them all again as they were getting in their cars to drive out of the parking lot. Do not drive yourself. If your driver's license is restricted, the sheriffs, look, man, they're broke, especially in California. These tickets are expensive. Uber I, is way cheaper, not legal advice, just life. I start telling, I've told clients like, hey, we're off for an impaired driving trial. Uh, you should not drive. You know, you should make sure you have a ride home because they will follow you to your car. Yeah, it happens all the time that all the, the cop, time. you know, the cop who just lost or just won the impaired driving trial will totally follow your to your car. Yep. And yeah, the earrings I showed earlier of Erica Girardi were not determined to be stolen by her, but were determined to be purchased with stolen funds. The judge said in the hearing when the earrings got turned over to the bankruptcy trustee to be auctioned off and sold that the judge was not sure that Erica knew they were um purchased with stolen money but that the court determined that they were stolen money from tom Girardi, and they are still fa factoring in they haven't gotten taken yet but during this season after the real housewives of beverly hills go to aspen the earrings get taken by the bankruptcy trustee so it happens while they're filming this season that's airing wait a minute hold that, on that trustee oh, is a she's still on the show of course she's still on the show yeah what? I, I don't please know. tell I me they either. filmed that she's she's still she's i don't know if they filmed during them. this Yes, she's been filming the whole. Jen Shaw is going to trial on the 18th of the month for conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering over a telemarketing scheme. She's facing upwards of 50 years um, in federal prison. She is still currently filming in New York right now for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. They filmed the feds coming to arrest her because she was getting ready to go on a cast trip. So the cast is all in a fucking sprinter van as the feds descend on the sprinter van to find her. She had gotten a phone call and peaced out and said, I have to go because they had hit her house first and were looking for her to arrest her. So they were tossing her house and her assistant's house on the arrest warrant search warrants. Cause you know, when the feds unseal stuff, they just swarm everything. So they all arrive and the Bravo cameras are rolling. The intro of the season is the feds asking everyone to come out of the sprinter bus trying to find Jen Shaw. It's Bravo this has completely leaned different, in. This is a completely franchise. different Real Housewives. Yes. Can I ask a separate question out of my ignorance here? How many of the Real Housewives are engaged in or have previously engaged with federal or other criminal activities? Is Several. this just the two of them? Well, as we know right now, three, because Teresa Judice had the aforementioned um, fraudulent bank documents issue where and she did go husband. to federal prison and her husband. He got deported um, afterwards. They did get a special. Both of them got specials after they got released from custody. And the show covered one being in custody. And because it's the feds, they let one go into custody first and then the other go into custody after. But if you want to get nice. into the broader realm of reality TV, there's more. But in Housewives, currently, there are just those three that are in this kind of issues, but Jen Shaw's unique. Everyone else is kind of stuff their husband pulled them into. Like most of the the fraudulent bank documents and stuff with Teresa Judai seemed to be, her husband was like, here, sign this. And she was like, I didn't know, but I still signed it. So I pled. Okay. Uh -huh. I believe uh -huh. her. I believe her a hundred percent. I uh -huh. believe her a hundred percent when she's like, he was like, just sign these. And she's like, yeah, whatever. I, uh -huh. I, okay. So I have to admit now, like every time that I've talked with you, Emily, you've said you've, you've referenced, Hey, I cover the real housewives. And I've always thought, well, okay, that's incidental. You love the real housewives. That's incidental no. to your law stuff. I didn't realize it was kind of like a constant font of, of legal questions and discussions. This, so, that's, this, so that's remarkable. It's well, this Girardi and, case is going to go on record as one of the most complex personal bankruptcies that's yes. ever existed. I have never seen pleadings like this, and I've been practicing bankruptcy law for more than 10 years. It's fucking insane. The trustee, I've never seen the this. trustee had a forensic accountant quit because it was too much for them to handle. Too and much the, forensics. <laughs> the bankruptcy trustee is having to take massive tort litigation yes. and find other lawyers to handle it and then yep. negotiate all yep. the fee sharing agreements legally to make and sure that the bankruptcy still gets some of the attorney's fees that they're entitled to. It's insane. And I have been on the end where a trustee has appointed me as special counsel to the trustee to litigate a tort case. 
or or to litigate to conclusion a divorce case because part of the divorce part of the marital estate was part of the bankruptcy estate yes and it is exceedingly complicated and this trustee when they say the trustee the trustee has a law firm the trustee in this particular case that must be the whole damn firm because there it's is there be. are not enough attorneys to handle all of these motions and this and is they're this. on in the bankruptcy with the law firm there are their second special uh, prosecutor for this who's going after Erica Girardi for the loans Erica Girardi is, it's they have alleged had an illegal fee sharing agreement where he assigned his portion of legal fees into her name so she is getting paid out the attorney's fees from a litigation that he had resolved and is still getting them in the bankruptcy trustees like you can't just start you can't receive the legal fees on this they have to come back into the law firm estate so this is a second prosecutor but the first one that was assigned was personally attacking Erica Girardi on Twitter and then was sharing things like the American Express bills on Twitter that were not yet in court filings. So the first one was uh, removed for commenting on the case and then participated in the Jen Shaw documentary. You're in the middle of a bad attorney case and you decide to do weird stuff as an attorney. Weird stuff. I, I don't, I, wow. Okay. And there were multiple filings over it. Like it went on for months and there were filings back and forth. Like he's, he's personally attacking her on Twitter. This is pretrial publication. There's a potential for this to, she has the right to trial on these issues about whether she took this money or didn't take this money. And this is, you know, tainting a jury pool. It was back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then the court was like, no, we don't find this outside attorney ethics, but then something else happened. It, it's the amount of litigation in these two bankruptcies is insane. It's in, it's insane. I need one of those, Rob. It's, but it's also, <laughs> it's fast. Like it's fascinating. Yes, oh, it is. It's super interesting. I, it's just that, like you know, I, I I had earlier in in this stream talked about how much I enjoy this and enjoying uh, conversing with you. Some interactions with lawyers. It, it, it's like there's just so many bad lawyers and and legal things out there, and. I, the, the reputation that the practice of law has in some important ways is justified by some of the crap that you see out there um, oh. with all this stuff. And, and certainly yeah. with something like what you've described with, I mean, my God, stealing freaking class action injury win money is. It's, it's well, the literally the lowest shit you can do. I wrongful mean, death for a downed plane. It's just, yeah. it's, it's really horrific. <sighs> and Boeing is like, this is when we transferred the money. Like it, what you think Boeing's fucking around Boeing's like, this is here's where the, we put the money. This is when it came in. Like, leave us, leave yeah. us the fuck out of this. It's crazy. But yes, the housewives get themselves into some legal shenanigans. And then we have a housewife that's just coming off of real housewives of orange County. That was, I don't know if you guys have heard of sweet James Bergener. You're not in California. He is a California um, billboard lawyer who says, He's constantly on like California drive time radio with his ads. He's sure. got billboards all over sweet James. Type. Um, you know, no one looks good in handcuffs unless you're into that kind of thing is one of his taglines. And I'm like, Oh my God. Spicy. And I'm like, but you know, no one looks good in handcuffs unless you're into that type of thing. It's like, no one looks good in handcuffs is just the period. But if you're into that kind of thing, then you kind of look, you do look good in handcuffs. Like it doesn't make sense to me, but that's what it is. His ex was on this last season and the shit that came out about them was crazy. Another housewife was a doctor on this season, had multiple litigations going on. So there is so many rabbit holes and that's not even getting into the civil litigation because the civil litigation some of these women have been in is bananas with businesses that might not be legitimate businesses. It's crazy but the sweet james stuff this last season was wild you know it was wild. kudos kudos to bravo's recruiting team yeah that like, was whatever yeah, bravo has like whoever bravo has making these contracts that require these people to be on film during all this like hogue you got to get their number because they must have some language in there that's just it's like, cr this last if season, you are being arrested you consent to being on film yep and and yeah. and the fed the feds i mean they blurred out most of their faces but they showed from the outside they showed her house getting raided i mean you could see the crew was getting ready to go on a trip they didn't know and people were like oh wouldn't the film crew have known that the feds were about to descend no that's the point of the feds descending is you don't know especially in digital crimes where they're like pulling money out of your wall because they it's a money laundering case and they found 
tons of cash in her house, according to oh. the, you know, the bail hearing. And anything electronic, they yep. really want to get you by surprise. Yep. So a tactic that I've seen done over and over and over again on those things is that they send somebody by in a delivery outfit. They knock on the door and they say delivery and you go to pick it up like you think it's an Amazon or a, you know, a post office delivery. And you're like, oh, and they're like, will you sign for this? You know, are you so and so? And when they're really wanting to be funny about it, they're like, oh, can we see some ID to make sure it's you? And then they just grab the person, chuck it to somebody behind them like you out of the house. This person's going to throw you in cuffs and they're going in. And they want to get to your computer system first thing to make sure no one shuts it off. Or the nice power, thing about Real Housewives, if, yeah. with Real Housewives, they actually know who who their target is because <laughs> they've been watching them on television. But <laughs> yeah, they are. They're looking. They want to secure that digital evidence as fast as possible. The tip off phone call was the wildest thing I saw because you know what's coming because. I saw the media breaking it down when Jen Shaw got arrested. So by the time you actually get to see it on film and you learn that cameras are rolling while this goes down, you're like, how is this going down? And she gets a call. She lies to everybody about what's going on. And she's like, oh, you know, I got a call. My husband's not well. I got to go. I got to go. And she jumps into a car and like peels out of the parking lot. And it's moments later that they descend on the parking lot. She ends up getting pulled over on the side of the road. Um, and they talk about that. It's just it's it's it, it all this shit's going down while cameras are rolling so for the bravo audience like the la times article drops outlining tom girardi's malfeasance and you see all the housewives on their phones going oh my god 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 and then the producers are asking them about this they're like i had no idea this is so crazy this says this and this said this and i called a lawyer one of the housewives of salt lake city spent the entire time after the Fed showed up on the phone with six different lawyers asking about what was happening and getting them to try to find her information and could they get in trouble. It's it's reality TV that's playing out in like two dimensions because you get to watch it in real time and then you get to watch it from the inside where they're filming the women that it's going on. It's Why don't you give me a reason to watch freaking Housewives? <laughs> Rob, like, I, okay, we're in the oh, same oh, wait, Rob, I'm Rob, like, Rob. Emily has, has almost convinced me to turn this show on. Rob, <laughs> sweet, J wait, did you, you guys don't know. Late, law, law, law nerds. Let me know in the chat with a one if I should tell Hogue and Rob and Runkle, what Sweet James got for his birthday from Noella, either their birthday or their wedding, the stack. Do I tell them about the stack? Put one in the chat. If the chat votes, I'll tell you um, what lawyer Sweet James got for his birthday. I don't have to look at the chat. I know what they're saying. <laughs> that his ex-wife shared on Rob, national television. She Imagine give him an option to say no. I know. <laughs> well, you could you could she put a two say, for now. She didn't say you could put two. She just said put one. <laughs> you could put a two. You could put a two in the chat. You guys can watch the chat go. I don't have to watch it. the chat. I know the chat. Look at this. Look at this. This all is like a million ones. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's a mysterious kind of teaser you gave there. It's I don't know what a stack is. Like, the hey, chat, chat knows. The one. chat knows. The chat knows what sweet james got for his birthday but here's the thing this is a well-known kind of dui type attorney in california billboards all over the place his now ex-wife goes on tv and as they are getting divorced is talking all about their life and shares that the gift that she gave him was a stack of vaginas and she has a picture of the three women stacked together for his i think it was their wedding but it could have been their birthday Yep. That was not how I imagined that sentence would end. I have to say, I didn't, I didn't the see the start of that coming. I didn't see the start of that coming. I didn't see the middle of that coming. I didn't see the end of that coming. This is I what's just, happening I, I on Real Housewives. Like, Imagine is... what your your partners at a law firm would do if they learned this of you because their wives are watching television. Imagine the conversation you're having at work the next day. That's right. Rob already has enough trouble with the Wood Daddy conversations at work. Okay. <laughs> the stack. There were pictures and everything. The chat is like. <laughs> I, I, it I was. Honest, it the was. Trip that I took with that story was I thought it was going to be something you know uh, maybe a little bit interesting and then and then you you say what it is and I said oh okay artificial. No. I'm thinking it's an artificial stack. Then you say, and this is how the women were laid. And I'm like, no, Jesus I'm, Christ. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm building up the courage to say stack of vaginas. Stack of vaginas. Yeah, goes, stack of, it was a stack of vaginas. No, nope, you can see that I said <laughs> nothing of any specific reference. It was a, it was a stack of vaginas. <laughs>
This why is why this is <laughs> this is why, why you, you watch so Real ones? Housewives. You can't make this up. I don't know how they know that these women are going to say shit like this on television. But she's just talking about she was to be fair, she was one of the 3. I think she was in the middle. But she okay. showed her friends the photo on her phone while they were out at dinner and she's like, "No, I gave him a stack of vaginas." And then they showed the picture of the stack of vaginas. She's like, "Can you t- guess which one I am?" And then had her friends guessing which one you know that's the second part of it right it's the personality that then goes and says this is a great thing to talk about with picture evidence on television i don't have have any idea like what i've actually seen like i'm a practicing divorce attorney i have seen cheating footage i have seen pictures i have seen sexting i have seen everything i have seen a couple bring a third party into a house with a three and a five-year-old that they're all raising as a polyamorous family I sure. have seen all of this stuff. And Emily Baker just got me to say a stack of vaginas on YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to have to find and... you the episode where the stack of vaginas first comes up so I can send it to you because because it, it comes up before she knows she's getting divorced because he bounces. Rob, I would love for you to break down how this happened, but he v- bounces jurisdictions. He leaves to Puerto Rico and then files for divorce in Puerto Rico, but they're Look, in California. When you it's start the wild. sentence with, I would love for you to break down, you say he bounces after saying stack of vaginas. There were so many ways that was Rob, going you're in my head, man. Seeing jurisdictions. I'm like, Emily, you can't say that. Oh. <laughs> I say all the things. We're like, we're, we're four hours in on this stream. The thing is, is YouTube has given up caring. Oh, she was the bottom. Thank you, Nat. I don't have any that I am that close with. (laughs) Like, you know, can you guess which one I? No, I have not a single friend. At least, I I mean, these were not super. They're they're cast members on the show, so they're not super super close. But one of the housewives of Orange County is also a divorce attorney, so it was very interesting watching her reaction as all this went down. Emily Simpson, her husband, passed the bar this last season. It was a big plot line. The Real Housewives of Orange County are iconic, but it's a very interesting show, and they they really air all of it more than maybe they should. And then when they end up in legal trouble, they're filing motions saying, but we don't want you using clips from the show in the trial. And they're like, oh, the fuck you don't. It's the same thing Amber heard. Like, I would like you not to use the statement that I made at this press conference over here. Please don't use that. Yep. Rob is like, I love trials of the century. And Emily's like, stacks of (laughs) ladies. Um, But it was, it, it, again. I was expecting to end the day. This oh. is this is a prominent attorney in Los Angeles that everyone knows now all of the and I just don't understand like Jen Shaw who's getting ready to go to trial um she's on film talking about her first assistant he's working at the computer and she's like go make me some more money he's now pled and is turning on her and is going to testify against her at trial like but it's on she can't say oh we weren't that close you're on camera with him working on the computer while you're feeding him a banana saying, keep making me some more money. It, like it's going to come up. There's nothing you can do. I, you know what? I'm going to just leave feeding him a banana to the side. <laughs> um, so I was going to, I was actually going to say I have questions, but I don't. No, I, I, don't you're just done. Questions. You're just done. You're just done. No more questions. <laughs> and we've got uh, Christina Peichel's in the chat. So oh, cheers. She, oh God. <laughs> I think Rob needs two minutes. <laughs> Rob still can't believe that that's happened. So dry said, contacts stack, throw. Stack of vaginas. Um, no, mean, the dry contacts Friday, are different. It's the, we're, we're fully within the zone of like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like, did this happen? <laughs> we needed a lighter stream. And now I've gotten to look when, when Hoag's like, oh my God, it's cute. You cover housewives. Do you talk about like stuff they say on Twitter? No. No, no. I, it's not that I was, I wasn't trying to diminish it. I, I don't think you were. A limited amount of legal content and now i'm finding that it has significantly more than i thought it did yes and it, if you it, branch out into other reality tv it is truly unlimited um I just, I, I'm, I'm afraid that twitter's going to be trending like stack of vaginas i <laughs> feel like you say that because you want that to be trending uh, chat be rob is funny. asking for hashtag stack yeah, what rob to be trending time is up to him rob right? wants hashtag stack <laughs> trending on twitter because i don't know if twitter would let the full <laughs> sentence no, out no way. trending with wood daddy yes <laughs> no <laughs> no no i will throw the unicorn no. well, what serious, at your camera shot, in <laughs> the fairness, rob, there's a decent shot it would also be trending with leather daddy it, yes, leather daddy and wood daddy together there at the bottom oh, of the screen. 
Oh, don't ever say that in the same sentence. <laughs> See, just because that's on this, you're messing up all of your people's other recommended videos. <laughs> right. Maybe Bot, you guys should just saying, go trade. Oh. oh, Wood Daddy Stack is a good one. You know, if we're going to like, look, they got Stack Tug's tits. Daddy. Tug's tits got trending above the <laughs> above the fucking NHL. So I'm just saying. Hashtag Wood Daddy Stack. There's over 19,000 of you in the chat. I think you could get that trending. Oh, my wife has popped into the chat. I saw that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm not tempting the law nerds. I was just asking. I think Wood Daddy Stack is a good... You have to be there. If you're not there, you don't know. I want to know what Runkle and Rob thought about the juror described in the Amber Heard filings. Do you think you knew who it was? Yeah, it was juror number uh, six. Six, I mean, six on your numbers? It's either yeah. six or potentially three was an older Asian guy wearing a mask. No, three was like in his 30s. I, I agree that he looks way younger, but it's the only other alternate possibility that I think of. Uh, but it's probably six. Uh, and Wait, we could, we could know this. Hold on. I think that Court TV put out a list of the juror numbers with their seating locations. Okay, Hold on. That's good because did they? Like, let me look. I think I they did. You we're going to say that court TV took like Rob's uh, uh, like made number chart and applied the actual numbers to it. Well, the thing is, is that when you're actually in court, it's hard to pick out their juror numbers yes. because they I'm, walk in I'm, because you go seat number. Yeah. And they're and walking in and their, their side is to you, but their juror numbers on like a little placard on their front. So you can't see it. And you don't and necessarily they, need it. And it's obscured when they're sitting. So right. you, if you were trying to catch it, and I wasn't, you'd have like these fractions of a second to catch it. And I was paying attention to other things. So no, I'm going to find it because when they released the alternates, they had a chart where they put their numbers and seating locations so you could figure out um, who it was. Oh, nope. They've only listed here. This is what they've listed. Let me... Go to add screen and then we'll go see how we're trending y'all don't worry don't worry i haven't forgotten so this is what they had put out when the alternates were released juror number one asian man 20s to 30s juror number two 20s juror number three 20s to 30s juror number four is a black woman juror number five is an asian woman so it's not these two because so they women. have precisely no juror number nine 50s. 40s juror number eight white woman juror number seven white man juror number six white man so this Just juror turn. down here in the age range, juror number nine, is one of the ones that a lot of people had said was not super pro herd. Was the one that was like sitting back and and not really listening to her, not looking at her. I wouldn't be surprised if I, it was that one. I'm just remembering the alternates. What was their number? Like, what was the numbers of the alternates that got kicked out? Um, two, two and eight. Two and eight. Well, that's their position numbers. Correct. But I'm wondering oh. what their actual jury numbers were. Hold oh, on. and she said that out loud too. Dang it. Because they were she sitting did. in order, right? They were sitting in the... No, in they their... weren't because their numbers, they get numbered before they came in. Um, and so their numbers weren't sequential because, I, you know, okay. they they got numbered, you know, you get one through a hundred and you could have juror number one, juror number 37, juror number whatever. So they weren't numbered okay. that way. I thought they were sequential in their seating path. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, um, it could be juror nine. The but... alternate jurors are officially juror number three and juror number 14 on the graph below. So if you thought it was room. juror number nine, that was, you know, if you thought, oh, this is a 70 year old, um, uh, I'm sorry. At that point, you basically have to report yourself to the law society for having, you know, a drinking problem. That's the only one who's in their 40s. Well, isn't it, isn't this person supposed to be 50? 51 yep 52 yep so i mean it's either way it's an older looking juror six or a younger looking juror nine um but either way if they were sitting on that all trial then that's on them right because yep. if they could have raised that at any point and they could have said oh right this is the wrong person we still got alternates and then they would have been stuck with, you know, juror eight who, oh, right. They really didn't want juror eight because she very much, you know, and I'm wondering if that was part of their tactical consideration is juror eight. They want to keep out of that jury room 
because I think she would have been the oh, Robin she would have been the four person. We both four agreed, person. and she would have run that show. And you know, I don't think I think if she had been in that jury room, I don't know that uh, that Amber would have walked out with that two million side, uh, you know, side slice. So you guys are thinking stacks right now, and you really couldn't be. No, no, it's just, yeah, it's just, the hashtag. <laughs> <You're not laughs> Legal Leather Daddy was the hashtag. I like that one. Wood Daddy <laughs> Stack has been tweeted. What is wire fraud? Oh, Paige, wire fraud is anytime you use the internet to do any kind of fuckery that's fraud. It if you covers know, so the many things. The federal government says all computers, because they all access the internet, all of them are wire. If you really transfer money in way. a bank account, it's wire fraud. Um, sometimes a text message can be wire fraud. I mean, it just depends on what you're that, doing. That Varsity Blues case that they're having a little bit of trouble with now. They only lost fraud. one. They're done. Yeah, but they lost the, they lost on, one. the only one that went to court. No, they didn't. Did they, uh, did they win one that they actually prosecuted? They won a number of them that went to trial. The USC water polo coach was convicted. Another coach was convicted and just sentenced. They won a lot. I followed very closely. They won no a good. lot of the trials. No they only lost one trial. Um, but they did win a number of the others. It's funny because I remember when it happened, I put out a whole Twitter thread. It was like, well, let's talk about fraud and services, shall we? It's an interesting theory from the feds. I mean, the the USC water polo coach I was deeply interested in. Oh, when interesting. It, uh, when Wire it, fraud is one of those crimes that's kind of grown because it, when it started out, it was fairly narrow. Right? What, you're wire saying the feds are like making <laughs> everything into wire fraud that's not RICO? That's so weird. Yeah. Computers, obviously. But, wire. Yeah, sorry. Now everything computers. <laughs> it's all interstate <laughs> commerce, folks. Oh, yes, that's the other one. I sent Wood Daddy Stack to Ricada Leather Daddy oh, as well. God. Oh, dear. Well, you know, well, Rob's silent actions expected. are cracking me up. <laughs> well, look, we had a drinking stream. Um, things happened. Everybody wanted to know about Real Housewives. These weren't the craziest moments in Real Housewives. There are crazier moments that have happened, but... It's quite you know, the teaser. It, it just... There's a lot of legal that happens. I'm going to answer a few more questions because we're not going to get there. I, I'm dying laughing. I really needed this. Everybody needed a lighter stream. It's been really heavy. It's been really heavy. Um, Vintage Willow, I'd preeclampsia and lost my job because I hadn't been there long enough to qualify for Family Medical Leave Act. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. That is the worst. I also had preeclampsia. I, I hear you. Um, the rich have dupes made and leave the expensive jewelry in a safe deposit box. Lady Justice, that's exactly what they should do. But here's the thing. No one has appraised the Girardi earrings yet. How do we know the trustee doesn't have the dupes? Mm. I yeah, that's the thing know. I want to do first thing on a fraud case. They it's haven't like, done sorry. it yet. When a client comes in accused of fraud and they're like, hey, can I pay with a check? My answer is no. Um, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, lost the trust. you don't just accept the, you know, the jewelry and be like, oh, yeah, I'm sure this is good. Yep. Uh, um, we talked about hobbies a little bit. We know that that wood daddy's hobby is woodworking and that leather daddy's hobby is leatherworking. But Hogue, what are your hobbies, and can we use them against you? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, honestly, I worry. But yeah, no, I mean, I think people know what I I like. It's uh, video games and movies and and TV, and that's that's what I do on the channel. That's what I do when I actually have free time, which is increasingly sparingly. Um, but that's you know that's you, you can you can come up with something, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, hobbies are so needed. I mean, we talked about hobbies and the law being needed. We did. Yep. They are very, very much needed. Um, I wish I had started doing archery before I left the DA's office. I think it would have been really good. Um, live is inside again. Emily, your pen story is the funniest thing I've heard in years. Law is so funny. I mean, look, law personalities are funny. We get really particular about funny things. I get pissed if people take my pens, but it was, it was a funny troll. It was an easy way to, to take someone who was taking things very seriously and just be like, look, we can't take this so seriously. Oh, hug, they got you. Did they? Gamer daddy stack. <laughs> Gamer daddy. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to ask Miss, Miss Hogue, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's, look. Oh, all, man, they're really hey, trying over in chat. This is, this all is, this is all fair play. This is fair play, too. <laughs> like, people... Emily, Emily comes on our chat and some people are make her blush like this is fair play. 
<laughs> I mean, the chat does get a little thirsty. It's okay. We we love the law nerds. Hogue, Technoblade never dies. True. I wouldn't have actually Very thought true. that uh, Rob would be the first person to show feet on a on a his no, Never Ian, give in, Ian, Rob. Ian, no, Ian. <laughs> never give in. I did on accident. What? Wait, do you have a wiki feet page? Does he does Wood Daddy have a wiki feet page? Chat. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> Chat. I need to know. Somebody said Hogue's hobby is actually daddying. So you can just call him daddy <laughs> yes, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> daddy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the endless clips that are going to come out of this stream are just <laughs> astounding that's where we've arrived folks <laughs> oh crafting ruby dreams i'm gonna have to look it up it had a it had a very specific grip it was a pento with like a big swirled grip um i'm gonna have to find it and it was clicky i'm gonna have to find it i don't remember the name of it off the top of my head um joystick daddy is also popular um <laughs> But joysticks aren't really used anymore. I just read a really fascinating article about how submarines swapped out their really expensive controllers for Xbox Three controllers because they were easier for people to use and more familiar to the seamen. So it was. That's that's also how drones are piloted. I think pretty often is with the video game controllers. It It makes sense. Showing up in uh, surgical, like surgical machine design. Uh, One of them, they basically went and they engineered it by getting like young surgeons who young surgeons have an advantage on this because they grew up playing video games and they were basically going, what feels intuitive? And then by the end of it, they designed something, they sent it off to legal counsel being like, Hey, can you patent this? And legal counsel went, um, you fucking <laughs> built a Microsoft controller. <laughs> Are you, am it, I being trolled? <laughs> basically you guys can't use this. You will get sued. Because this is basically the Xbox controller, and they went, "Oh, oops." Whoops. What's funny is this what is did, Generation did some- Five, and they've put millions and millions of dollars of ergonomic design into getting now what is like eighteen buttons, yeah, which is going to do most things that you need into these into these little packages. Yeah, use a three sixty controller, use a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, absolutely. I like yep. the Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. That's my favorite controller. A lot. It's my favorite controller. Oh my god, chat! Are you effing kidding me? <laughs> Are I'm you still, kidding me right now? You doing okay, man? I'm was still it, waiting for my Steam Deck to... Was uh, it Joystick Daddy or was it Wire Daddy? Which Woodstock one? Woodstock Daddy is trending at 13. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Woodstock Daddy is trending at 13. What powers do you have, Emily? <laughs> there are tw- like almost 20,000 people <laughs> in here. I don't even know where Good Logic is. So far, number 16 on trending, trending 13. Hey! <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Rob, you're famous. Rob! For, for what? <laughs> well, I mean, it could have been Unicorn Woodstack is it, Daddy. Is his tongue's tits all over again? <laughs> oh. I mean, it makes sense. Oh, so the- you guys remember, if you want something to trend, it just goes on volume of tweets. So don't retweet. Just tweet it yourself. Yep. Good the retweets tip. don't count. That's a good pro tip. Um... <laughs> So I'm sure we'll see it. You guys take your screenshots and share it with with the, you know <laughs> you with the get hashtag. Top ten. He wants to be top ten. Look at him down there. <laughs> Does Hogue have any thoughts on the GME meme stock scandal and the House Financial Committee report? What Leah? Why are you being so serious? We're trying to talk about Woodstack Daddy, but I'm no, sure Hogue has an answer. This is a great Search thing. for GameStop. Search for GameStop on my channel. Uh, I have a number of videos on it. I'm sure you do. Look, WWE SmackDown is what's trending at kind of the top of entertainment, and it's really not that yeah. many tweets. No, but you know that the reason, I mean, that was the those Vince get paid. Man. Yep. That was huge. Well, no, million? this this is, this is, um, oh, no, I just saw that one. No, I was, there was an event tonight that I was looking at that's trending. Yeah, but Vince McMahon. I just saw that. 12 million to four different people. That's all that's well, we haven't had time to get to oh Woodstack Daddy's number 10 in trending. Oh, there you go. Yes. That's oh, with fantastic. only a thousand tweets, we can do better than that. We're using our Care Bear powers for a little bit different goals tonight. Uh, but yes, I think it's great. Look at that right there. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Wood Daddy Stack. All right. Wood Daddy Stack is what's happening. 
you know you can get above the Mets game there, Rob. You got this. I mean, actually, I know a lot of Mets fans that I can really piss off if that happens. Well, we're trending above Taylor Anderson. We're tra- we are going. We're past Taylor Anderson. If, you um, get, if, if the chat so. gets that past the Mets, I will broadcast that shit. Like mm-hmm. I know so many Mets fans that need that. Like just they need them. a Wood Daddy stack. They need the Wood Daddy stack. Yeah, you're only Trump a couple of bases from being right next to Elon Musk cancels Twitter deal. So you can really seal this. Big day. <laughs> Big day for everybody. <laughs> I don't think any of the guys know what Ringo is. Um, uh, the the <clears throat> One of the Beatles. The One of the Beatles had a trademark dispute with a, a adult toy company because the adult toy company also had a Ringo. That are right, that went around here. So if you wanted to last for the entire stack, <laughs> you could you could have a Ringo. So it was a it was a tra- <laughs> it was a trademark case. I did a late night Law Nerds After Dark about the Ringo. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> sure. Wow. It's one of my favorite trademark disputes because you know how people put in their like their um you know resume statement about how fucking great they are. This company put in their resume statement of all their adult toys and how many awards they had won it was fantastic um one of them was called the obob it was it was one of my favorite episodes i've ever done (laughs) 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 i'm I'm not going to recover um the trend it's going up and trending you guys are like oh my god it's happening (laughs) wow fetch is happening it's uh... fetch is happening number eight there's um, nothing that Rob that, can't do. Ringo was one of Salty's cases. <laughs> Wait, is Ricada streaming now? Oh, I'm so, we're, we've gone late. We've gone. gone oh my deep, god, we've gone so late. The Ricada streaming. Night. I'm sorry. I normally end two hours ago. Oh my god, because we've been on for almost four and a half hours. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, guys. we went. We went a little bit long. <laughs> we were just we hanging out little- and chat, and then you were nice enough to invite us on. <laughs> yeah. And all five. 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 (laughs) Don't forget to screenshot it on the way up. That's right. Screenshot that shit with Daddy. Steve Bannon and Elon Musk. (laughs) (laughs) That's just so much better. (laughs) What I like is, you know, the people that are going to interact. You know what's really funny about that one is like this, there's actually some logic to it. And oh my God, you guys got to four. Uh, yes. there's some logic to it because yes. it's it's people go after people for like the bots and they say it's all bots it's all bots no it's just it's how the algorithms work it's yep. when something goes trending it goes trending it's not bots it's, it's not a bots. bunch of people doing stupid shit on a at live. the same time at the same time time matters and volume matters i mean time that's it the internet it is absolutely the definition of the internet, but the tweets are amazing. Thank you all. <laughs> I want you to get at some point to a place, Rob, where your lovely nickname is required to be uh, explained by that poor Twitter person that has to write the little paragraph under when it gets too big. Um, if they can explain Emily D. Baker coins nickname for Law and Lumber, <laughs> people respond or whatever well, else they, they would write as the sentence for this. It's now Look, number here's the three. Thing, it's though. now number three trending over Elon Musk, mm-hmm. Steve Bannon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's tre- tweeting over Angel Hernandez. Mm-hmm. Law nerds, you're amazing. Here's the thing, yeah. though. When the when the legacy media wants to come out and is like, oh, commentators, they're going hard anti Amber Heard, blah 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 blah. No, if we wanted to, we could. It's not that we couldn't, but that's not what we wanted to do. All of, you know, all of us that are here on the stream wanted to look at this case and watch the lawyer's lawyer and talk about it with our communities. It wasn't about changing the narrative in the media, but I think not just, you know, Ricada's stream trending tugs tits, but this stream trending a joke that is exclusive to our stream. You can do that if you have an audience, if that's your goal. That wasn't done because that was never the goal, which is why our audiences, when they keep trying to make that happen, our audiences are like, fuck you, that's not what's happening. No, and none of us just, would. There, That's not the point. We all had conversations about that, right? Like, I yep. I know we had conversations on Lingo, but said, we know how to hit the button here. We know exactly what could, like, double this. <laughs> right? Say hit the button while we're talking about the stacks. That's <laughs> right. what she said. We got, we, you, we know how to hit the button is what I'm saying. We know what we're Buttons. doing. We know what Buttons. we're doing when we're boom, on boom. tape. 
right? Buttons. When we're on several, tape, we know what we're doing <laughs> is what I'm saying. And so we've had the Kill conversations devilly. that say, look, we we know how to how to grow this and do it the bad way. We don't want to yeah. do that. And that's why when the media like freaking vultures on us, like <laughs> the, the week after the verdict, it's like, whoa, all right. And, you know, I go full shields up. I covered it in yep. like 10 episodes in a row of headlines. It's like, let's go. <laughs> but it's you're exactly right. That was never our goal. It was not. Um, and it, it wasn't. It was all of us were like, "Ooh, interesting trial shit's happening. Cool. Yeah. We want to watch interesting trial shit happen. It's not often you get to watch a civil trial on TV or in person. Get, like the elite is the world complaining about. She pivoted to covering a legal trial. It's like, wait, hold on. That's mm. what the channel does. <laughs> what are you, I mean, one of the funnier things is that when the whole thing started, I actually thought like this is going to be legally uninteresting because it's a defamation trial against a famous figure. The result is known before it starts, which is no. And like, why is anyone interested in this? I mean, I sort of thought, okay, people are watching this because of Johnny Depp. And then later I sort of, I watched some of legal bites and stuff. And I was like, there's actually issues here. There's actually a trial going on. And I had to catch up and went, huh? Yep. So everyone's like, oh, you're just, you know, you were just in Johnny Depp's corner from the start. I'm like, nope. <laughs> no, from the start, I thought he was doomed. Yes. Uh, There's so know. many of us on those streams early on saying, yeah, actual malice. Good luck. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, people are like, oh, you're just a Johnny Depp fanboy. And nope. I'm like, I've seen like three of his movies and I liked like two of them. So, yep. you know. Yep. Uh, it, it's it was we want to watch the lawyering happen and defamation cases don't go to trial because most of the people don't have the money to spend the millions and millions and millions to do a trial like this with high paid experts. It was fascinating. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the sad thing is that most trials don't have the resources to do this kind of thing. Right. Because, right. you know, you end up dealing with, you know, indigent clients who just can't bring this kind of defense. But right. it's really I was going to say it's really amazing to watch, you know, lawyering where everybody's on their A game, but Bredehoff brought the C game. So, you know, the D E pick <laughs> me, pick your fucking letter. It was, it was <clears throat> not ideal. I really wanted to see a better battle of the experts. Cause I'm like, they've got the money. Let's see it. And then they brought out Dr. Spiegel. And I was like, what the fuck is yeah, happening? Well, and, and you know I, what, you know, you know what, if Rottenborn had been lead attorney, that would have been, a very interesting trial. I would have that would have been a very, very differently conducted trial. I would think well, so. Um, it's number three on trending. Good. Uh, I, number two. I oh, also do you. We're trending above SmackDown, which is number four on trending. We're I above, also we're above and above the LAFC. Orioles. The only thing we're not above is uh, crime drama. Tony, what is Tony Sirico? I have no. Just take, just you, y'all. Screen, go ahead and screenshot the moment of Wood Daddy Stack. But you know what's funny about this is I don't even care about the Wood Daddy Stack. I care about the fact that this is a, this is independent content creators that have a small section of the interwebs, um, and. This just shows you the power that all of you guys have in the chat. Yep. It's yep. not like a single person that does it. It's the group. Just, it's a group. It's a big group. And you all get together and you guys get to go and do battle with the big boys and, and tell them. And, and you know what? There's a big portion of Twitter right now who's looking online going, what the <laughs> f*** is this? And that's you guys did that. You guys literally created a thing that no one understands that you have to be trendy. here you have to Use be a law nerd to get the inside joke yeah <laughs> well yep you've got to under you've got to be in on the joke um jenna benna i am sorry i'm just seeing this for so long ago um will you be following the law maker lawn makers about news i do follow the local law here i do not comment on it because that is not what i do but i am following it um, barely awake, COVID quarantine, loving some, well, you're probably asleep now, but Morgan yarn tiger, when you see this, you will love it. But this is, you know, I, I will post my whiskey, whiskey glasses later. Uh, I think they're on my Amazon shop. So I'm just going to pop some of these up as we're talking. Amazon shop is great. Um, I love this whiskey too. At some point I'm gonna have to stop and go to the bathroom, but we're going to, as we keep saying good, good night and goodbye. Um, 
do you guys want to share with the chat before we get distracted what you're covering now and next? And no, Matt Bond, you're not going to make me sing Garth Brooks. I'm very tempted. The thunder was rolling much louder earlier. Thunder roll, I never um, understood that song adequately until I moved to Tennessee. And I was like, oh, thunder oh. rolls takes on a whole new meaning once you live, you know, yeah. around here where the thunder actually growls yeah, at you. Yeah, this just reminded me of like two years oh. when I was like really into country music. We're number two. Nice. Wow. Oh, God. Okay. So, but, uh, so speaking of number two, um, uh, would, daddy and um, daddy. Point? would daddy and um, leather daddy no that was a terrible way of leave that segue it's horrible 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 that's that's the wine talking um we are doing trials of the century so i've been doing this series that has been really fun and seeing how many people are showing up from chat to chat to chat has been really cool do you do them uh, live? so what was that you do them live we do them live wednesdays at 8 p.m Awesome. And we switch off between my channel, Ian's channel, and Scott Cardinal's channel so that we're spreading it around because all of us have very, very different takes. Scott is a uh, Scott's an architectural historian. Like has he's probably the best storyteller I've ever been around. Runkle oh. remembers facts like I wouldn't believe. Me, I interject when I can, but it's been so cool to have three different minds come at these old trials from very different perspectives, break them down and give little tidbits of information and tell the trial as a story as it progresses. We did uh, the Charles Lindbergh kidnapping. We did the Lizzie Borden, um, uh, Lizzie Borden, well, the yeah. murders of her father and her stepmother, which was Lizzie Borden was acquitted of. And then we did uh, the John Lennon murder on Scott's channel. On Wednesday this week, we're gonna do H.H. H. Holmes, America's first serial killer, which also corresponded with the same time that Chicago had its very first World's Fair. That happens Wednesday, eight o'clock. Um, and then we'll keep releasing these trials of the century every Wednesday at eight. We're going to do it. Awesome. Wow. I love it. I love it. I see Wood Daddy stack at number two on my phone. Runkle, what, what are you working on other than uh, leather? Well, for the, uh, for the next of the sort of trials of the century that I'm doing, when I'm doing one of them, it'll be for Dudley and Stevens, which is a famous case about cannibalism on the high seas uh it's covered here in canadian law schools although i understand not so much in u.s law schools i would have remembered cannibalism on the yeah, high seas i didn't get that one nope that's not international shoe you're talking about uh, if there's a case in canada here that was a big case on sa law that i'm gonna cover which will probably get demonetized just because it's that's sure. the subject matter but uh it's an important one i also kind of want to do a rant about uh get home bags because uh there was that video online where somebody used like you know 10 rolls of plastic wrap to make a tent and then from that i got looking at sort of get home bags again and most a lot of the stuff online like bug is, out bags when you say get home bags like bug out bags for your car or work concept yeah something okay. that you'd leave at work or you know a different version you know in your car and basically the idea is like let's say i'm at work and something goes you know, really sideways, how do I don't want to be at work ideally, you know, or maybe work isn't a place that I can stay. How do I get home? Because home is really where you probably want to end up right now. You know, there's all sorts of reasons why you might stay at work, but if you have to leave, if you have to get home, how do you do that? What would you bring? Especially if you were in a profession like me, where most of the time you have to dress like an idiot. You know, if you're, in court, you have to be wearing your dress shoes and your suit. And all of this is like the worst case scenario for if right. you have to walk home in a blizzard. Right. So, you know, planning for that is a good idea. But all of these people are like, pack your axe and pack your shovel and pack. And I'm like, there is literally no. Heavy. It's heavy. And there's no circumstance that I can think of between my, office and my house <laughs> that requires me to have an axe and a shovel. And. You know, if if you need an axe and a shovel in the in the city, you're either working around your house or you are a prospective client. And <laughs> I was gonna say, if you know, you know, if Ian's raising his eyebrows at your wielding a blade of some kind, that it's like this is my card right here. You dial it. So. We did have a prosecution with the guy rolling around the city with a crossbow once. It was fascinating. Yeah, so I'm just like, let's talk practical things because the number one thing that I, 
you know, I used to have like when I was working in an office more, I had a get home bag and the number one thing that was in it, the most important element of it. Shoes. Money. Mine Money. were shoes. So I always wore ridiculous shoes at work and a set of boots. California has earthquakes. And so yep. I was like, if I'm at work, what are the freeways that get me home from work? Oh, all of them have raised portions. Okay. Well, if there's an earthquake, I am going to be either not able to get through the city or in a potential situation where I need to be able to walk a little bit to get home um, from work. So I had, I had a bag in my car um, that I kept in my car that had shoes, like a candle, like various yeah. stuff that you would need um, extra water, stuff like that. In case I had, my thought was if there's an earthquake like this, it's a very real possibility that I will have to walk, that there won't be electricity, that roads will be down or bad. And I need shoes, flashlight, and these kinds of things. I have a separate kit that I keep in my car because I have different stuff and I used it. I was in, I was in the middle of winter and I got, I ended up off the road. I almost got wiped out by a truck. I came like potentially like literally inches from being a thin paste. Uh, but I ended up spending several hours in my car and I was super comfortable. I was just like, I'm good yeah. because I had stuff in my car. I could have been there for like, you know, five, six days and I was fine, but lots of people pack stupid stuff. And so I got to rant about that. Um, I'm also going to be doing a live stream on Sunday. I want to talk about, I'm going to rant about the herd filing because. It, well, it, the, the chat loves your rants. And like, by the time you're ranting, they're like, you know, Runkle's not as excitable. By the time Runkle, the Canadian is ranting, the chat is living for it. Well, I, uh, I dropped some cursey words when I talked about the initial filing and I had people going, what? But I, I'm also probably going to talk about the uh, the assassination in Japan because that's kind of interesting. Uh, Japan's got very, uh, their gun control rules are insane. Uh, just outright nuts. Some of the stuff that they will do about guns. And yet they still have some guy assassinating somebody with a thing that he, I mean, it looks like he cobbled to get, you know, it looks like the old, uh, what's the line from Iron Man? You know, he built this in a cave. Right. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what it looks like. Die a stain. <laughs> yep. And I have not seen that. We actually, I touched on it just that it had happened uh, earlier because we do have a lot of Japanese viewers. Yep. Um, yep. And Mimi said, as a Japanese viewer, thank you for your lighthearted stream. Appreciate LawTube channels that have chosen not to politicize another country's tragedies. I don't yep. have, um, other than this must be a horrible thing to be experiencing in your country, I don't have memory of having a leader in this country assassinated but i remember you know my family members all have stories about um where they were when jfk was killed JFK. um yep. when reagan was shot and uh you know for me i remember those kinds of big moments they they kind of shake your country in a way that's it, it's hard to understand from outside so acknowledging what our viewers are going through but that's why we talked about this stream being lighthearted, and that's part of why we talked about the borat a uh, slander lawsuit that just got rejected on appeal. Have you guys I, seen the Borat slander lawsuit? That got rejected I, on appeal. I don't intend to politicize it, but just talk about no, some of the. Yeah, of course, I know you. I know you. You, you don't know. intend to you because you come from it when you're talking about you know these are what the gun laws are. But even with really strict gun laws, people still have ways of, of people get know, around people committing you know, horrendous acts and but, just. Uh, uh, you know, practical difficulties in terms of how do you protect yourself? Like if you're a political figure like this, uh, it gets really hard. The protection questions are very difficult questions. And there are some dirty secrets of the sort of protection industry. And one of them is that there's almost no defense against somebody who's willing to be arrested or killed if in the course of it, uh, it's really hard to stop that. And so, I mean, I've seen a lot of people go on like, how could this happen? Like how, you know, this is such a failure. And I'm like, it isn't though. Like these are hard things to stop. Yeah. So. And and to segue to the lighthearted again, oh, yeah. how about, how about uh, Reagan's comment when the balloon popped after the first attempt in the crowd and a balloon pops while he's giving a speech and he goes, miss me into the microphone. I don't remember that. It's, wow. It's, you can find it on YouTube. 
after the assassination attempts when he gets hit in his speech yep um he goes up and gives a speech at another public function and there's a kid in the crowd and one of the balloon pops and he looks in the microphone and goes missed me i That's- would have hit the floor um i would have been like Whoo. But, you know, (laughs) that's me. We, the Borat, the Borat slander suit is a Law 360 story. Somebody who was interviewed by Borat for um, This Is America or or whatever the series was. Uh, I was watching some of the coverage, although I had to get, uh, had to get dinner. It was wild. Former Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, um, failed political candidate, signed a waiver to be interviewed by Borat he used like a fake metal detector and said it was a pedo detector and then got sued. The guy sued, well, the lawyer sued Borat for slander and uh, lost. They're like, you signed a, you signed a waiver. He's like, but I crossed things out in the waiver. This is a perfect thing for you, Hogue, to go over the waiver. And he's like, but I crossed things out in the waiver. And they're like, it's still a valid waiver. You signed a waiver. No. And so he's saying it's going to an on bunk panel. Um, or he wants it to go to an on bunk panel who's going to say, you signed a waiver and then sat down with Borat for an interview. What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> What's the name of the guy who sued him? The, uh... Oh, I'll have to, I'll pull it up real quick. Um, but Sasha Baron Cohen is one of the ones who assumed that, yeah. you know, actor that is in fact Borat. Yeah. I'll pull it up. Can wave a lot of stuff if it's your own consent. <laughs> the other yeah. thing is, This is one of those moments where it's really important to have a lawyer who understands the practical implications of things, especially when you get into defamation or anything like that, because the, uh, what's this, what, ah, I'm trying to remember the name of the actress, uh, who this effect is named for and chat's probably going to, yes, the Streisand Streisand effect effect. thing and Roy Moore. Yes. Yes. Roy Moore is the person who did the thing. Thank you, chat. Uh, Because Roy Moore is, he's got a whole bunch of shit going on. But, you know, when you sue over something like that, it kind of sounds like the old proverb of if you throw a stone into a pack of dogs, the one that yelps is the one that got hit. There are certain things that you just let roll off your back, because if you stand up and protest them too hard, it starts looking real bad. And it just I draws mean, more attention to it. I had not heard of this guy, this suit, this whatever. And I saw the article. I'm like, wait a second. There's a Borat slander suit. I need to know everything right now. Well, that's definitely the kind of thing I could look at. Oh, Alex were- Murdaugh's for another day. I don't know how much they know about Murdaugh. I've got Murdaugh is Murdaugh has like bodies involved. It's like Girardi, but a lot of murder. His chat, okay. Your chat is like quasi trolling right now. It's like it's, South going, Carolina. it's going, I'm throwing every case at you guys <laughs> to keep you guys on stream until one of you dies. That's what the chat is doing right now. I've got the time zone advantage, but I mean, you're so you were so right when you mentioned the thing about like no reasonable person would look at that machine and go, That is a you know, that is an accurate machine. This is an act. This is a serious claim that's being made in a Borat movie. Yep. yep. So when you sue over that, it's kind of like, dude, dude, just let this go. So, yeah. You made some mistakes. You learned a life lesson and you move on. Yeah. And at this point, if you are a famous person and you don't know what Sasha Baron Cohen looks like, you are failing at life. Like, I would have all of, if I was a politician, I would have all of my staff trained for like, recognize this guy on site. Right. And I don't care if he's got an appointment. Tell me I'm a moron and cancel the appointment. Yeah. How do you not know that's what's coming? Um, Rob, the chat wants your ADHD sketch made into merch. <laughs> they want, they want the ADHD sketch made into merch. Mm-hmm. Wait, are we number one? Yeah. yeah! <laughs> we are victorious. Chat. <laughs> We I'm did it. so excited I could pee. There I'm... you go. <laughs> Number you one trending wood daddy stack. <laughs> you guys are freaking insane. <laughs> the law nerds are the greatest. The thing is, though, that's like 2,600 tweets. I mean, there's 18,000 people still in the chat. Yeah. That's just over 2,000 tweets. Like, when stuff gets trending, it's just about a, you know, a small it's portion of time and a lot of tweets all at once. And it's just burst. Yep. Yeah. It just does. And, you know, again, 
No one did that, or at least no one I was watching and and engaging with during the trial was doing that during the trial. We were watching the trial, giving commentary. I don't know. I'm not bothered, but at, at the same time, it's kind of ridiculous. I would probably oh, I'm not bothered because I think it's patently absurd. Yeah. So as yeah. many people can realize that, I think it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it is what it is. It's a protectionist kind of thing more than anything. It's you know, we we had audiences, we got traction, and they don't love that. Vintage Willow said, "My next door neighbor defends DUI cases and takes their cars as payment." Oh God! I have taken guns as payment. Yeah, bartering Straight. bartering works. Well, and when you've got a client who's going to lose their guns anyway, it's Might like, as well help them out. Uh, would you rather pay me in dollars or in guns you were going to lose anyway? And like the financial decision there is usually pretty obvious. Yep. Chat, thank you so much for the support. Um, what's everyone's month year predictions for when? Oh, wait, we didn't talk about what Hogue was covering. I think we got some yes. of the at the Hogue beginning. Oh, well, you know, I, I but, think I talked everybody's ears off at the top. Didn't. So I did the Elon Musk video today. Um, and then I might, I'm flirting with, depending on what kind of timing I have over the weekend, potentially do a follow up, what amounts to a strange hangouts and headlines where I would just talk about my own video and the, and the Elon Musk story so that we could go through the documents with kind of a question and answer session. Will um, you cover Wood Daddy stack trending on Twitter though? You no, know, I might, I might have to actually, it might be headline kind of news. Um, and we'd break that down. Uh, we'd talk about what it means. Uh, we'd really try to get behind the scenes on Rob as, as an individual and why he's so interested in stacks of all kinds. Lumber, stacks other. of wood. Stacks of wood. It's that green stack pattern. I'm pretty sure he talks about <laughs> I'm pretty sure know. he talks about how tightly packed the green oh, pattern is. <laughs> Rob loves a tightly packed stack. We know this. It's tight. I'm going to die. <laughs> so we might have to cover that. That's I'm pretty sure. Oh, God. The reality after dark. Rob's um, died. Rob has died. I, I'm pretty sure that would be a perfect virtual legality after dark. <laughs> perfect virtual legality after dark. We'll, uh, we'll really jam down with some, uh, some interesting stuff. Somebody uh, needs to clip together Rob talking about the green patterns and the No, stacks. no, they don't. Never, never, ever. <laughs> Where's Laudard clips when you need them? <laughs> you could make that happen. You've got enough material now. Um, but no, other than that, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. And um, we, haven't, we haven't set headlines for next week. And we'll Perfect. talk a little bit about. You can't uh, set things in advance. I was supposed to talk about Britney Spears tonight. And then shit popped off over on Deadline. <laughs> Jamie asked, what are your thoughts on the new TMZ article that Amber Heard's insurance is not paying out for willful misconduct? I think all of us said that was likely at the that. beginning. We said it. We did we say all it. Said standard. It. We're like, well, it's a, it's an intentional tort. It's an intentional <laughs> tort. I mean, if she won, she might have, it might have still gotten paid for um, that it wasn't because then it wasn't willful conduct. So it was on the fence, but that's a willful tort. They're not going to pay for a willful tort. Nope. Jury of your peers and one rando. And a uh, random. You were yeah. guilty. Seeking your 15 minutes of fame. 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. If she had put that in there, I actually probably would have respected it a little bit. You know, stick with stick with your your theme. Stick with your argument. So <laughs> um everyone's month year predictions when the Johnny Depp Amber Heard litigation will finally end. I they take it to appeals. Guys oh, limit. If it's a if it's appeals, oh, yeah. it's gonna be oh and and we haven't seen them appeal yet. They the verdict got entered on what the 23rd of June, so they've still got time to appeal. Rob, I'm sure everyone wants to know how much money she has to post for the appeal bond, but she can still ask for the appeal bond to be um reduced. to be reduced. Yeah. I don't think the judge is going to do it with these fucker emotions she's though. Not, she's not going to. Like any sympathy that was there is see you later. The judge modified the appeal bond. Appeal bonds up. She's got to post Rob, it, the full thing. Sorry, we'll say see you next Tuesday, and I'm really disappointed. You said see say. you later. You needed to say see you next Tuesday. Yeah, he was saying I see say you, and I was trying to be like You're so close. Which I day? say it all the time. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. Thank you. The see you next Tuesday needs to just not see me ever again. She needs to just like disappear from all of pleadings. Like any pleading I see from Elaine right now is traumatic experience. I tweeted earlier and I was like, my sarcasm game has improved like ninefold because I've spent too much time with all of you a-holes. And it's like my sarcasm is through the roof because every time I read something from Elaine, I see the word Bredahoff and it's like I hear I hear Emily say, Elaine. Elaine. <laughs> I mean, you know, at least you don't have to hear her. But the problem is, 
after watching six weeks of trial, when I'm reading the motions, you I can, can still hear her. You, you hear it. You the can't hear it. Is kind of, yeah, it's ingrained. It's a health into our brain. It is. It is. But it was, I mean, it's a, it's a moment. It's, it's a moment. Good morning hey. from the Netherlands. Well, I'm glad we've streamed so long that Good everyone's morning, waking Netherlands. up now Good trying to figure morning. out why Woodstack Daddy is trending. Unexpected hangouts. Oh, we're, we're, we're only like back five to hours away. Oh my God, it has been. It's been almost five hours. We got ten minutes left till five hours, and then we're gonna say goodnight. So we're gonna we're gonna keep wrapping up. Have you Get ever heard of the Grisham can. versus Ford cases? Um, I've heard it was mentioned in law education because of ethics. My dad was a male victim. I didn't know that. My dad is the main victim. I remember the Ford Pinto cases. I don't remember if we covered Grimshaw versus Ford. We covered so many cases in law school. So. We did. Yeah, I remember more of the Dodge case, to be honest. So if we did cover it, I don't remember. I am not good with case names. I remember fact patterns better. There was something with a chattel and a dog and a nose, and I don't know. Chattel. Someone gets killed by a train that goes by. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a pregnant cow involved in a different one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I believe this is for Runkle because no one else is licking their wounds. So Amazon sells a spray that makes the wound not taste good, and it helps. Oh, that is useful uh yeah. the other dog trick i'll sort of share Can with they... people is uh msg if your dog is eating its poop msg takes to tastes apparently delicious the first time and not so good the second time so um there's all these really expensive sprays that you can get to sort of spray on your dog food to stop them from eating their own poop um MSG, i'm going to die msg is the ingredient in those and that'll save you a whole pile of money because you can get a giant sack of MSG for like three dollars. Um, I love the idea of this being a monthly meetup, and then we got to s dogs eating their own poop. And <laughs> well, and I mean, Rob let like us off. Spray, he was talking about number two pretty frequently. A spray, makes, a spray that makes a spray that makes people and, stop and licking their wounds. So how about just someone send that spray to Elaine so she stops filing these motions? <laughs> oh, God. Rob's gotten into the dark place. In that was funny. Place. Rob has gone to the dark place. Where's <laughs> Wood Daddy Stack is still trending, Rob. You can't be in the dark place until then. Um, where did Rob get his unicorn? He 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 adversely possessed it from his <laughs> from niece. niece. It's now conversion. This is a perfect example of conversion. <laughs> He's converted it from a child's toy. I, the chat passed it up, but it was it was the, the show's gone on long enough. We have a new meaning for uh, morning wood daddy, and I, I just respect it. I just respect it. I respect wood. I respect word play. And word play I guess. Uh, you almost said wood play. Oh, I did. You did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction is all I've wanted from my husband when I tell him I just watched from episode to episode. Real Housewife oh. of Salt Lake City is insane. I know the 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 gentlemen have given us the reactions we're all hoping for when you explain these stories to the people in your life, and they're like, "I don't understand." You want the like, "What? Wait, what? Wait, what?" Yes, I, it was eye opening yeah. to me, certainly. So, wire fraud covers a whole lot of things. I think we covered it earlier. Chrisley was bank fraud, not wire fraud. Um, different timing but all of them are yeah. in the 20 to 30 year realms so oh so it wasn't the older gentleman who sat closest to amber and didn't sound like he was a fan i think it's a possibility that it was that juror sitting closest to amber that they I, are I identifying so. not based on the age okay but they don't have anybody listed as older they sure. don't uh juror six was older than the dude on the right yeah he was okay then that's just core TV getting a different age. That's if Amber Heard gets a new trial, do you think cameras will be allowed again? Absolutely, but I don't think a new trial is happening. Not on this. Question, what is the benefit of a civil suit if the individual... But you're asking us serious questions at a not serious time of night. They might have asked it earlier. No, I'm looking oh, at the time. Came this just came in. Question, what is the benefit of civil suit if the individual business in question is non-responsive and even insulting? How does one quantify punitive? On the punitive is punishing. Punitive is whatever is required to stop the person from doing it in the future. As far as whether they're non-responsive and insulting, that's a matter of course. Uh, people are allowed to be insulting. They're allowed to be non-responsive to an extent. When they break the rules, they're punished by the judge. They have to pay sanctions for being non-responsive. And or the default. benefit of a civil suit <laughs> has to be weighed with an attorney because just paying hundreds of thousands, if not more of dollars for a judge to tell you you're right might not be worth it at the end of the day. 
This is why you have to, this is why we say not legal advice because every single thing depends on your facts, your, your goals, the jurisdiction, the potential judges you'll end up in front of the other side. If the other side has counsel, how much money they all, there are so many factors that goes into these decisions that all of it really, really does depend. We hope to teach concepts, but if we've helped with anything, it's, oh, I should probably talk to a lawyer about that should, should be the default. And there's plenty of people who win on those kinds of issues and wish they hadn't. Uh, Cause you can win a defamation case and spread the defamation f- way further than anyone ever. Uh, yes. You know, well, and- that's, that's the thing with the, the Borat case, right? This is the Streisand yeah. effect. Bringing attention to it just makes it worse. <laughs> Sometimes you, especially for public figures, there really has to be a weighing of, I need to tell my story. And I think that's what we saw in the Cardi B case. Like I need to get it out there that these things aren't true and it's worth the money is worth it that I might never recover to win. It's worth it to get my story out and same with Johnny Depp. It's not about the money. It's about getting your side out there. But if you don't have cameras in the courtroom, if you're not famous and people aren't covering it, you could get your story out in a courtroom and no one could ever know unless you're wood daddy stack. And then it's going to be on Twitter. That's true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Especially in the morning. It's, it's it's still at number one, by the way. It is. Maddie, this is fantastic. Thank you. Rob, you, Runkle, Emily, and JD gave me the strength to consider myself an essay survivor instead of a victim and speak out and tell my BSA essay story. Maddie, thank you. I know you've shared that with me. Thank you for sharing it with the whole chat. Um, I know the BSA bankruptcies are still going on with a lot of those lawsuits from other survivors happening. Um, and there are a lot of those cases under the bankruptcy. So you are not alone. Also, Rob, I'm sorry. <laughs> Check Twitter. What happened? <laughs> I just posted something. Oh dear. No, I don't like you. <laughs> he seems very happy with himself. You have to you have to note that. <laughs> no, but okay, so I wanted to go back to that one chat. Like like yes. that's why we do these. Oh, that's why we Rumble. do these. <laughs> that's why we do this. Stuff. Rob's no, no, broke Rob. like here. The other chat, like is the other chat, yes. the one that was basically saying, like, look, I I did a very angry thing and I looked back at the video itself and my law partner looked at me and said, she was like, you were angry. I said, yeah, I was angry. She goes, you said a lot of words. And I said, I said a lot of words and I was very passionate about it. And I kind of stepped a little further than I ever would have been comfortable doing. But the number of people who have come out and said that that, that, and hearing that gave them strength and made them feel powerful and made them feel heard was, was worth it. All of it, period. Runkle did not tag this with Wood Daddy Stack, oh, and I, I'm not over it. <laughs> what is happening? I should have. I. It's late. Fail. ADHD now? fail. But this is great. All right, y'all. Well, you've got to retweet it now with a quote tweet saying Wood Daddy Stack. There we go. Sarah, you need a stack of them. Hashtag Wood Daddy Stack. This is amazing. Um, Wood Daddy Stack, thank you, chat, for knowing what to do. You've picked up the slack and kept running. Scroll down (laughs) vertically. You've actually created a Wood Daddy Stack. So we're a little (laughs) meta here. But this is a stack of Wood Daddies. It is now a Wood Daddy Stack. (laughs) So... (laughs) Thank you, quote tweeters, for creating a stack of Wood Daddies. There's so many of them. (laughs) <laughs> why, why does my twitter feed just keep refreshing why is it just refreshing, it just keeps refreshing. i'm not done yet <laughs> these are the quote tweets uh. <laughs> it's an unending it's an it's a it's a like an everlasting gobstopper of wood it's daddy just, just how how big do you want your stack rob <laughs> <laughs> Hogue, you're so liberated on my channel with no curse jar. Like, like Hogue, late night Hogue is the funniest Hogue I've ever heard in my life. Like, this is great. <laughs> oh, you guys, this has been so much fun. Lonards, we're at almost five hours. Um, I think we, we need to do this again. We do. Just let me know when and where. We do. Absolutely. We definitely do, definitely need more late night Hogue um i'm more than happy to it was very generous of you and welcoming of you to you know it was so nice to see you guys in the chat all of you in the chat and just be like you know what does everybody else think about this and we don't you know i'm again this is the adhd in me i'm so terrible at planning oh we've i've wanted to have you on forever we're like we're gonna talk to Artie, and then everybody's in the chat i'm like just now just let's now 
<laughs> it was Emily, just so funny. I was time. in the other anytime. room. I'm watching you on the TV, and I'm like, I, you know, I'm 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 just getting ready to start winding down, and they're like, uh, "You three, get in here." <laughs> and I was like, well, "All right, I'll turn the computer on." And here we are at one in the morning. Uh, uh, you know, it, I've had a blast. It, it, so this has been fantastic. Thank you. Took two seconds. I was on Twitter and I was seeing that the the response got or the new supplement got posted, yep. and I was commenting, yep. and someone said, "Emily's streaming about it now." And I was like, well, I have a case site. I was like, how do I get it yeah. to her? Well, I there like, we go. Chat. Well, we were commenting on it together, Rob, because we were on Twitter at the same time. And then, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, the same time. All right, cool. Summer, you don't know what you've asked. Question. I just got here. So amazing. Can I get a super quick recap? Love you guys. No. <laughs> Hasht- no. Hashtag would daddy stack is trending number one on Twitter. I'm sure it'll Old be time stamped or something. Crazy bad lawyers, real housewives, <laughs> all sorts of good stuff. <laughs> oh God. Like, We've gone from real housewives to Wood wait, Daddy wait, and back wait, again. Wait, wait. I need my map. Yeah. Is, yes, you, you do need a, the you map. Of, wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 wait. Off too early. Wait, I don't know how to make I wanted to make it bigger. Hold on, Rob, put your map up again. Hang on. I don't know how I can make you the the you know. I don't know how I can do that. Are you putting hashtag what daddy stack? You're on saying place? you want to make Rob bigger. I was trying to. I don't know how I to do it. that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. See, if I do that, it's just me. Damn it. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh, well, I can't figure it out. Thank you, Miguelina. <laughs> nice. Hashtag what daddy stack. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, that's a good summary of the stream. Well, that's exactly what happened. Yep. Johnny Depp and news ADHD current pyrotechnics hashtag what daddy stack. That's what happened. There you go. That's a super good summary. I couldn't say it better. Pyrotechnics feels like it was three weeks ago. It was. It <laughs> happened. All right. Well, I will bring the guys back. And you know what? Maybe next time you come on, we will talk about all the things Erica Girardi has said about the um, the clients that didn't get paid by her husband during this season of Real Housewives, including some of them might be lying. These are just allegations. And I used to have a yacht called The Illegal. There's going to be more. So. How much faith uh, in humanity am I set to lose in, in that particular stream? Lots. Just lots. portion. Just bring He's alcohol. Just bring dead. alcohol. <laughs> just bring alcohol. Because, you know, now you knew things that you never knew you needed to know. I mean, it's when I went in. We have a whole everywhere, everything, all at once angle to this stream for me. It's just, wow. A whole universe of possibilities. I'm going to just go in there and watch six hours of Real Housewives of some place. Uh, and it'll just, I'll just be a changed man. Who yep. knows? That yep. was a surprisingly good movie too. Oh, that's a fantastic movie. I haven't seen it yet. Everyone who super chatted, I am so sorry if I didn't get to them. I know we didn't get to everything, um, but we had, we had visitors and, um, and that was, it was really nice to get to um, have, have everybody come on and talk a little bit about what was going on in Duffy Heard and Housewives and, we trended uh, Wood Daddy Stack on Twitter. I think that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's still number one. <laughs> there are people going on to trending going, I don't know what the fuck's happening. <laughs> but now when they pull up latest on Wood Daddy Stack, it's just all of the drawings. Rob Stack just keeps getting bigger. Remember Rob that. Stack people. is growing. And it's because of you. You make Rob Stack bigger. <laughs> Thank you. I can't. <laughs> Chat, we're going to have to say good night. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being Lawnards. Gentlemen, I will say, don't leave while I roll the outro. I'll say goodbye in just a second. But thank you for being here. Thank you for being Lawnards. Don't forget to go subscribe. I'm sure our amazing moderators who have been here for five hours have shared their streams in the chat. I know that it'll be listed in the description. So make sure you go check everybody's videos out. They really are just not just tremendous humans and lawyers, but great content creators. And we cover, you know, when you guys are like, Emily, are you going to cover this? You know, I don't cover everything. They don't cover. We we are a, a kind of miasma of coverage. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And you guys, thank you for gracing me with your your time and your conversation tonight, y'all. I will see you in the next one. We're going to we're going to go after party real quick. Bye. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you. Support what we do here on the YouTube.